Well, I started my stream now, by the way. I am live. Mm -hmm. As of like 10 seconds ago. Oh, I see. I see. Good morning. <laughs> yep. Morning, everyone. Uh, I'm joined here by Papa Chillin. And uh, should I call you Zelfair or just Nate? Mm, I, to me, they're kind of interchangeable on the internet. I don't mind. All right. Papa Chillin and Nate, we're going to be uh, doing a tier list of all of the Civ 6 uh, leaders for free for all multiplayer, the Better Balance Game Mod. Uh, I'm Herson. I make YouTube guides. I have a ton of guides on my channel for playing uh, multiplayer Civ 6 with the Better Balance game mod. And uh, you two can introduce yourselves. How about Papa? You go next. Good morning. Name is Papa Chillin. Uh, Twitch streamer, and Civ gamer, lover of life. That's it. All right, Nate. Nice. Uh, well, my name's uh, Zelfair Nate. You know. And uh, I just play a lot of Civ. Pretty good player. So I uh, usually just beat these two whenever we play together. And so they brought in some uh, expert expert knowledge to come help them out. So Nate's going to die next time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I don't I, always but... beat him. Okay. okay. But uh, when Papa doesn't win Diplo, I usually beat him. Uh, here we go. Okay. okay. All right. Well, uh, first we can start by discussing uh, what makes a Civ strong in FFA in the meta right now. So, uh, in the free-for-all meta, I think, personally, a lot of the best Civs are just the ones that have, like, a lot of free culture that can use the free inquiry Civ uh, dedication well. Um, combat bonuses are a big plus, because in the late game... Especially if they like help in the late game, like combat bonuses can like flip the tides of the game. Civs that have ones that are uh, applicable for the whole game, like Gorgo or like Chandra Gupta, like these are really good combat bonuses to have in the late game if you're like fighting with helicopters and whatnot. Anybody else want to? Yeah, I think that's pretty pretty good i mean some of the civs like let's say canada i mean depends on the player of course but like there's some of that stuff is just it doesn't have a combat bonus necessarily but like it does have a bonus towards a unit that allows you to like kind of ignore the uh, the science tree a bit because you can defend tanks with the mounties and then it's also got like a built-in win con with a built-in like one side that you can't be attacked from so some of the other civs have like situationally valuable stuff, but I'd say that's a pretty good like generalization. Yeah, I also think that um certain things like what map you're playing on, how many of each color city state there are, these are also pretty important. Like if you're playing on highlands, civs like Korea and Gaul, which want a lot of hills, are better. Whereas if you're playing on like seven seas, like England can be very good, whereas some other civs might struggle a bit because there's a bit less fresh water on seven seas, and they'll be forced to settle naval and don't have bonuses towards it. So yeah, I mean you have to tailor the pick to the settings of the game you're in. Also, like uh, cultural civs, if you're playing a civ that gets a lot of extra books or that wants books, like Sweden or Eleanor. These civs are a lot better if nobody else in the lobby is playing a civ that wants to hog all of the uh, great writers. Like, I would say Christina is a lot stronger in a lobby which uh, has nobody going for books than a lobby which has both of the Greek leaders, you know? Right. Yeah, you definitely so. don't want to be contested too much. I do think that kind of, like, it applies probably the most to uh, cultural civs, like they're going for the books. But it can apply to some of the other stuff, too. Like, Gaul and Germany aren't really a big fan of being in the same game with each other. Um, sometimes yeah. even encampment civs can have trouble when you've got, like, Zulu and Macedon, uh, and maybe even one more. Whoever's a little bit slower to it can, like, not be able to execute their desired game plan because you're just going for the same stuff. Um kind of like Korea and Maya don't like being in the same game, yeah, competing yeah. for Hypatia and stuff. So it's like kind of if you can find a way to pick a Civ out of your draft or whatever that's somewhat unique um, to whatever the lobby is doing, it's actually it's going to be more ideal for you because you're going to be less contested. 
Yeah, so like, true. also, having multiple Egypts is brutal, because you all want the Floodplains Pantheon and Etamanaki, and exactly, yeah. whoever gets it is just going to be way better off. And then Gilgamesh, I would say, also falls into that same category as one of the Egypts, yeah. basically. He wants the same build. Yep. Uh, just, ban, just ban Cleo, and you're good. Yeah, and exactly. again, yeah. religious yeah. civs, this also comes into play. Like, if you have multiple civs that want to run choral music, like, well, if you have two, you can run Feed the World as a backup. If you have, like, four, somebody's going to get screwed over and not get a good religion. Right. Or not ideal. Have... If you have more than four religious, or you have four or more religious civs, then somebody doesn't even get work ethic. You get real screwed. And uh, if you only have one, you don't even have to project, and you can just passively get your religion for with extra tempo, basically. Yeah, so you should always be tailoring your pick to what the rest of the lobby is picking, if you can, and also to the map and game settings. Uh. Yeah. You do not pick your sieve in a vacuum. Unless it's blind. Yeah, unless it's blind pick. At the very least, you know what map you're playing on. That's true. Alright, so, uh... you want to get started with Abraham Lincoln, or do you have any more to say before we start? Hmm. Let's go. I'm ready to start. Yeah. Alright, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, this leader is, I am always still very, very good just because he gets a ton of free units and an FFA that's very nice. He does get two amenities from every industrial zone he gets, as well as extra production towards industrial zones and aqueducts. So he can get like extremely high production, uh, and easily stay on plus five amenities by doing this. Uh, I do think the sieve is better if you can go wide, like if you can get like ancestral hall just because of the fact that he has all of these free amenities um he can pretty easily settle like 10 11 cities and stay plus 5 so if you have a spawn for that it does help him a lot um yeah i mean you you can also go tall into a bush which makes you wide he's quite effective at that yeah it going tall with like audience chamber will get your stats higher faster. So if you want to do like a musketman push or like a really fast line infantry push, you can probably get that a few turns sooner by going tall instead of trying to go wide. Uh, yeah. I think he's quite reliable. I don't know if very strong, though. I wouldn't put him as, as strong. <sighs> or as, the, the thing is with him... Like, he doesn't have some of the important stuff you were mentioning earlier, like the free inquiry style bonuses. Yeah. Um, obviously, you can build commercial hubs, but there's just no bonus towards it. He doesn't have free culture either. So he does suffer a bit from the culture. Not also, having, you're also going industrial, so you don't have theaters as much. So, I don't know. <sighs> He's a bit awkward. Yeah, I will say it is a bit awkward compared to a civ like Germany, because if you want an industrial zone in every city, like, Germany has the advantage of the fact they get an extra district slot, right? Uh, Abraham right. Lincoln does not, so he actually will be lacking somewhat in districts to build. And because of this, when you put an industrial zone in every city, you have super high prod, but then you don't have enough district slots to actually use all that prod. All you're left to build is like running projects, building wonders, and building military. But you already have a free military, so it is a bit awkward what you're supposed right. to do with all of the... Uh, he does get maintenance costs now, too, prod. on his units. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, realistically, Abraham is like... He, he is pretty strong in the right hands, but he's tricky. Because you have to, like, you have so much you can do with that military, so much you can do with that production that's not going to fall into the normal play patterns. That, like, figuring out what to do with that in your game is not, not that easy. But, I mean, he's got a lot of power there, but it definitely isn't, it's just not straightforward. Yeah. Like you said, managing different districts and finding ways to get your population and up in order to build more districts. All that kind of stuff is just extra tricky. Yeah, there's also some weird pushes he can do. Like, 
Um, on Abraham Lincoln, you can do musketmen or line infantry or something like that. You can also wait till infantry and supplement it with planes. Like, Abraham Lincoln can totally right, push with infantry Mustangs. and his unique unit, yeah. And it's, like, very hard to defend if you hit a good timing for it. You need um bombers, because if you're waiting until you have advanced fight, like, your target will probably have steel or be close to having steel, so without bombers, you won't be able to break the city walls. But, uh... Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, Just get a cod. Good. Just get a cod, you're fine. So, yeah, yeah I, I do think he's... Yeah. he's... He's good, but I've seen a lot of players mess him up. I feel like it's very easy to to fail if you yeah. don't know what you're doing. Um, I do like the fact that nobody will like ever attack you once you get going on Abraham Lincoln because your military score is so high. Like it's very rare that somebody will decide to go for tanks and artillery on the guy who has two K standing military just passively, like turn yep, eighty. I I agree. Mm -hmm. So what I would think of when I think of the Civ. Is you're talking about like civs that are good at solo second and civs that are good at first. I feel like he's a great at solo third. <laughs> That's my mm -hmm. personal ranking on him. I feel like he doesn't have the science uh, to really go for first. And second is, I don't know, I just don't think he quite fits the boat on like rolling the whole map. You know, he doesn't kill everybody, he can kill one guy with his free units. But he runs out of the free units, and then he doesn't have any more combat bonus, so he's just like a regular Civ. So oh, unless yeah. he's like clean with it and fully kills the guy while keeping his units, then you're kind of you eat one Civ, which I think puts you in about third. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's very gold heavy and uh, and district uh, specific. Like it's it doesn't it doesn't tune out to like a a military that you want kill immediate neighbor like Nate was saying, but yeah. It's, yeah. it's not there. It's not there. And he doesn't have any uh, bonuses towards uh, Ancient Era to get him the Era score. So you might have to, you know, tech off to like a boat or go to a money for a governor. And that could really slow you down. And one That's last true, thing true. you were saying about the maintenance cost. I feel like you need to hit your third golden age on the Civ. Like if you miss reform the coinage, if you're like normal or dark, it's so much worse. Like he's if you're not utilizing amenity. Yeah, if you're not utilizing your amenity bonuses, your production for, you know, wonders, which you have the bon like you have that a bonus on that from civs, right? To be happy, to have a lot of production. You gotta build these wonders. Because if you don't hit third golden, you're you're not gonna get high score. Yeah. All right. Um Okay. I suppose we can just move on to the next one. On to Alexander. Yep. Alexander. Um I did a video where I won a science victory on Alexander. I think he's quite good. He might have maybe the worst average placement of any Civ in FFA and CPL because people play him like animals. Right, I would agree with that. I see him go like in ten player lobbies, he goes like ninth in like fifty percent of them just because somebody just attacks their neighbor. They win, but at, like, what cost? Their neighbor defends well enough to slow down Macedon, and then they just go, like, second to last. Yeah. I do think, yes, if, like, if, if played, like, let's say, optimally, he does have some pretty nice bonuses, like, like you mentioned. Like, nobody's gonna ever attack you. You don't get war yeah. weariness, which is kind of important a little bit later, when the war weariness really starts st stacking up. Uh... <sighs> And and you can get some extra science bonuses, but in a full free sim situation, best case late game bonus is uh, typically going to be the twenty percent production, which is pretty good. I don't think you want to yeah. count it out and the and the free red card, but at the same time, I don't know if it keeps up for any of the other like. I don't think he's better at win cons than most of the other win concepts. I don't necessarily think he's better at second placing either um i do so want to say I, huh. he's like way better if you spawn with easy city state kills than if you don't if you can get that 20 percent production amp like twice before you actually have to fight another player so you get like 20 turns of it in the mid game it's way better than if you spawn with like no city state kills yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah um, i would also, the extra red card lets you run the um one where you get amenities for garrisoned units. So after you kill a city state, you bring all your units back. You get plus one amenity just for garrisoning them in your cities. 
retainers is pretty good, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, not bad. It's quite good. Um, but what we're saying, oh, there's Nate. Uh, he, he'll be back. There he is. Sorry, I jumped out there. Um, okay. I don't know. Where, I, everything where that we're saying from? is like your guys' comments are saying he's situationally good. That's what I would think. Yeah, like so you need the right, you need city states for one, and then you also kind of, you kind of low key need. Or you're much better with a weak neighbor. Um, if you have two strong neighbors that you know you wouldn't be able to push, then you don't get to do any of the stuff that he wants to do typically, and then you're stuck playing the Simmers game, which they're going to be winning. Uh, I do want to point out that when you do kill somebody, one of the things that's often overlooked in the late game is how good all of the free Eurekas and Inspirations are. You'll get the boost on most of those techs that say can only be boosted by a great scientist or whatever. Like, you can get the rocketry boost from capturing a city that has a campus. So it does help a lot if you manage to get the snowball rolling to just have the entire tree lit up with Eurekas. Yeah, yeah, I do agree with that, but then, like, how do you get the snowball rolling? Like I said, like if you have if you are stuck up against water and then two sieves or something that you, are your friends because they're too strong of players to to start the snowball on them, then you kind of have to wait until later point once you've established alliances, roads, and then you can road through them at best timing, probably cavalry, to or at the earliest timing, let's say, to start rolling people. Um. Not a bad timing to go for people at all, but it just is like you're kind of wasting away that whole time while you're waiting. So then once you do hit your timing, you're not necessarily going to be an advantage. But if you do get an advantage, obviously, I think he becomes really good because, like I said, you can you can keep the ball rolling very well with free science, free Eurekas, and then you also can be healing all your units if you ever take a city with a wonder, which helps you keep the pushes going. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's it's like the situation is good it's crazy because it's like if it's if he hits all of those um those marks then he's above abraham in this sense right right okay yeah. but but it, but if he doesn't then he's below but that's exactly. why that, that's why situation is good he's like because reliable is like abraham we know he has the goods right, right? He, abraham's just, bonuses yeah. happen every game yeah yeah. yeah. So that's it, it, it feels weak on. putting him there, though. It does, yeah. but it's like that's that's just what it is. But so that's kind of the reality. Is he's a snowball machine that doesn't have a good jump start to get the snowball rolling. So if you can find a way to get that snowball going, great. But you're just not guaranteed to have a snowball. I think the jump start is spawning with like two free city state kills. Like that's what you need. If you have like a city state that's really easy to kill on like turn thirty three with horses, and then you can later just go and raise one like turn forty five to get the production bonus again, then you have like a very fast game. Like twenty percent is a lot of extra production to have Empire wide at that stage. If you don't have that if you don't have that, it can be hard to beat your neighbors to like to get a tech advantage where you can easily kill them. But if you right. do, I think you can. Like, I think it's very good. Yeah, in those I think that's the thing. situationally good. He he can he can jump above Abe in the right position, right spawns, but he starts below Abe. Yeah. Um. Once he gets snowballing, like if you have two free stage state kills and then a free kill as a neighbor, like you can steamroll from there. Like all of your units get a ton of promotions because of the healing from the wonders. Um. You don't even have to like slow down. Pretty good. Right. That's also situational too. Some people yeah. don't even build any wonders in their whole empire. Whilst other people have, you know, they've chosen to go hanging gardens and pyramids over here and this and that, you know. Okay. But, yeah. So on to we Nubia. Move on to Nubia, yep. Um Nubia, I'd say it's definitely pretty reliable IMO. Nobody ever really attacks you because of all of the archers mm -hmm. um also the nubian pyramids are like very good and the spawn bias is very very good like right i would put it in reliable as well it's not reliable uh, for the diamonds or the copper or the true. amber ever the high rolls okay. are okay are super sorry uh, just, rare uh, frustrated a little bit Oh, were you yeah, having yeah. bad? I, ne I never i never i never get uh any of the gold production uh 
you know, or the plus two uh, gold hits ever. Right. Like, ever. I mean, like maybe one out of every. Relatively small. Well, it, it, it would anyways, be nice to be like, it hey, would be yeah, nice. oh, there's some amber, there's some diamonds. Oh, it's a beautiful town. Maybe I go religious idols. Never right, have right. I went religious idols on Nubia. Uh, you've met, you haven't lived, Papa. It's so good. I know I have. Oh, I just never get them. Ever. It's like one out of every 30 games I play Nubia. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think now with the naval change too, towards naval range, you can get a little bit more value if you do happen to spawn coast. Although it is pretty rare, um, I think it's I think it's definitely reliable. But the problem is, it does add up to those problems. Everyone knows pyramids are good early, kind of slow down late. Uh, so I think it's kind of up to you to do something to turn the sieve into something good. Uh, in the mid game, like using your power points, you can't just sit there and sim on it to a win con or anything. Yeah, I think the pyramids are like crazy good, um, with its spawn bias though, with the planes because it always spawns with a ton of planes, never grasslands, which makes the pyramids giving plus three food when next to the city center quite good. Like when you have a city with a ton of planes, hills everywhere, you're generally lacking in food, but with Nubia, you just jumpstart it with a four one tile next to the city center. And you right. also get the 40% discount on all districts, which is a pretty big discount. It is, yeah. I mean, the Civ has a lot of like very nice, very good bonuses, but I think if you read Nubia, the bonuses sound like she starts with like four pantheons. She starts with city patron goddess, fertility rights, essentially, right, with the pyramids. Yeah. She has like city patron goddess, fertility rights, many... Uh, god of like hat partial god of the uh of craftsman partial god of or uh, like what is it the other one that papa mentioned idols uh, yeah. idols. idols right so she got she gets like a lot of pantheons which are like very powerful early bonuses but then just like nothing that scales incredibly well so like i think she's really really good at like an industrial push or maybe even a medieval timing push cuz you can get guaranteed like because nobody else is getting those cards right away. You can put down a campus and put down two pyramids, even if it's a plus zero campus. It's a four science campus, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Nobody else is getting the doubling card yet, so it is a four science campus by that regards, right? So, yes, it gets outscaled, but for the early game, you've got strong potential campuses if you want them. You've got uh, production towards range units and XP, so you can go like <laughs> level up on a city state and then come in later with like three expos that are like level two minimum which is quite a lot of extra power the 12 extra combat strength there um so you can get stuff like that going and you can set up nice push because you have a ton of power but it just falls off and you i feel like you have to push somebody unless you just have a, an incredible spawn um i do want to point out you compared the civ bonus to city patron goddess this one actually applies to every district you build where city patron goddess is just the first so like I every mean, that's, that's true. One. It um, is better, but um, I guess it just like they just it looks to me like a lot of pantheons. That's what yeah. it made me think of. Like you've got God of the Forge as well for your ranged units. Uh, but yeah, I've always it always feels like quite good. I see people always rate Hungary very highly. Uh, this bonus is pretty similar to Hungary's. It doesn't discount the buildings inside of districts. But it's also more reliable because it always discounts every district. Yeah, yeah. But one of the other issues that this Civ has is, again, like, the, the pyramids are anti-scaling. They're incredibly good early, but then they you want a district cluster for maximum scaling. And uh, they take up aqueduct tiles. So you typically have to choose between crushing them or whatever or not. Uh, and they also just they they mess up district cl clustering um quite a bit so you end up with lower average adjacencies if you play around the pyramids at all right. yeah mm -hmm. and also one last thing this is an ffa tier list nubia is like insanely cracked in duels <laughs> right yes. yeah one v one is unbelievably good. good this would be like an f tier sieve in duels but just thought yeah, i'd mention I mean, that even in ffa if you if you want to kill somebody and you want to archer rush, I think the archer rush on Nubia is better than the classical push on Alexander. 
for just killing your neighbor and coming out still somewhat relevant. Yeah, I mean, like, it's not a good strategy for deadly. winning, but you can kill somebody if you hate them. Oh, yeah. I did that to Midnight once. <laughs> <laughs> and it was kind of far. It is still just yeah. It just it, the, those archers are no joke. They're like plus five base, plus one movement is just so much. And then with the production bonus towards them, they are cheaper than an archer because of the that and then the XP as well. Like it's just so much. And one movement on an archer I think is underrated because what that really means is you can step onto a hill and shoot, or onto a woods and and shoot. Yeah. And so many times, archers in that early game are spending their turns repositioning and aren't able to shoot. So you have a huge advantage with that. All right. I suppose we can move on to the next Civ then. Yeah. Uh, this is Gaul. The leader is Ambiorix, I think is his name. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's seen better days, to be honest. It's still like a very safe Civ. Nobody will ever attack you on Gaul, generally, because you get that extra defensible district, you have extra production. Your general build order is to rush iron working first. So like, there's no way they're taking you off guard, because you're always improving the iron you have a spawn bias for. Right. Um, I'd kind of put him above Abe in Reliable myself. Yeah, I don't think I would put it super high because the issue is it's kind of hard to play for first on the Civ for a lot of the same reasons it's hard to play for first on Abraham Lincoln. You don't have... Yep. Um, it's hard to go free inquiry. Uh, because, yeah, I don't think you even can. <laughs> yeah, I don't even think you can go free inquiry because you end up with very few commercial hubs with the standard opium opener. At the very and least... you don't you... get the uh, adjacency from City Center ever. Yeah. So your commercial ops are always going to be lower adjacency. You do have some free culture. This is the Civ that won the Iron Man FFA for um, the Season 1 finale, but I think that was largely due to the fact... It was like two factors. One is that Under the Gun was playing it, and he's one of the best players of all time. And two right. is that his neighbors were all like super around because they all bored each other, so he had a ton yeah. of free kills to clean up. So the reason why he wasn't the target of those attacks was because it was Gaul, which is very good. Yeah. But then still the situation was very good. Like, you, he could have been in Australia's type position and just had that for free. He had um, a ton of warmongers around him, and they all left him alone. And that is one of Gaul's, like, assets. Like, nobody attacks yeah, it's you, actually. Yeah, it's a completely unpushable sieve. So people know that you are very safe. But then uh, even in the stream that was casting it, as you could see... The Civ has a lot of struggles. Like, he was struggling on stats for quite a while. He was well behind in techs. Uh, other Civs were still keeping up in production for a good amount of it just because they had the food to work their more mines. Um, because he, doesn't, he does struggle on food because you're going opidums. It's hard to get the internals up. Like, Magnus internals are just so strong to compete with as a, an opening. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I think that when you're looking at the way he plays out and like, you can't also do like consistent uh, go plaza subs for your campuses either. So you've got to work around like mines and stuff. It's, it's doable. And I think it is strong, but it's just a matter of like his weaknesses are pretty profound. I find if the game ever makes it to turn 80 plus, which it typically will in a, in a free for all, if it's not just CC'd, he'll start scaling harder and harder and it kind of comes into the game quite well at the late game but he kind of feels like you're trying to manage your resources a lot in the meantime and that's probably going to lead to <laughs> mediocre score so if it is cc today you won i don't think you're really in a good spot yeah i i'm not sure i'd put him above abraham lincoln to be honest like i feel like abe is much more consistently getting higher placements for me anyway Really? Like it's, well, like I, Abe. I, I like the culture on the mines, though. The culture on the mines are so powerful. Right. The yeah. mines are really, spammed really... by every sieve, yeah. Yeah. And it's, I don't know. It, I guess it's it's contingent on if you see, like, the Wonder Engineer right away. Because, like, you're you're making, you know, a decent amount of points to do, like, maybe a couple of projects. But if you do see, you know, Emotep and you have a quick Coliseum, you have right. Audience Chamber, you That's start getting the campuses too, yeah. up. It's so, like you can get rolling pretty. Cr I think Gaul is, I mean, it's, conti like it's contingent on Emotep or a Wonder Engineer. Then right. he's very There's strong. Like he is, I think, it's, I think he is reliable for sure, but yeah, I, I just think he's, he's stronger. And then he actually has like an ancient era bonus. Like he'll get, 
to the Opadums before uh, Abraham. Abraham doesn't have an ancient era bonus, or like you right. know, like a, like a pre you know era for the era yeah, score. He also right? has this unique warrior, so like it's impossible yeah. to miss so, golden on Gaul. So you he, get a unique he gets golden, right? Yeah, right. exactly. So that's he's, true. I think he's that does increase his consistency for yeah. sure. And then also like the King of the Urbines bonus where he. He has the one combat strength for the melee and anti cav units. Uh, I've seen that one used to pretty good effect, even in the late game with anti cav and stuff like uh, the AT crews or like infantry pushes. Um, whereas, like, I mean, Abe definitely has the plus five, but like I said, like, if you're gonna keep pushing, sometimes he doesn't have it essentially because you, you've lost those units. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're both pretty similar, but I do think personally, I, I would, I would rate Gaul a little higher. Okay. One thing I do want to point out, if I see a lobby, that says host rule, zero blue city states, I'm not picking Gaul. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. The lack of ability to go free inquiry effectively on him. And the fact that, uh, you're not opening Magnus internals, so your cities don't have as much food, right? If you're opening Opidums, your cities don't reach higher population breakpoints as quickly. It can be very hard to get to, like, 7 pop for a 3rd district. Yeah, yeah I agree there with that. If there are 0 blue city-states, it's so hard to get good science. If there's, like, 3 or 4, you can just leverage your production to a ton of universities, you're sort fine. Sort of. Sort of. But, like, you, you kind of need to go open them into commercial anyways to fix your food problem to get up to the higher populations. Yeah. So if there is a lot of blue city states versus a city, a city that can go commercial into campus, you can still lose out quite a bit because now they're building their five science libraries while you can't even build your campuses yet. So you can still lose some tempo, depending, of course. Yeah, Um. also... Papa pointing this out, the first great engineer that's up for grabs is huge, because Gull always gets the first engineer for free, nobody can ever contest it. Right. So, if it's one of the good ones, and you can get Coliseum, it's a massive gain in tempo. I had a game where I played Gull, my Civ spotlight on it, I ended up going Divine Spark. The plus one great engineer point on all of your Opidums, you're on like six engineer points per turn, uh, like turn 28. Like, passively, no projects, you'll get the first great engineer turn 38, just in time for Coliseum. Like, yeah. And it's you, quite good. Also, if you go Divine Spark Gall, um, you can, you have a ton of production. You might as well also add in the Oracle and Pingala strats. Because they I've seen that. And it does with, quite well. They yeah. synergize well with the Divine Spark Pantheon. And, and if you want, that... you can do like Great Library in that same city because it gives two, one great writer, one great scientist. Um, which works with the Pingala promo, and mm -hmm. of course you can get extra book slots because you're not going to be able to build theaters everywhere, and you're going to have Oracle probably with a theater at some point. So yeah, I think it's a lot of good synergy sure. there. I think yeah. um, I think it's a good thing to know is to get a harbor down right away. You don't even need to have mausoleum on the coast; it just needs yep. to be built you next do to a really harbor. Want mausoleum, I agree. Yeah. So it's if yeah. you see like a lake tile. Th toss a harbor in there and then place mausoleum down ASAP and just get it rolling. And then you also, I mean, place two harbors for the cartography boost anyway, but yeah. Yep. But yeah, I, I, I rate it pretty highly as, right. as a non S tier civ, anyways. Um, this next one, Vietnam, I've never even played this if I okay. you want to talk about this. I'd Ahead, I'll Nate. probably put it in very strong myself. Mm -hmm. But do you have any experience on this? If yeah, I love I love Vietnam. I I used to like say, ugh, it's not my style, whatever. But like when I started playing it, it's it, it makes your brain work on your placements, and uh, yeah. it, it's it's just in the early culture is just so phenomenal. Like you when you get like a, a triangle or a diamond set up even, and you have your districts spread around, you chop, you place new growth. Or old, you know, chop old yeah. growth, place new growth, and you and you the movement on the sieve and settling so much faster when you get you know extra movement with all of your units, so you can move and improve and have like a pre monumentality. You can have you yep. can have monumentality everywhere almost for your builders, your settlers. Your it's just nuts. Yeah, you do oh, get yeah. a lot of extra movement, and in the early game, it can be huge. Like you're saying, you can save a turn, sometimes even two, mm -hmm. on your settles because of the the movement there sometimes you'll spawn on a forest and be allowed to move your capital 
yeah. onto an adjacent hill or something, which is quite nice. Um, so you do have some flexibility there, and then the tons are just so good. Like, you don't have to build monuments. They're about half price of monuments, just a little bit over, but then they give so much more. Um, like, if you set it up a nice triangle or diamond, you're pretty much always going to be the first to feudalism, which everybody knows is a huge deal. Yes. And then you rush medieval fairs, and then your game is just on. Like, uh, one of the things that gets kind of overlooked is the uh, the thing where you get science, culture, or prod in for for your the buildings, buildings in those yes, districts. Yeah. Like, that's typically you're going to get to the first building pretty quick, and then sometimes for, like, campuses, unis and stuff, you get those little you're relatively quick, and then industrials, probably the first ones that you're ever going to get to the third tier. But, like, for example, like, an industrial... Everybody likes what is it called? The uh, there's the one industrial guy that gives the three culture for your da Vinci, Da Vinci, da Vinci da right? Vinci. Yeah. Da, Vietnam has Da Vinci built in because you're pretty much going to place for your industrial setups the woods, and by the time that you finish getting your power plants up, you have Da Vinci, right? You, you have three free culture in that district. It's pretty good, right? As a Very bonus, strong, yeah. And I think the main thing is just the early game culture snowball. And the fact that you basically don't need theaters other than for boosts if you want them. Um, but you can do free ink setups quite nicely because you have an extra district to work around with for a little bit of adjacency. Mm -hmm. um, city Patron is beautiful culture. in the Civ too. Yep, City Patron's great. War and Plunder's totally good. Um, I do have some. Yeah, you're, you're another non pushable Civ as well. So you can sit there and free sim. Yeah. I do have another thing I want to add that's really good about Vietnam. The new Golden Age dedication for the third era. Not the first two. You'd go like yeah, 10 brush, then free really ink. And then during the third era, you can go drums of war. And it's timed perfectly for like tanks and artillery. You have an encampment in every city. And it doesn't even take up a district slot. So you can just right. build military academies everywhere with a card for a 30% discount and get a ton of free stats from drums of war. Yeah, mm -hmm. free stats, free prod, and then the prod then goes fifteen percent more towards the units. It's a very, I think it's in a great spot, especially like you say with drums of war now. Um, really, really good sif. I don't think it's a god tier, but because there are, you can get low rolls where resources block your your triangles, but it's not that terribly hard to play around. You can you can definitely make your your triangles pretty consistent. So I mm -hmm. put it very strong for sure. Thousand percent. Okay. Anything else to add, or should we move on to Basil? Uh, Broken. One, one more Basil. thing, real quick, with Vietnam. Uh, I Trinda had done some testing on it, and I've done some that's pretty good. Uh, there's another angle you can take with it, with uh, planting woods so early, and the fact that your woods stay underneath of it. You can do preserves very well because the, the woods are under the preserve, giving one more appeal even than normal. So uh, if you do want to go that way with high culture early, you can actually get to the last building, the con what is it? And sanctuary the, and conservation. The sanctuaries, yeah. um, at co at conservation. So even like in games with no blue city state and stuff, you can actually have access to a good amount of extra science and, uh, yeah, the, it's actually quite flexible. I would just guess what I was going to say there. That's cool. I like that, that extra strat. Okay, on to basil. Yes, okay, basil. Broken. Potentially the best average placement civ. Um, yeah, I think it's timing push is insanely good, right? Like right. the free units are insane. You can spread crusades for free, which is what plus five, mm -hmm. and then you get plus mm -hmm. two just from your taxes, even if you don't convert anybody. So if you kill one person who has a holy or who has their own religion and then you go to attack somebody else crusade starts spreading you're at plus nine on them between crusades right. and plus four from taxes yeah so it's definitely... you're at plus seven against anyone snowballing um, it's so bad it does require that you have someone to kill yes but, but the thing is he's like really good at I, that. I would say the 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 meta that has evolved around basils is Either you give me a religion or I kill you. Yeah, this so is... the first two people that it meets, it don't want to die to the timing push that you mentioned, which is very powerful. So since they don't want to die, then those two people feed religion. And so typically you're going to be at a minimum of, by the time you're going to actually push, you have plus six taxes, plus five crusade, you're at plus 11. 
And I don't know a lot of civs that can survive plus 11 and slamming through walls. <laughs> and no. if you bring any Tagmas, those give plus 2 to the adjacent units. You can be up to 13. Yeah. It's a lot of combat strength. And like you said, it keeps snowballing. This Civ actually had a discussion in the CPL admin Discord sparked around it about whether or not founding a religion to let your ally Basil take, o take it over is feeding. Like, that is how game warping taxes is. Um, they ended yeah. up saying that it wasn't. Like, you are allowed to found a religion just to let your allied Basil take it over. But it's, like, crazy how much free combat strength that gives him for the rest of the game. It really is. Yeah, I think that Civ just has... And, I mean, it also has a bunch of free amenities as the cities he takes over. Uh, you can just build more of those hippodromes to keep the cities happy. And then you're replenishing your army while you're doing it. It's it's incredibly powerful. It's uh, yeah. Although it's, it, yeah, it's the too nerfs much. to the hippodrome are a good meme. Uh, they literally they literally give the same number of amenities as a regular entertainment complex because they nerfed hippodromes from plus three to plus two and buffed regular entertainment complexes to buff to plus two in the same patch. Sure. So that is funny. But they're still half price and give like a tank. So <laughs> there's yeah. that. Yeah, I literally had one game where I just I would uh, pr uh produce the, the hippodromes and uh, leave it on one turn in all of my cities, and then when I got the Tagma, just switched off and had a full army. Yeah, and all I was doing is building like you know maybe crossbows. And you, in FFA, and you, 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 you don't, don't need the need... strategics too because yeah. the strategics is a huge deal. Mm-hmm. You just you don't need that, and you don't you don't need any uh, artillery, you, or you don't need any siege yep. units. You don't you need just, any siege. So you just have like a, a two composition army if you need that. You just need like the crossbows and or to field cannons right. to clear out some pike and shots. Yeah, and the thing I think that it. people don't realize. Sorry, I just talked over you there, no, but you like you're, you're totally right in that the two composition army is incredibly good because it means you sweep through people really fast. Your siege is always what's slowing you down when you're trying to take multiple cities. You need to wait for your siege to get into position and then shoot it down. But mm -hmm. if it's at the same pace as your tagmas, you know, you could just I move in siege sweeping. units. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just <laughs> mow through siege. Like I've seen sieves die in like four turns. Once they like if that Basil's already killed one guy, he's onto another guy now with tanks. Like he just mows the city down. It's insane. And high culture too. Uh, on top of that, when you uh, with the hippodromes, you just have if you can do a good setup and fash. It's it's un it's unstoppable. It's broken and it needs to be nerfed. I agree. Actually, I think yeah. it is broken. Needs to be nerfed. The only successful defense or semi successful I've ever done against the basil. Every other time I've died <laughs> is uh, just planes. Just, yeah. just don't even interact in the war, which is another broken thing that needs to be changed. But yeah. The yeah. It's too powerful. Yeah. Alright. Um, ready to move on to the next sieve then? Yep. yep. Alright, that is Catherine uh, Black Queen. This is definitely an interesting one. The plus one level of diplomatic visibility is like just plus three combat strength at all times. Uh, right. Other than that, France's built-in bonuses aren't super impressive. Yeah, so, they're all they're all fine, but they're not impressive. Impressive. I would put it somewhere in reliable. It's not situational at all. It's it's basically gonna be doing the same uh, thing every single game. I I'm a lover of. Uh, hey, <laughs> one second. Huh? I'm a, I'm a, I I really like. Uh, Thank you, thank you, homie. I appreciate it. Much love. Um, I think um, I, I'm a lover of uh, Black Queen, but the thing is, it's like um, it, it's it's uh, the ancient era. But you don't get any ancient era, right? Yeah, you yeah. don't have uh, era. And, and, uh, miss Goldens. You you can miss Golden. It's I think it's between situation good and like meh. Like I yeah. think there needs to be a tier between that. Like the combat bonus is there. But you, it's a no bonus sieve until feudalism. Yeah, I certainly and, wouldn't put it castles. in reliable. It definitely like it's really yeah. It's I uh, mean, I guess uh, yeah. 
I mean, because UK, there's, there's a lot of players that miss gold. I think it's I think it's situationally good, situationally good or below because it's like I don't know. Like you may not get those goodie huts. I mean, right. we're we're playing in a day of age where like there's 1.5 goodie huts. If we play standard one 1.0 goodie huts. No, that's true. No, then you're not huts. getting golden. You you need you need to do a money like a hundred percent need to do yep. a money or a plus three campus maybe even levy project yeah. is something like it's it's too much. You need to save your gold for levy, and that could really put you behind on tempo as well. Because what if the levy? I've had so many situations where you're like, oh, it's only forty gold levy. Okay, I'm going to do this this hundred gold, you know, yep. and then I have to get, <laughs> get a builder. I have to find maze to chop. I'm I'm wasting a builder charge and a maze chop for later. It's it's hell. Yeah, so, I could definitely see that. Yeah. The only thing is that so it's got like some good stuff going, like a river bias. Uh the unique improvement means housing, which is pretty nice. It's not incredible. Uh the unique unit is quite good. Combat strength is good, and then uh spies, if you know how to use them right anyways, the extra visibility actually lets you know what people are building and, and stuff and if you get a spy on them, then you really know every single thing that they're building. I think that has a lot of value, but I guess, yeah, like, if you can't get past the early gold, then who cares, right? You you do need some more consistency early to get to that point. And even then, it's just kind of like, it's a nice thing to be able to know what everyone's building, but sometimes it doesn't even matter. Yeah. Well, like, you can you can purely target. So I, I target people with my spies, for sure, and I'll slow them down, because if I see, like, they've rushed you know, industrialization, you know, I'll make sure. And you, one thing you need to do with this sieve, like 100%, is when you rush intelligence agency, you need to have all your spies up, all of them for maximum efficiency. Because if you only have like one out of three or two out of three, then you get uh, to nationalism where you can get another spy, you know, so you can have, a, you know, four capacity and so on, whatever. Uh, you need to make sure you're taking the right promotions. You need to make sure you're always gaining resources with your spy mission first and then doing it so they don't die. I've had so many people take 84%, maybe maybe like 70% to 80% and have them die and they could have gained resources and had that 10% more like uh, effective mission, right? A successful mission. You right. and then uh you need to like, you know, burn their industrial, right? You need to see if anybody has a dam. Um, you, that's that's how you do it because that's how you slow them down. When you, if you if you kill someone's dam and they have like two industrials there with like a commercial whatever, they have to spend so much time repairing that. They have to spend like what is that like uh, ten turns as a market commercial, and then the uh, yeah yeah the, the industrial yeah. that's like ten turns of it, it's uh, quite a lot of turns yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean the sieve would be amazing and it it's probably pretty good in duels, but uh. Yeah, I mean, sabotaging someone's dam isn't going to help you win a 10-player FFA that often unless you're the it, only It depends two on who it is, so yeah. it really depends on, like, it's specific. It just depends. Yeah. If everyone's having a good sim, then you're going to get out simmed. One thing right? I... I mean, it depends on how you do it, of course, but one thing I've done before in a free-for-all that was quite effective, I think I got second in the game, was a coarser timing push with Black Queen for, like, plus nine intel which is, <laughs> needless to say, quite good. At that point, you feel like Basil is slapping the walls and still killing the cities. Uh, and then during that time, keeping on simming, whatever, and then after the coursers, I upgrade the ones that are left into Cav, and I build Yu-Yu to go up the other way. So, I mean, that's situational that you'll have somebody on the same continent, but those guards are really, really good. So, if you can get by that point, some, they're not always going to have a level 2 spy. Sometimes they fail their mission. Sometimes they don't build intelligence agency or whatever. You can, it's like a decent chance at 6. Most like, you know, for sure, plus 3. Plus your Yu Yu is going to be typically enough to kill somebody if you go at that timing when they're trying to go like up in industrialization. So I think it's like, what was I saying? Abraham can kill one Civ. I think Black Queen can, she can definitely kill two potentially. Mm -hmm. But she also doesn't have some of the other like simming bonuses to get you anywhere. Um, yeah, not until feudalism. That's wanna, the sad yeah. part. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, that's where it kind of falls. With, there is a twenty percent production towards like wonders and stuff, but that's like it's it's, it's so it's so, yeah it's it's yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's a little eh. 
Yeah, if it was classical yeah. and you could rush Artemis with her or like some or Adam and Inky, that would be a lot better. But mm -hmm. yeah, what are you gonna say, Herson? Um, yeah. Golden RPGs is arguing in my chat about how good Basil really is. He's saying he used to play a ton of Basil, and that he's not a big fan of the Civ. Yeah, but you need to be shameless, like Midnight started people doing, and now everyone's doing it, where you threaten everyone around you with war if they don't give you taxes. No one and wants then... to get Tagma pushed and have their game. It's it's like a you know you're foreseeing like a bad day, you know if you if you don't if you say yes or no, like yeah I'll build a religion, and if you say no, then you're gonna see freaking ten fifteen Tagmas. And a couple of crossbow with a general, which means you need to go to military tactics to get pikemen to stop pike and shots later on over at metal casting. It, you have to tech so far off and you will not have a simming game. You'll have a war game or you just go to astrology and you build a damn holy site. Like it's what, what kind of a day do you want? You know, and exactly. it's, 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 it's really hard to say no to that unless if you're a combat civ or you say ally, you know. It, it, I mean, Basil won't say that to a Solomon. Maybe he would be like, yeah, just build one later because you're going to be sending me 20 trade routes, right? Right. You know, you can negotiate but, it. Yeah. But that's, uh, but, it's awful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just one of those things. Like, he doesn't, I don't know. It sounds like it's not that crazy, but you can have the same tech as somebody else. And if you do get those plus six total ta taxes from your two like neighbors, and then you have your two base, you can still keep a Tagma for plus two just to put next to even a tank. But if you have the same tech unit, and then you kill any any units around to get that city converted to Crusade, you're at plus 11. And then plus 13 if it's next to a Tagma, which is enough. You don't need a lead it in tech. And you can even just blitz the cities if you really want. Like, yeah, um, Golden's yeah. just saying that like the 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 Civ is like no simming bonuses. So basically, if you only had two neighbors and both of them you ally with in exchange for them giving you free religion, so like you have to wait until you have like railroads to get to a third guy because you have no other neighbors. Like right. you're gonna get out stimmed by the time you can actually use the taxes. So it's dependent have, on, yeah, but, like, yeah. it's dependent on, like, terrain. It's dependent on, um... It is. It, it, it's, it's dependent on the other religious civs. What if someone, uh, you know, what if, what if there's, like, a China out there that just rushes Stonehenge and just, you know, purely denies it to minimize grief throughout the, um, the worldwide map, right? Um, right. What right, if, right. uh... Yeah, what if Gandhi does but it's that? it's never you know? really gonna happen. Gandhi can do it for sure, but China mm -hmm. has got to throw their game for it. Yeah. But you know what the other thing is, though? It's like, you can rush to tanks on that Civ. Like, so many other Civs, like, need industrialization to be relevant. He doesn't. Like, you just rush tanks. Like, because anybody else who rushes tanks, if it doesn't work, you're out. Like, if he rushes tanks, it's gonna work. That's the mm -hmm. thing. Because Golden you just can... Yeah. Go ahead, sorry, sorry, Nick. You just yeah. can slap the cities. You can just take the Civs so quick. You want to introduce yeah. yourself, Golden? I guess. Uh, no, no. Right. I just wanted to uh, defend my position, and I, I want to be clear because Herson said I think it, uh, that I thought it was a bad sieve, and that's certainly not uh, what I think. I think it's a strong sieve, but I don't think that it's in the uh, the broken category. I just think if you're in a lobby with like ten players with hands, uh, it's not like a it's it's just not that great of a sieve. I think it's uh, showing or telling, I guess, that in the CPL top ten FFA, um, you know it. Theodora was not, or I, I guess, like I think Theodora is mostly considered stronger than that, and it was not like picked mm. or banned, um, or like really part of the action. I mean, Basil was banned, um, but I, I guess like there were ten bans, and I, I think if you had asked all players for like their number one ban, it would not be on the list. Although you do have to bear I in mind know. that uh, people. <laughs> People gave all of their bans independently without knowing what other people were banning. So it's not like somebody is like, ah, oh, somebody else already banned the Civ I wanted to ban. I guess I'll ban Basil. Like, somebody had this as their one ban that they gave blind, not knowing. Well, there is sort or of a meta, right, where you banning. can assume that, like, other strong Civs are going to get banned by other people, and so I, you kind of maybe go to, like, your lower tier one. I think I might yeah, have even... Possibly gone for no i think that was the case where i actually probably would have banned theodore if i didn't realize she was banned 
uh, was not banned. Somebody else had mentioned that it was a high likelihood she gets banned to me when we were talking about it beforehand, so I assumed that they were probably going to ban it, and so I didn't. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't banned, nor was it picked, and it was in somebody's draft. Well, not everyone is a an enjoyer, but the thing is with Theodora, I actually think Theodora is maybe weaker than Basil because the the wall strength. Well, if we're talking about FFA, like being able to shoot through walls is pretty nice because it's it, typically yeah. everyone's defense strategy. They they greed, and then when the units come, they build walls, and then they're good for like a couple more turns while they build units. But if Basil yeah. shows up and you only have walls, you're, you're having a bad time. I, I'm just saying, like from my personal experience, and you know, I'd like to think that I'm a pretty good FFA player. That you know, playing Basil in a lobby that has people who really know what they're doing, it, it's it's a huge struggle. Even in a scenario which I convince both my allies to create a religion, like it usually, um, as I think Hurston was describing earlier, like then you don't have anybody to easily Togma, and so you're like doing some like far away Togma play, or you're having to do a later era push, and uh, it, it's it's just not a, as easy. And you just get outsimmed, like uh, by just, another. Just look at the combat suit. strength that anybody else gets compared to you. If you do get those two neighbors to give it to you, and then you can get even like one kill nearby to get that city converted. Yeah, you're at plus. But like 11. those conversions don't happen like overnight. I guess I would say, like you know, you are usually in monumentality first, so you don't want to spend the uh, the the missionary or like I guess you really need an apostle to convert your neighbor, um, and then. Like if you, so then you're waiting till you're in like pen brush and voice, and by that time you're probably already starting yeah. your tagma push. So when you're doing tagmas, it's very unlikely you actually have anything more than your plus two. But later in the game, yes, you have a very strong combat bonus, and the hippodrome is a very unique uh, and very good building. But now that it only gives plus two amenities, I, I, you know, it, it's not that, like it's really hard to get stats if you're doing like a holy site into or like you either have stats and no gold or you have gold and no stats when you do like a basil sim kind of um and i guess you can do hippodromes as like your fourth district um but then you've been simming the whole game without any sim like with nothing special from basil giving you a sim bonus i guess the only thing you get is you get a little bit extra faith from the extra great profit points yeah, um, I've been a bit quiet for the whole Basil discussion because I've like never even played the Civ myself. It definitely doesn't feel like super reliable. Like it's not a Civ that will always be able to pop off. You do sort of need an easy target, or like if you if your allies, what if you're like two neighbors, just say no, we're not going to give you a free religion, and you are like they're calling your bluff are you going to tag them into them and if you do tag them into them you're not getting first that game you might kill them but they can slow you down enough that it's not going to like snowball your game out of control especially because you had to put a hippodrome in every city i don't know plus seven is not a bluff i don't think like, but it's um, not plus seven if your neighbor who you're threatening doesn't give you taxis then it might only be plus you know four well, well no no so no so you have plus you have plus you have two crusades. from the taxes and then you have crusade plus five so it's, it's seven actually right plus there. nine just at the tagma push because if they're adjacent to another tagma they get plus two i don't know crusade just doesn't like magically go into their cities like it 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 only if it, if it, if it's their neighbor and it's right next to them, they already have religious pressure just by a little bit, and then you kill about three four units. It, it's it's really strong, and then they're converted, and then the pain starts. Yeah, but if you go crusade first, it's so it's just so bad for simming. Like, I I don't even go crusade first on basil because then my sim is like so affected. So like if you are doing that, like yeah, you probably kill your neighbor like in the long run. But as Hurston said, you're not winning the game. And, and I want to be clear. I think Basil is a very strong Civ, and like I agree with a lot of the points you guys are making. But I, 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 you know, I'm very steadfast in thinking that it's not in the broken tier, and that there are plenty of other Civs that are just simply stronger than Basil, and, and much more well, consistent. So from this, from the angle of like that, yes. But here's the other thing: if they call your bluff, yes, you're in a tough time. But if they call your bluff. They might make you go ninth, but they're going tenth, and nobody's gonna willingly do that for one in a free for all. And uh, the thing is, I mean, when I've seen it happen before, so it, it well, definitely doesn't... yeah, it it does happen, but that's not the most likely scenario. And then the other thing that happens though is like if you are on the other side of the map from Basil, he's the scariest civ in the game to face, yeah. because by the time that he's gotten his allies. 
to give him the that plus two, and then it's not uncommon. He threatens one or two other guys as well, because now he's got so much leverage after I... his allies give it to him. Then, dude, if you're on the other side of the map, I've seen him rock up with plus 10 or plus 12 combat strength, and there's literally nothing you can do. Just genuinely nothing. Like, you will die, and uh, that's completely game ending like once if he gets two allies to give it to him and then now he starts threatening somebody else hey do you want the plus six taxes or do you want to give it to me and they're always going to bend over i that. definitely think that there are going to be civs later on which i would act a rate above basil because there are civs which also have pushes which are ridiculously strong but have much better simming bonuses like aztec can get to the same level of basil it's not maybe as consistent, but he can get to like a completely unstoppable level. But Aztec also has way more simming bonuses. I mean, I think Chandra is a great example of just a sim that's straight up better. Like, even though it doesn't have taxis, like you get the plus one for each building, you have the like a sim bonus because you get an amenity if somebody else like puts a uh, follower in your city which is super, super strong. You also have the cheaper like uh, creation of cores and armies. Like Chandra would easily go above Basil for me, and I don't think they're even on the same tier like at all. And I've been playing a lot more Chandra lately, especially you get the free general. So there, there's just so much more sim bonuses going on with Chandra, plus it gets a consistent like you know, plus two or plus three war bonus. I say we put another tier. <clears throat> I'm willing to put Basil on situationally broken. Yeah, I can make a tier that's, that's just like I think that's, that's fair. fine. I've had a lot of experiences with him being giga broken, but I do agree he does need some things to happen. Yeah, Chandra's just gonna sim, and he's gonna get to that powerful level. I mean, uh, the best games with Basil are when you kind of spawn in the middle of the map. You have two good neighbors that, like, just, you know, give you taxis. Maybe not immediately, but they, admit, they like, agree to do it at some point. And then you have, like, another neighbor who's just, you know, not that strong of a player. And you just roll them. And then, like, you get, you know, pillages. You get, uh, like, you, you know, a lot of snowball from the cities. And then you just go from there. But if you, like, have to sim until, like, Corsairs or, or tanks, I don't, I don't think it's very strong. Yeah, also, I have Alko in my chat, uh, who's another pretty decent player, and he's here saying, like, Basil kind of has anti-sim bonuses in a way. The fact that you have to go Holy Sites and Crusades, but, like, that that doesn't help your sim at all. And the Hippodrome's not a very great district now that it only gets two amenities. Like, you're kind of having to do some anti-sim plays just to get your bonuses activated. Right. So it's but like... I think it, I think it plays way differently than any simming sieve does because it's all about the war. It's like it's got the most powerful war bonus in the game if if things go to plan anyways. Like we're saying that the allies giving it to you so it's like yes you're all in on war but the war works so it doesn't matter. Yeah. But you rush tanks on this sieve. You don't go industrialization. You don't tech a bunch of stuff that other people are teching. So yeah, you can say, you can look at it one way that you're losing on symbiosis, but in another way you're saving hundreds if not thousands of science by the time it hits tanks because you didn't tech on all this other stuff because you, just, you don't care about it. You're just going to mow through cities. You just need to do the other things like um, maybe you chop out Stonehenge and get the Apostle for like, you know, and get Tithe rolling so you have, you know, good income or stewardship for better stats. Ah. There, there's a ton of different. You have to play it different than other religious civs. Yeah, it's way different. But I do. Yeah. I mean, I can definitely see the point that like it has to. It's always kind of on that knife's edge of whether or not it works because you're in war, versus like a, it does feel like there's consistency to just being allowed to be defensive and just let your civs do its thing. All right. Um, I think we ought to move on since we've been on Basil for a very long time now. Oh, gee, it's going to take a minute, yeah. huh? Yeah, yeah we, were we, on, we were on it for a while, and then we came back to it again for a while. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm going to yeah. head out, uh, but I'll be following along for the next, like, 20 or so minutes on Twitch, so have a good one, guys. Okay. Much love, brother. Yeah, Basil is just so controversial. Um, Catherine Magnificence will be the next Civ. Um, I definitely like it better than Black Queen. Uh, 
Obviously, it doesn't have the combat bonus and that Black Queen does, since it doesn't get free Diplovis, but the extra culture is, like, a lot of culture. Like, it's I think so it much. does quite well in this meta with Free Inquiry, because it can get very high culture, still hit all the civics on a fast pace, while mainly prioritizing, uh, like, getting good commercial hub adjacencies and getting a free good Free Inquiry. Right. Like, if you remember Dragos was the rank one player at the end of season one for FFA. This was a Civ he picked for the um, yep. season one finale. I, I do think it's quite good. I think it's uh, probably sure very somewhere strong. In very strong, yeah. Um, I mean, like you, like you mentioned, it does have good free ink because of the fact that you have the culture to supplement. You have a good feudal timing. And uh, unlike Black Queen, which can have trouble with the golden, Magnet or with her, like since it's just plus one on improved resources after craftsmanship, you actually can just hit political pretty consistently. So you actually do get extra error score, which is quite a big deal. Yeah. Um I don't know where he'd put it. Maybe very strong or reliable. I mean it's it's very I think very it's very strong. strong. Like yeah. you get you rush craftsmanship, you get all that culture, you rush feudalism for more of your bonuses, get more yep. culture, get more gold. You, you, you can yeah. do what you and want. Free promo on spies is something that's a huge deal because it guarantees level twos. And then you can do all the same spy st shenanigans if you want while also having a sim. Like I think with Black Queen, if you're doing all that stuff, trying to breach their dams, it's because you don't have a sim bonus. And so you're trying to like catch up. You're clawing your way back into a decent position. But with Magnificence, you're at least probably on the same level as them, and now you're just putting them down to guarantee your win. Like, I think it's just that next level above, for the most part. And you still have guards, which are quite good if you want to go for some a little bit later. And then since it's more of a semi civ, like, using the 20% reduction towards bonuses can be really good for things like Forbidden City, uh, which is typically quite contested, or Kilwa, or some of those other, like, sim style like wonders they got one out in the mid game so yeah i think it's quite good yeah i would um rate it as pretty solid i'm not sure how much else there is to say on the sim yeah it's yeah. kind of boring but it's yeah strong culture just gets free culture it's yeah. been 20 minutes on basil then it's like three minutes yeah that's Catherine magnificent it's gonna All happen right. <laughs> chandra gupta is the next civ up yeah Probably on the top there, broken. Um, he's definitely feels like a more consistent basil with less high roll potential. Like he... right, he he can only hit up to plus three. But one thing that uh Chandra has that so basil, one of the things I was talking about with him is crazy good is the fact that you can hit through the walls. Well, Chandra has extra movement on the siege, which is kind of the other side of the the issue. The reason why hitting through walls is so good is partly because. Siege is so slow. But Echo is saying plus movement as well, yeah. Yeah, the plus movement yeah. is guaranteed double pillage on powerful. Helis. Yeah. One thing that I need to point out, because all of our viewers might not know this, um the twenty five percent discount on corpse and armies stacks uh additively with the discount you get from military academies you can get 50 percent discounts on corpse and armies on this it's bid. pretty nuts yeah, yeah your Something. units are so cheap there's also high rolls of minus 50 phase congress then which or prod congress either one that comes with or i mean gold doesn't matter any of the minus congresses honestly plus a hundred well Plus 100 huh. fraud is disgusting if you're just faith buying your units and the person you're attacking doesn't have pre-builds. Well, yeah. It is disgusting. But also, like with Nagazar Gamu, for example, which is 10% reduction per building, you can get up to an 80% reduction with Chandra Gupta. And uh, you can buy like tank armies for something ridiculously cheap, like 400 faith. Um, yeah, It's not fair. Like, if you happen to get that, it's just one random uncontested city state of Nagazakami. Like, India also just India in general has some really strong, flexible civ bonuses. An extra belief on religion is quite nice. The extra amenities that's, uh, that's are a very Gandhi nice. Bonus. He doesn't get an extra. Oh, wait. Oh, no. But, yeah, never mind. That uh, was only extra Gandhi. amenities, super nice. Yeah, amenities. And nice. I mean, yeah, you can play the Zen style if you want, or you can go for the classic. 
you get the free general, super good, step bells are incredible, Varus, similar deal with what we were talking about before. You're never getting pushed because you have Varus. And you can actually you can actually classical push with them if you want. They're just that strong. Yeah, Varu is also like you can keep a Varu around till later in the game and then just put them on the front lines to like weaken enemy units. Yeah. I was yeah. watching an access stream where he kept it in like a city center that he had taken. And then he was moving it out, shooting, and then moving it back in. <laughs> yeah, which access... I thought was pretty clever. <laughs> access is actually the reason. Uh, I was the one who banned Chandra Gupta in the um, the, the finals for uh, season mm, one yeah, of FFA. Yeah. Because I knew Access was like a huge Chandra Gupta player, and I knew I'd never play it. I was like, I don't want this in my draft, and I don't want to deal with it if somebody who does play it has it in their draft. <laughs> yeah. You give access to Chandra Gupta. It's he, he's a legendary. He's like the best Chandra Gupta player ever. So he's going to, he's going to do work every time he plays it. It's going to be good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a very strong sieve, and then the extra sight is also kind of underrated. Like you get to, you, you know, seeing out that far is pretty nice. Because like if you're gonna go for pillages, like with helis or anything like that. Uh, you can remain unspotted by moving one tile at a time, and then once you see them, they don't see you, so you can dodge any defending units for like with cav or or uh, helis. Also, a nice thing about India, you don't have to go that many holy sites. Like you could just put down three holy sites just to make all yeah. your units there, and then like exactly. the rest of your cities open commercial hubs. Or maybe you get in yeah, the game. Yeah, you can do the Zen strat. You first meet like three white CS. You say, okay, it's a choral music game. I first met three white yep. CS, and then you put a holy site like everywhere. Like you can play very yeah, flexibly. Yeah, and both with are it. very good. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I mean, like one of the other things too that Axis always does is he like I think he goes to city parks. Warlord's Throne, and uh, he goes, since he doesn't need all those Gov titles, he gets a Victor 3 city very consistently. And so that's the city that builds, it's got the Holy Site, of course, and then you go for the Quick Mill Academy. So you're really cheap buying units that have promotions out of that one city, and you just don't need every single city to be at that level. You just need enough faith to funnel into the one city. And, uh, crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's very, very powerful. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's Chandra Gupta. Nice. Uh, the next one up is Cleopatra Egyptian. This is the one that gives trade route bonuses. I think uh, Egypt, and then and then the Plyomatic. You can do if you want to do those ones quick. And those ones, Egypt's reliable, and Plyomatic's yeah. like. It's very strong situationally, but I think it's just very strong. But I, yeah, yeah, totally make is uh, because I think you want to do internals even if you're Egypt, they're just stronger. Uh, Egypt, the traditional one is obviously better in teamers and stuff, but in FFA, the bonus is just not as good as Ptolemaic's. Ptolemaic's is higher for sure, they're very strong because you get to be more selfish. Um, but baseline Adam and Inky, if you can get it with reads. Typically, you're going to have a good game, very strong uh, production towards those districts and waters on rivers, really good. Kind of falls off yeah. a little bit, but uh, the baseline strength there is just so good that you know, those sieves are very consistent. Yeah, um, one thing that's nice about Cleopatra Egyptian, other sieves also gain extra yields for trading with them, so people are likely to be more amenable towards you in game although sometimes people true. see the juicy floodplains at the monarchy city if you spawn too close to them like floodplain cities are kind of easy to push right and they get the wonder themselves so but you have you know you have your chariot archers to dissuade like early pushes yeah but i think the other thing is like yes people are more like would be amenable in some ways but like dude pushing or sending routes externally that early generally still not as good as internals so like yeah, you would still it's wait. still not going to be until later and like <laughs> it can help in games when somebody has a decision to make between you and somebody else but most times if they were already going to ally just the closest guy and send them their trade routes you know like if there's a <laughs> tie like maybe if they have two allies maybe they'll send you more of their trade routes than they would have for sure that could help yeah. but and lastly one thing that we need to say uh 
if you see somebody else is already picking in Egypt or is already picking Sumeria, the consistency of these civs go way down when you're competing for Etamanaki in the Floodplains Pantheon. Right? This is true. If you miss those, your game's going to be a lot worse. So, like, don't... Like... You do want to try to, like, you know, maybe ask the other guy to switch first, but if they're, like, adamant that they're gonna play it, I would not be so eager to pick it's one of these It's not worth things. being bullheaded and having yeah. both of them, yeah. I agree. Yep. Uh, on to Cyrus. Yep, on to Cyrus. I think Cyrus is very, very good in this meta. Um, the yep. extra culture is really good. I think he's the, the probably the better of the two Persia leaders. He's very self-sufficient. Extra trade rock capacity early speeds up the sim. Um, can easily go for the free inquiry strats and still have great culture. He still gets good timing on all the civics. Uh, I've had a game yep. on Persia where I on Cyrus where I had like turn thirty eight feudalism. It's nice. Pretty easy to get like. Crazy the unique tempo. improvement after buffs is actually quite good as well. One housing and then You think uh, he's broken though? I I don't I don't I, put him I don't maybe I, don't. I think he's very high. I think I think he's I think very strong. I think I mean, both of the Persians are in the very strong. I would put him in very strong, but probably the top of the very strongs that we have mm -hmm. so far. Yeah. Um like on the left side there. Yeah. I think he's better than Vietnam. By um, a little bit. I do personally. think there's one thing, his war bonus is quite nice just to have a generic war bonus. Um, very good, yes. Yeah. Very self-sufficient. Uh, one thing that's really nice, uh, a lot of people haven't talked about this. One thing that sucked about Persia for a long time was that you didn't have a good Golden Age dedication for the Renaissance era, because Reform the Coinage was worthless. Now you can go for the uh, war bonus. If you get a Golden Age from the Third Era... You can go for drums of war, and you have a good dedication, which you used to not have. That's a good point. That is a good point. Yeah. So I've been yeah. really liking Cyrus on the more recent patch compared to previously. Yeah, I mm -hmm. do think. I mean, I think he's really good. So you're always gonna have a good, consistent game. You're always gonna have, because the thing is that you don't always realize it's like consistently running Magnus internals the whole game. Actually, is so good for your for your population. Like, your cities grow really, really big. Um, so you tend to have, like, a ton of prod. And like you said, the free culture is super good because you can focus on free ink and stuff. Generic war bonus is pretty nice. Tempo, he's got he's got a lot packed in there for sure. I love Persia. Top yeah. shelf. It's so good. Nobody ever messes with you early. Immortals are just too good. Yeah, so you're the pretty immortals much are yeah. always left alone. Uh, yeah, also, no, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, there are some other things you have to keep in mind when playing Persia, though. Like, you do want to put the Diplo Quarter and Gov Plaza in the same city that you're sending trade routes to. You probably want the Diplo Quarter right next to the city center, because it reduces the success chance of spies. Um, that would want to remove your governor, because removing governor can be devastating on Persia if you lose Magnus. Yeah, that's true. It can be pretty frustrating. Yeah. People don't typically do it, but the uh, more teamers thing. Yeah, but it's more of a teamers thing, but, you know, it can happen. If, if it does get removed, it is very bad. You can get the success rate very low, like put an encampment in the city, put a uh, Diplo Quarter in the city. You know, you do a counter spy even. Yeah. You're generally, on these internal trade route civs, so like the Persians and Tokugawa, you want to get the great engineers that add an extra district slot to a city. If you can get those, it's very easy to get bigger internal trade routes and also yeah, that's true. to fit all the districts you need. Yep. But yeah, like if you have a Diplo Quarter and an encampment in your capital, like a spy will run the mission to gather sources and still have like a 30% success rate on removing your governor, unless they have a promotion specifically for it. So it's you're pretty safe. Yeah. Yeah, very consistent, very strong. Consistently right. gets like in, in a powerful position. Next mm -hmm. one's Dido. Um, Maybe go to Nader Shah so we can go with the Persians again. All right, we can go Nader Shah next. He's right below uh, John Curtin. Here he is. Okay. Um, I would say he's very strong. I prefer the other one. Um, really? Nader Shah might have probably has a slightly better war bonus, but I just mm -hmm. prefer this 
culture to the science. It helps you hit feudalism sooner. They both have a lot of early culture because the unique tile improvement. I think it, it depends on what type of... If you're going for early pushes, Nader Shaw is better. If you're going for, like, the simming, it just depends. I mean, the, the science is quite nice on Nader Shaw. They're, very, but, they're very similar. Yeah. They're, the they're plus three, I would so take over plus five, though, because the plus three is consistent. The plus five is on full health units. Well, the thing yeah. is, the five is on city centers, too, right? It's also on all defensible yeah. districts, regardless so, of if they're full health or not. Yeah, yeah. so, like... He's good for killing cities, and uh, like you said, the, the science is good for pushes, but then culture tends to be a little better for simming um, and early game. Uh, but I mean, if there's no science they're both, in yeah. <laughs> they're both very, very similar in their power, I would say. Yeah. You play them just about the same. Uh, and plus five against city centers sounds really great, but Persia has plus three against city centers as well, so... And he has the bonus of killing the units like on the way there. So I don't know. I, I honestly put them very, very close to yeah, the Yeah, I would put them like right next to each other. Um, I do just have a slight preference for Cyrus just because I think the culture is a little nicer than the science. I do too. You go free but inquiry I and get good science anyway. I think it's just bias, personally. Yeah, I don't I've been think it's holding much the of chat a too. Like uh, Nader Shaw's like early CS kill potential is really good too. Right. Because of the defensible Cyber districts and then the cavalry timing on turn 70 with Nader as well. One last Nader, thing. Yeah. We haven't brought this up. Uh, Ancient Era tower improvement makes it easy to hit golden. That's always good in FFA. Oh, a thousand percent. Yes. Like, it's FFA tier list, pure, like, one of the, they're always reliable plus if they have era score, you know, like that, that helps them get to the, uh, the golden age. Because if you have to spend money or production on a boat, levy, uh, Amani, whatever, like, you know, a title, like, it drastically reduces your sim okay. throughout the game, yeah. We'll see if you still think that having plus four error score automatically makes them a reliable plus once we get to the book, Mally, who <laughs> has the unique okay. suit. I mean, uh, that's minus that guy. Yeah, minus that I, guy. Minus him. I mean, uh... Uh, yikes. all right. <laughs> um, next one, Dido. Um... Great Civ in general, you can get really high science with Dido because you have those half cost harbors. You also can just get like discounted settlers, you get like a ton of them, go very wide. I always see massive free inquiries on Dido. One of the problems is that it's kind of hard to get your culture really good, you have no bonuses towards culture. Um, I mean, it's not impossible, yeah. yeah the free ink is there, but the, the culture is pretty rough, maybe a mausoleum, but like, um. Uh... You need to have some water park setups later on, but you, it's it's very hard to hit like uh, your tier three government. Yeah, um, I, I'm yeah. not a huge fan of Dido anymore. Ever since that one nerf to her trader capacity, yeah, that was that um, was a big hit. Kind of killed her. She's fine, yeah, but one, she doesn't stand out to me as anything special. There are some strats to keep in mind with her. One is that you generally want to move your capital at one point. And awesome. um, go for what is it? The uh, colonial it's, it's, taxes plus plus casa, yeah, yeah, plus yeah. casa. If you can get like a good setup for that, very good. That's mm -hmm. true. It is very good, but I think even with those kinds of things, my basic like TLDR on her is, why didn't you just pick one of the four Englands? Yeah, I would probably <laughs> drop her maybe low reliable. Yeah, She's I like, think that's a perfect yeah, spot for her. There, yeah. yeah. It's reliable mm -hmm. on getting, you know, the things that you need, but you can't get it what you want. Okay, we got Eleanor. Um, so these are going to rate very differently. I think Eleanor England is the better of the two, just because England's bonuses are better. It's kind of funny Maybe. because Eleanor's bonuses bias her towards culture victory. France's bonuses are also biased towards culture victory. So you'd think that because they synergize with each other, that would be the better one. But England's bonuses are just better than France's. Like, just yeah. flat out. And it's not even close. Um, uh, it, so Eleanor England has something that I think every single other Civ here so far has had some sort of like, hey, don't attack me. Even Dido has stronger city centers if you put a Byron in. Eleanor England is the first like Ray <laughs> Civ. Like, she is someone that if people have a choice of who you're going to attack early, 
they're probably going to pick you. Yeah, it's like, also like a frustrating ally to have because sometimes loyalty pressure can be a problem if you miss like Golden in the third era. Like say you want to go yep. Golden, Golden, Dark, Heroic. You might struggle if they're not giving you a culture alliance because a culture alliance at least removes their loyalty pressure. Yeah. Um, but that being said, if she gets through the early game, which I mean, a lot of free for alls are pretty, uh, pretty sim heavy, so you're gonna get through that early game safely. She does scale into a powerhouse of Civ, yeah, one of the most powerful very, late game very civs. scary Civ later yeah. on. I would like, say. Um, Reliable, at least, for uh, Eleanor England. I think it's very strong. I Maybe think it's low. very strong. Yeah, low, because of the strong. fact that people don't attack much in free-for-all, I think she is definitely up and very strong. Um, she's going to consistently get to those later game points. And, like, as the longer the game goes, the stronger she gets. Stronger she yeah. goes. <laughs> so she starts out, you know, fine. And like half ice harbor is already good for setting up Magus Eternals and stuff. And a hundred percent. If she starts getting yeah, and that in the extra prod towards those theater buildings. The second that the game hits industrialization, she skyrockets past Cyrus, I think. Yeah, powered and, buildings uh, giving plus four of all of their yields. Just a crazy consistent bonus for England. Yeah. Like huge. And production towards those uh industrial zone buildings and stuff. It's just so many things like and the the extra yields she's gonna get in those cities books like just you know a campus is gonna be uh four extra science if you have two books in that city like that's that's pretty nice but yeah um you know? quite quite a decent civ if you're left alone it's very good at just by virtue of being England, like all of the Englands are going to be like at least reliable it's very solid right. civ bonus. I think she's oh, the okay. hardest scaling of the Englands. If she's left completely alone, it'd be between her and Age of Steam. Both of them scale very well. She, she probably Steam's nerfs, I think, put her below. Yeah, if yeah, you could the bonuses don't start alone. until factories, yeah. right? When right. it when and it had when it happened during workshops with apprenticeship, that was that pretty was strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. the one thing too with her, real quick, is the fact that she has something that most every other naval doesn't have, which is culture to go with your free ink. All those naval civs have good free inks, but do they have culture to go with to still hit their timings on important stuff like fascism and democracy? Not really. Like, she kind of has everything once you hit free ink. Yeah. Oh, I, I think she can go in very strong. Uh, now, Eleanor France, I would not be so kind to. I agree. Yep. Uh, just, you don't have so many of those late game bonuses to go with. And, uh, you're also kind of more in the middle of the map by not being coastal, which as a prey style sieve as well, and no early game bonuses towards uh, like you you don't have their unique harbor like the other one does, or the re relatively easy ability to build a boat. You're way more likely to miss golden. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of uh, weaker players yeah. might underestimate just how big the half cost harbors that Eleanor England has is. Not having that is like pretty big bummer. Like you it have is. very little tempo on Eleanor France. It's just pure, pure late game save. Right. Yeah, you're pure late game with no way to get there. So And it's a late game sieve with no war bonuses. Like it's a late game sim sieve, which is Yeah. Not super it's, great. It's just not good. Honestly. I would probably put it in meh. Yeah, I would put it, this might be the first meta as well. I don't like Eleanor France at all. Uh, yeah, she has no ancient era bonuses. She's a no bonus civ until uh, feudalism or uh, until you get to your theater squares. Yeah, I would say yeah, she's yeah. the worst civ we've rated so far. That's definitely a fair assessment. Mm -hmm. Guard push, yeah. Like, uh, you're just yeah, no bonus civ. You're just a no bonus civ until feudalism. Exactly, okay, and, and her guard you know, push is worse than the other two that we've already gone over. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah. if you go oligarchy, you're Erel right there, because yep. yeah, that's a rough life playing Eleanor. All right, uh, next one, Elizabeth again, England. Mm -hmm. uh, England's I, always good. I say this one's reliable. I think it's above Dido. Yes, uh, and I it, it, it gets it, Dido, so. and it gets like the extra trade routes. 
yeah, you know, something. chip building, mercantilism, um, exploration. Those are quite nice. If, if you, you do could go to... ever get plunders on trade routes, so good. Way, you can get the admirals. I've, st- I've stacked admirals. The two admirals, there's 50% and 60% more from pillaging trade routes. Uh, and then there's also the card and her bonus. I once pillaged a trade route for. I think it was seventeen hundred gold. <laughs> That's not. I did not know it could get it that. Might have been a double with total, there was might that have been two on war? one or something. It was. It was. Yeah, maybe it was two on one tile or something. But it was. Yeah, with total war. Yeah. All I know wow. is that uh, that's pretty powerful. <laughs> she. That's that's huge. But I mean, yeah, a lot of people. By the time you're going to be pillaging yeah. them, they're going to be in free ink. or not free ink. The uh, reform the coinage. You can't even pillage them, anyways. So I don't think it's that huge. But I just want to make a note that uh, that bonus is kind of underrated. It's extremely powerful. Also, um, because I guess it stacks with the cards. Yeah, that seems good. One thing I want to point out: uh, if you spawn with Kumasi, the Civ is like an amazing Kumasi abuser. It is. Yep. Yeah, like the Civ bonus just synergizes insanely well with Kumasi, where you just want to send all your trade routes to that city state. Um, even mm-hmm. if you don't have kumasi you can still trade to an amani in a city state if you have like a decent city state nearby um yep. any like naval stupid. city state for those traders auckland nan Madal, or you yeah. know just a generically good city state ayutthaya johannesburg anything good but yep. amani yeah, those, are, trade those are all good yeah <laughs> yeah anything Broke. decent and uh yeah you you're doing well and then i mean at the very worst case you've got a few extra trade routes and the most important part you're England. Yeah. England. So you've got Ariscore, you've got, you know, Half Price District, you've got Incredible Lake and Scaling. You'll be fine. All right. So I guess that's all we have to say for Elizabeth. Now, Germany, this is a very interesting Civ. Um, I would personally rate Germany very highly. If you're left alone, it's like crazy good. Right. Uh, it, it doesn't get doesn't any bonuses, though. So, yeah, so it doesn't have gold and stuff. It can struggle. So yeah. I, I don't think it's quite as high as it would be if it had any unique thing in the early game. It would go much higher. I think, um, does it even have a river spawn bias? It does. Oh, it Which does? Which is good. All right, yeah, uh, okay, that's good. And, I mean, red card slot, killing city-states bonus for both plus seven is quite good. Um. The sim, obviously, one of the top sims in the game for, for I, the late game. I think it sort of has to go in at least very strong, because if you're left alone, it's just too good. You can miss your yep. first golden, yep. which is dangerous, but, like, let's say you're in a 1.5 huts lobby, it's, like, lakes or something as the map, so you know that you're going to have a ton of space. People aren't going to be, like, pressuring mm. you early. I think... So, then maybe make a tier below very strong and have situationally very strong or something because it just depends if you don't because that's situationally if it's in a 1.5 goody hut lobby if it's not then right you, then if you, you miss your to, first gold yeah. on germany that's then the hard. Fuel is slow then the whole game is catch up and uh it's not that uncommon it's not just feudalism. He needs to hit guilds on good timing, too. That's when he gets his well, extra district right? slot. Yeah, but that's, that's contingent on getting culture and pinbrush, right? Yeah, yeah. He's just saying the things you can miss from missing first gold. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's just there's a lot that hinges on something that you can't control, right? And so that's the randomness factor. Unfortunately, puts him down lower. In a long enough game, you'll always come back on free sim, but the problem is if you miss golden on a sieve that's going to scale into becoming more powerful later, Trust me, you're a huge target. I have no uh, idea why the word situationally is not fitting on one line here. <laughs> it fit on I one line know. earlier. Like trolling me. It's but, just situational. Just do situational. Yeah, very, just situational, very, very strong. Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like you become a huge target as Germany since you have no real bonuses yet, right when you miss your first golden. I feel like you, there's a high chance you're getting attacked if you miss. Yeah. Um, also, the extra military policy card slot is like 
somewhat decent. You generally are running uh, the one that doubles industrial zone adjacency, and then the one that gives amenities for garrison units. Those are usually the two cards you run with your extra slot. Right. Those are nice. And uh, even in early game, too. Scouts with plus 10 and double XP. Quite nice. You don't tend to lose your scouts to random barbs. And it's pretty easy to like slap into a barb or even a warrior, like a barb mm -hmm. scout or even like a warrior to kind of get some level ups. It's that very small, very nice. but it is nice. But yeah, um, pretty pretty decent civ if he gets what he needs. It's really just if he yeah. can hit his first golden. Like if he had it's... free era score in the ancient era, like I would actually bump him up for sure. Right, yeah. I mean, if you get to that one thing, if the second he hits Golden, he jumps to a very strong save, I would say. Yeah. Uh, Alright, Gandhi. Um, it's a good sieve. Uh, it's, like, has a lot of generically good bonuses, an extra uh, belief on its religion. It doesn't have to full commit to holy sites. Uh, like some of the other religious civs do, it can just go uh, Zen meditation and like two holy sites, and that's it. Like that's a way yeah. to play it. Um, I'd say it's usually the best way to play it in this meta where you want to get a lot of commercial hubs for a big free inquiry. Oftentimes, yeah, but like you said, with Chandra, ship, you yeah. you do have the option to just go. Oh wait, I met three white CS. I'm gonna go faith. You know. Yeah. Uh, so that's nice too. I mean, something I think that's crazy about him is he's one of the few civs that actually has a bonus that starts like turn one. The settlers like he, and the builders. Yeah. Builder yeah. The the movement is really really powerful. Um. Also, yeah, I guess like you see there the five faith. Secondly, you found your religion. That's like a free relic. You're never so missing your golden age. More tempo. Video. Right, you're not missing. You have, you always have the step and the bar if you really wanted to get both. Um, but yeah, you just have you have tempo. You have the double war weariness. Really, nobody wants to fight you. That's a pain in the ass to deal with. Um, Varu's incredible. Yeah, I mean, just you, the sieve is all around really good. And I mean, it doesn't have the same level as Chandra now that the Chandra's gotten so many buffs, but it's defensively going to be a little bit of a better sim a little bit more tempo and i mean you do get a free belief so you can take crusade and go for varus if you want to be a warmonger it's still quite powerful yeah I think he's above cyrus here uh i'm not yeah. sure i'd put it above cyrus myself I would personally put it below the Persians, but if both of you want it above it, I can just put it there. It's I mean, I mean, I'm right a Cyrus there. lover. Like, I think, I mean, if you want to put it I after, Cyrus. I mean, I I love it's Cyrus. At least so if right you want to, behind, maybe, yeah, but... yeah, yeah, you can do it right there. That's good. Yeah, I'll just yeah. drop them here. Right between them. Cyrus is a homie. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, with him too, is that amenities. Like, let's say he goes down, like, two free amenities is huge for every single city. And uh, you can get even more if people spread beliefs. Um, like we were talking about with beliefs on the other guy. It's not that hard to get somebody to build your religion if they're a good ally. If you do go like full holy sites and you get free work ethic for six extra production <laughs> in every city and an extra amenity, now your sieve just becomes crazy good. Like, uh, yeah, th there's a lot of really good stuff there. Just powerful tempo and i think one of the most important things is that happens with a lot of civs there's a, some really powerful bonuses out there that you kind of have to go out of your way in order to get them gandhi is one of those civs that his bonuses don't make you go out of the way for anything he's fully flexible while still having powerful bonuses yeah um also alko is in my chat he wanted to point this out uh Gandhi is, like, the best Civ for cheesing a Religious Victory. Like, Religious Victory is a bit of a meme, but if any Civ was the best at it, it's probably Gandhi. The extra two spreads and the 100% Religious pressure from trade routes. You're probably never winning it in a lobby with more than one other Religious Civ. But, you know, if you see it, right. nobody else picked it, you can try to cheese that. With no more Exodus, it's a lot worse, but I do yeah. agree it's still probably the best for that. 
But yeah, not a major factor. I don't think that really plays a big role in our decision here because religious victory is a meme. Like, people can just declare war and yeah. condemn your unit. Yeah, but then, like, Stepwell, too, I don't know if we covered enough with Chandra. Stepwell is really good because it gives the housing up to another one later, I think, up to two housing. And uh, most importantly, it's just, like, the, the food that you can build up with the, the farms and everything basically means that you can kind of grow your cities as big as you want them. Yeah. Um, somebody in my chat is pointing this out. Gandhi, it's like questionable whether Gandhi is like a good Civ for beginners because you have to be able to play flexibly on him. He can play in so many different ways where it's like a lot of people will just hard commit to like putting down too many holy sites in games where they shouldn't or uh, like other things. There's There are ways to mess the Civ up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, for sure. But uh I mean Yeah, I I new it... friendly maybe not entirely, but he's not the most hard civ either. Also I mean if if anything he like boosts up, he like helps you get to where you want to be faster. Yeah, also yeah. like I mean, yeah, with the extra movements like right what Nate was saying, like right in the beginning. I mean, that's pretty new friendly right there. Yeah, one last thing. This is an FFA tier list, so it doesn't play a big role. The war wariness is a big deal in Teamers. Yes. Where you're in, like, war all the time. Because of the way uh, war wariness decay works, they're often getting more than double war wariness because uh, it decays by a flat amount each turn. So say they accumulate, like, they would normally accumulate two war wariness. Against Gandhi, they accumulate uh, four. And then next turn, right. it decays by one. They'll have three war wariness on the next turn, whereas normally they would only have one. In that case, Gandhi exactly. has actually tripled the war wariness. Those are yeah, just made up numbers. It but... stacks up really, really fast. Yeah, Gandhi. Yeah, war the numbers are made up, but that's that's correct in the mm -hmm. like the baseline analysis. Another thing too is the the settler movement. Loki really good for any time that there's a forest fire or a natural wonder or anything like that, because sometimes you can get two turn settles on Gandhi, which is very nice for Dumbo, and sometimes you can just take a five-turn settle that would normally be a nine-turn settle somewhere else, and you're settling on Mount Rorema, or something that would normally be too far. And I've done that a few times, too, which is very nice. Yeah. Right. Alright, I guess we can move on to Genghis Khan now. Okay. okay. Uh, Genghis... I think he's like, meh, or situationally. Um... Yeah. He's a monster in the late game if you get the great merchant Mary Catherine Goddard. Which but is... that's a bad situationally good. Yeah, that's a modern era great merchant. That if comes we're talking very about late. Basil having no bonus for simming, I mean, he's his is barely anything. <laughs> this guy's got nothing yeah, in the does. early game. Um, his best simming bonus is the fact that he has a horse bias. <laughs> like... The Ordu is something that Chandra gets for free on all units. Like, he has pretty bad bonuses in general. And everybody knows that you're one-dimensional too, so you're never really going to catch anybody by surprise unless they just kind of don't want to look. Yeah. yeah. Not a fan. Um, Teamers, think... whole different story, but yeah. Yeah, the main strategy with him, you generally want to, like... There's a strategy around getting really fast level 2 spy. I think you generally rush and chop out like a uh, intelligence agency and then get a terracotta army for a promo and then you try to level it to level 2 as quickly as possible. That's like a yeah. gamer strat the like Victor's promo too, but you're spending a lot of resources especially if you it's go Victor in. promo. It's all in. This is a teamer strategy for killing somebody. It's not a strategy for winning FFA. If you do that in FFA, sure, you'll kill a guy. You're not getting first if you spend all of your resources just to get extra diplovis on somebody. Exactly. Right. I think that's where it falls pretty flat, is that there's a lot of other civs that can kill a guy with a lot less investment, just maybe waiting a little bit longer or something. But yeah, gr great teamer civ, not super great in FFA. Uh, the dip... Somebody in my chat is pointing out the trading post. That act doesn't actually work yeah, in BBG do for Diplovis. In BBG, when you declare war on somebody, you lose the Diplovis ability granted by uh, trading posts. He was too strong yeah, with that. If he still had that, he would be, like, way too good. 
He might yeah, go back all in the day when you see just... Mongol and you instantly declare, so he can't trade him post yeah. you. Three plus yeah. six, that would be disgusting. Yeah. But no, he did, he can't do that. But what about the Huns interaction? Ooh. Yeah. Trade around the map with your trading posts. Hunza. Oh yeah. All Get right. so much value. Okay. <laughs> um, but I wonder what the highest gold trade route is ever nice. recorded. So next one is Gilgamesh. Um this one it runs the exact same build order as the Egypts. Uh, he wants the Floodplains Pantheon. He wants Etimanaki. He was briefly one of the best, like, most highly contested civs in the game. And yeah. the way they nerfed it was indirectly via the Etimanaki nerf. Um, yeah. I, I still think it's very still good. still think it's very strong. Yeah. I would probably put it in very strong, but maybe somewhere around above Vietnam? Or, I don't know. Do you think it's better than Cyrus? Probably not. But yeah, like, Cyrus holds the position. Yeah, I mean, he, he's very, very good, even without Edamanaki and stuff. Like, Edamanaki's huge. But, like, they've given him so many bonuses over time. <laughs> if you just like, look at the list of things, like, he gets extra combat strength, extra alliance points, shared pillages, extra XP, uh, he gets, like, tribal village rewards on taking a barb camp. Some of that stuff is, like, kind of mediocre, but, like, if you play around it right, can actually be very good. And then the other stuff, like, extra scouting in the early game with the war cards. Typically, you can get a city-state kill if you want it. Ziggurats are good. Uh, uh, always hits Golden Age. Huge. Yeah, always hits Golden Age. Typically, it's good tempo. And, I mean, yeah, escorting some yeah. Settler. Yeah. yeah, it's getting Settler. Even more tempo. Um farms having more prod and food just more flat tempo in the early game yeah just um, uh very very strong doesn't necessarily scale into the most crazy civ but does end up getting the alliances points a little faster can get some extra combat strength yeah um i guess that's it for gilgamesh yeah. Uh, now we're getting to a sieve which I think is not particularly great in FFA, which is Indonesia. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, go ahead. I'm listening. Yeah. It's. I would agree. It's not terrible. Yeah. But there is England. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so uh, it also, you know, its best build order, its the most powerful build order, is. Campuses with pen brush rushing jongs, <laughs> but that's a teamers thing. What if you don't uh, have a target? It doesn't for necessarily jobs. scale scale very well, and uh, yeah, I mean, even if you do like the most heavy heavily scaling build, you're always going to get outscaled. The thing about yeah. Indonesia is jongs are so good. Jongs are such a great unit that nothing else about the sieve is allowed to be good. Like everything else about the sieve is a little underwhelming. So if you can't, if you don't have a Jong target, what are you doing? It's yeah, yeah. Like you can escort your settlers with the Jongs, <laughs> and uh, but you get free God of the Sea, so you always right. I, I think it, I think down. it's an, I think it's yeah, it's consistent on that. It's it's reliable. It's definitely reliable. You have yes. no uh. Well, I guess you are a coastal civ, so you can get a boat, but you don't have free air score from anything in particular. Right, but you do also have very high consistency on campuses. Oh, yeah, sites. you can get plus so three campuses. If you yeah, want to go find of those, you've got air score available. Fair enough. But, so, I mean, you you basically should never miss, but, uh, yeah. Just nothing that lets you scale like crazy. So, I... unless you're going to kill somebody. And even then, the jungles are hard to get Niter for and stuff. Yeah, and teamers, it's different because you don't have to tech. Military engineering, right? I mean, I would put it below everything in reliable. I might put it in med, to be honest. Like, I wouldn't. Yes. It's not even comparable to like Dido, for instance. I mind. think it's situationally. We can, yeah, I think it's situationally good. Like, just, below. you can kill someone with Jongs, it's good. Otherwise, right. well, no. I mean, like, it's just like in seven C's. Well. Yeah. 
Yeah, like the the thing is though, the campus adjacency and stuff is actually quite good. Does it? I think it works for industrial too, right? Can you read it again? Yeah, she and, read that and then your uh, so entertainment's it also does. get an extra amenity. I think it works for everything, right? It's just industrial. Yeah, yeah, it does. So I mean, there are some games where the extra district adjacency is quite nice. Like, you can get real good campus like high rolls on her, like plus sevens and stuff with a couple reefs here and there, and like, uh, you can kind of snowball it. It's just not incredible. And I guess, yeah, uh, like somebody was saying, t- Tilted Axis. Yeah. The Fair unique enough. improvement actually is kind of decent in that <laughs> it gives you one pod initially, one pod later. Um, on any map where you're forced to go tons of water, like if you're not going to have a lot of improvable antiles, <laughs> you know, you do have something over basically every other city that you can actually work, yeah. work the water pretty effectively. I mean, mm-hmm. for sure, so, on maps, it's like, a lot of water. It's got its there. place. I kind of think of it as sort of like a worse Australia, though, because all the bonuses you said about the uh, adjacencies, Australia has them, but then the rest of the Civ is better. In yes. My mind. Yes, but I mean, uh, what is her thing? Is it... If it might have minor? Yeah, I mean, it's... That's pretty true. Yeah. yeah I think that's... That's one adjacency, or is it half an adjacency? Half. For, for half? What? Yeah, it's not very good. Yeah. Not super great. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Big Gorgo. Gorgo. I really think Gorgo is amazing in this meta. Uh, Gorgo's I, quite good. I yeah. might put it in broken, to be honest. It's so good at getting massive amounts of culture, and then you use free inquiry to supplement your science. So the goal is to get to fascism before anyone else, and your push is unstoppable. You have plus four from your civ bonus, plus five from fascism. Nobody's going to beat you to it generally because you get right. so much free culture from. If you build the wonder, you have another plus one. So yeah, plus so you have 10. plus ten. And then I think partly super important part of it is the fact that you can also build war department at that point, uh, which is another huge spike yeah. in power. I think Gorgo is like. I would put it in broken. What do you think? Well, I don't know. So one of the things with Gorgo's kill potential is the timing is, of course, best on one guy. The, sne- the next guy, unless you roll him really quick, is going to be a little bit worse timing. And then after that, if you do kill that another guy, the next guy for sure has passion by that point. So it's a it's not quite the full like solo second sieve that like kills the whole map with its combat bonus, like, stacking up more and more like an Aztec. Um, very strong, I agree. Um, but I... if you're doing that, you're not winning. So are you solo second, seconding, right? And are you guaranteed to solo second if somebody else is doing it? Not necessarily. I think it's very strong, but uh, um, I don't necessarily rate it as broken like Chandra. I... I just think that, like, it's so easy to get really, really high culture. Like, you can get turn 70 fascism on... Not, like, turn 70, but, like, turn 75 fascism on the greases somewhat reliably. I mean, if you're going uh, free ink as well, I feel like that's yeah, a little you bit get tougher. Yeah, free ink. But, yeah, you get free ink, you get massive amounts of uh, free science. If you're in, like, a lobby where, like, the host rule is, like, oh, zero blue city-states... Orgo is, like, disgusting, right? Because you're going to be, like, massive on the culture game. You're also denying other people books. This is another thing about Gorgo that people might not think about. If you're playing Gorgo, you snatch so many of the writers that other people struggle with their culture. It can be really hard for other people to match your pace when you are just stealing every book in the world by just recruiting all of the writers. That's true. Yeah, she's definitely very good. I think and in order to get Gorgo going, it's like... Go ahead, sorry, Nate. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, yeah, even yeah, if they yeah. hit fascism too, you always have that plus four minimum up to plus five with Alhambra baseline bonus that you can keep. Um, I, think, I think in order for it to be broken, it needs to have some type of like uh, bonuses like, you know, early on. Because right now, like, the bonuses only has early on. is like it does get a free slot after what, Code of Laws, right? Or is it early uh, empire? No, is it early no, empire now? Empire. Empire. Yeah, I think it's I think it's unsituationally. It just depends because like 
how are you going to get that error score? I want to point out that Gorgo can get earlier Empire earlier than anyone else. You kill a Barbarian Spearman yeah. that gives you 12 culture instantly. I've had early Empire on Gorgo, like, turn on turn 12. Yeah. It I would happen. say that's contingent on, on that. But, like, yeah, for, for, for being at, like, for, like, solid bonuses, like, that are going to happen no matter what, I think um, it puts it at situationally. I would put it between very strong to situationally. Because, uh, I mean, if you think about it, if we compare um, Gorgo to Cyrus, Cyrus is already getting that culture. Cyrus is already getting those trade routes. Is already right. has the unique improvements, already has the simming bonuses, has, like, the un uh, if you go Ancestral Hall on Cyrus, Cyrus has, like, the unique improvement that gives not only culture, but also gives a housing, right? You hit Medieval Fairs, you get another two culture to your trade routes, right? You don't even have to go to the books. You have gold. Merchants are the most powerful, you know, great people in the game, right? And you're funding your military. You have all this extra money, like, and you have passive culture just from your routes. So you're getting the most powerful, great people on top of getting culture with your routes, right? And then when you hit urbanization, which you have a good timing on, now all of your trade routes are plus five culture. Now when you hit economics, now, all, now they're plus six gold. What if you have Pingala internals from all your extra trade routes? Now you have extra, you know, like there's so many different things that are more powerful with Cyrus than with the Gorgo, in my opinion. Um, one of the things about Gorgo, though, is I feel like even on Cyrus, you're not going to hit fascism as fast as Gorgo does. And Gorgo just has this timing window where they can always just kill someone for free. And if you pillage like really thoroughly, like, if you use your fascism push to just pillage every tile in their land, you can set, like, an insane pace. Yeah, I'd, I'd say, like, when that, when that fascism time happens, but it's like, um, while, while Gorgo has to get the culture by building those theater squares, amphitheaters for the books, like, Cyrus doesn't have to build any of that. The he's, just, he's getting the money. And then he's also, you know, he goes campus or he goes commercial campus, and then he has incredible science, and then he has a more insane science with free ink, and then he just has insane high tech with good mobilization push. It just, I don't know. I just see the simming bonuses better with Cyrus. Um, yeah, I mean, Gorgo's war bonus is better, but uh, Cyrus, like, the thing is, she doesn't necessarily have crazy good production bonus or anything, and that's where she struggles. She has stats, but not tons of prod, so... Because you don't have the Magnus can Internals, be tricky. right? You have well, to you choose go the Magnus Acropolis. Internals. Well, yeah, you have to go but Magnus it's Internals, not and then you get the Acropolis. Setup. Yeah, yeah, you like, could, it's very slow. You don't need to go the Acropolises right away. Like, generally, it depends on my game. I had a two Greases game recently, one where I had an amazing Temple of Artemis spawn, so I went Temple of Artemis, got Acropolises before turn 30, Right, and played it that way. Or you can just play it with normal Magnus commercial hubs, start putting down some Acropolises once your cities reach four pop, and still have time to like snag all of the writers. Mm -hmm. Um either way, you're playing the Civ around free inquiry. Uh I honestly the way you describe Cyrus makes me want to move him up more than it makes me want to move Gorgo down. <laughs> I mean, put the homie up. Go. Yep, yep. <laughs> sure. Oh, that's fine. Uh, yeah, oh, that's fine. perfect. There we go. Okay, I accept. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, next Babylon. one. Babylon. I know this is Toilet's favorite Civ. Mm -hmm. uh, Flying is, you know, it's broken. I mean, it's it's not broken. It's like, it's really good. It is but the free, very good. The free Eurekas are absolutely insane. I mean, the Palgum, I think they nerfed it a little bit ago, but um, it's still good on all improved tiles now. It's yeah. just super strong. You grow, you get your districts down. You're always going to build libraries in your cities. You have 10 cities, that's 10 free Eurekas. You can, mess, you can play around it, saying like, oh, I got all these Eurekas that I want, so now I'm going to build the library finally and get that free Eureka, which is absolutely insane. Yeah, you don't... you don't have to build like two trebuchets on one of the times or whatever, you know. Right. You, when, yeah, boom, think about how tech. much. I mean, I guess you do have to delay the libraries for it, but think about how much those uh, scientists are worth when you hit those later games, like the 
three industrial boost. It's worth 150 oh, points. Oh, it's, it's insane. It's so much science. Awesome. Like the three, we, I mean, if you calculate that, that's like, it's probably around a thousand science. Um, I want to point out that the getting a free building in each specialty district when you first make it is a massive amount of tempo. First commercial hub, you instantly have a market, you instantly have an mm -hmm. extra trade-out capacity, okay? First campus is immediate library. Um, another one that isn't thought about much, I had somebody explain this to me. Um, you can fit in a preserve on this sieve. Yeah, I was just going to say it. And yeah, abuse I don't wonder. the fact that um, groves are yeah. the most expensive uh, tier one building in the game, They're... aside from aren't the Ferris they... wheels. Aren't they tied with... Am I crazy? I thought they were tied with um, the theater squares. Uh, I can look this up. I think they're all 300 gold to buy. But, um... And, and 75 prod that is but in any case but yeah um uh they're they're very expensive and they're also something that if you're gonna go for them you want it to be done as quick as possible usually so yeah it's uh yeah. it's a big deal if you have the right spawn for it you can go one holy site for like zen or something and you can get the grove and like yeah it's worth a lot but yeah um it does take somewhat of a skilled hand to be able to play it like you want to play around district discounting because you want like one of every district just to get all of the free buildings generally yeah um knowing like how to discount districts good is like pretty important it's, if you just go and unlock every district as quickly as possible you're not going to be able to uh get discounts super easily so you do have to understand that much yeah but it, but the raw power of the sieve is yeah. quite high. Also, um, always hits its golden age free ancient era unit. Um, yeah. Plus the palgum is very vulnerable within the first era. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where would we put it on the tier list though? Just very strong, or do you want to go even uh, higher? I think it's up. It's certainly consistent plus. So yeah, probably, probably in a very strong or situationally broken even because i've seen it in space races do very very well uh yeah i, I mean think... i think that's just because toilet's piloting it and he's a good player no no this, it was rage playing it rage. Uh, on that one but he was doing um like late settled cities and stuff and just chopping out get, libraries whatever. yes to get like uh, future era it's like tech boost and stuff which is obviously worth tons of science oh so so, so when macedon is getting a ton of free tech boosts in the late game oh situationally good but when we have uh <laughs> when we have this guy doing it oh right. my yeah, god I mean, so he's broken. been getting he's been getting free shit since turn you know his first <laughs> district that's yeah. part of why is that he's been getting all the bonuses and he has the late game super good thing that's also consistent you don't have to kill a city for it but you know, yeah, yeah, I guess they're basically the same. Yeah, you can just rush like the the merchant right away. You get the free market, boom, just start the project. Yeah, and in a theater too is like that's a lot of points. You're gonna get a writer, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. And Industrial, the free consulate like, too. The consulate, consulate. So, so good. Yeah, and the, yeah, first yeah. industrial too is like it's a hefty eighty prod. You'd normally invest into that. A building, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's right. a lot. A lot Workshops are very easy. expensive early. Yep. Yep. Uh Palgums, I think also the sieve is better with like plain spawns because of Palgums. The plus one food is more impactful than on grassland spawns. Yeah. At least yeah. from what I've heard. Yeah. Oh, I don't even know if we went over it yet, but it can also get a quick callo because of the free it, yeah, building. Arena, yeah. 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 Also, Which even a, if you That's three hundred gold. That's a lot of gold. It's a lot and, of and, value. and prod. Like what it like that's insane. Yeah. Yeah, quick call. You're only gonna build one of those, maybe two later, but like you're only gonna build one entertainment for right now. It's so good. Also, one thing, um, missing Kahlo isn't as punishing as it used to be since they gave an extra amenity on entertainment complexes. Also on this sieve, you're generally want want to put down a um you want to put down at least one theater square somewhat early to get the free amphitheater. So, like, going for Kahlo sets up perfectly to go for the next uh, amphitheater, the free one. That's true. Yeah. I think it's yeah, about Gorgo. There's, uh, there's a lot of really good stuff there. And I can put it there. 
It might be above Cyrus, dude. I I don't know. Like that's it. It's it's annoying. It's pretty damn good. Yeah. 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 Maybe, okay. Maybe it's, Under yeah. Norway. Maybe above that. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh. Okay. On the Norway, yeah. We got Harold. Uh, two different personas. We got the Griefer, and we got the uh, other Griefer. Right. Yeah. Well, the other Griefer one doesn't get the long ship, right? But, uh... Yeah. The regular Norway is pretty good. I mean, if you have a city-state kill, easy city-state kills on the coast. Pillaging yeah. is really nice. Yeah, Reserve you can city-states uh, as well. For extra stats, you can get free huts with your scouting. Naval those, unit production. Naval raiding uh, ability. Yeah, you can naval raid uh, tribal villages. Yep. You, you can also naval raid barbs. God of the Sea plus. Uh, I mean, well, the Stav the Stav Church is probably one of the best unique buildings in the game. It's like it's yeah, it's yeah. so good. So uh, yeah. yeah, I mean the the holy site thing, the fact that you don't have to go for a pantheon to get like sacred path level adjacencies, and then you also have a crazy good free ink, really really good. You can mm -hmm. go like choral music with it to help complement. I mean, it's yeah, a, it's a pretty damn good sieve. You um, you always want choral music on this sieve to bolster your culture because you're building stave churches in a lot of cities anyway, right? If you're going to be building yeah. a lot of temples, you want choral music, especially because it complements free inquiry so well to give you massive science and culture. Yeah, and you're already getting a prod out of the state churches anyways, so you kind of get a little bit of yeah. both this way. Yeah, super good. I would say it's a very strong sieve, and then, uh, like we mentioned before, with like Nora being a super good solo second sieve, it's kind of just like, it's got tons of free prod, tons of free faith, tons of free, like, power early that i feel like it and then the, the free ink is so good you can tend to get a huge tech lead i mean I, i'm just thinking of dragos really but it makes me think when i see norway i think it's gonna come, come with bombers on people later and <laughs> those are pretty unstoppable yeah. for a lot of sims if you beat people to planes there's not much they can do it's so good at getting to that position with the free ink that it does tend to do very well in FFAs. I was on the receiving end of a uh, Herald War in my last game. He had a Venetian Arsenal and then the plus 25% production towards naval melee units. I'm pretty sure he was probably just like one turning uh, destroyer fleets and armadas in his cities. That's scary. It was very I mean, scary. I spent like... I mean, I was able to hold him off for a long time. He was eventually killing me. He declared on, like, turn 70, turn 100, he's finally starting to mow down all my cities uh, with destroyers and missile cruisers. Um, oh, and I was playing perfect. Hojo. I had plus five. It's the only reason I lived so long. Also, it was Alcine, so I could first move him like crazy. <laughs> oh, dude, that mofo has 20... It's uh, for sure 20 second last moves. Yeah. It yeah. is so wild. I mean, first moves are way better in naval war, though. Like, naval war favors first oh, yeah. movers even more than land war. So, I. Yeah, had, there's no fortification. Or without anything. that, yeah. I think I would have been killed, like, probably 10 turns sooner if I didn't have first moves. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. You want to talk about the other Herald now, Varangian? A lot of the same yeah. things apply. Big free ink. Uh, you know, you still go coral huge music. Church. City, huge city state control. And like you can also like uh, you levy a city state for extremely cheap. It's like a the opposite of a hungry effect, where you levy it for extremely cheap, and then if you want to, you can upgrade. But like you go and you can try to use those units and maybe some of your units and kill another city state, and you get uh, extra yields from killing uh, units with levy units. Yeah, yeah. It's it really also nice. has that twenty five percent protection towards holy site buildings, which is yeah. Just huge because you already have 50 percent towards holy site districts and then you have the buildings bonus and then yeah i mean i think this one's better yeah oh, it's way better it's way better all. yeah also mm -hmm. um it's easy to not realize just how much one influence point per stave church is that is a lot of influence points oh, over ton. the course of the game you get mm -hmm, so yeah. many free envoys on the sieve i mean the card is plus two and i mean <laughs> you could easily get 10 cities on this sieve and yeah five of those cards were slotted. 
Yeah, you if stay you in minor it. game with fifty percent, even more. Like it's nuts. But yeah, um, I would put this above the other one for sure. The question is 1000%. how far above. Yeah, I mean it's a uh, it's getting tempo and it's getting steady state control. I mean, I would the... put it maybe off a of very oh. strong, not any higher though. Um, it's up there. Yeah, it's, it's... yeah, I would put it top of very strong, probably. Yeah, potentially, mm -hmm. honestly. I would put it lower in situational broken because it can be broken when you have the right city states. I controlling a lot of city states when they're all powerful is really, really powerful. Like it breaks the game if you can have Auckland, Nemedal, and Johannesburg or something. Yeah, I can put it here just on the yeah. basis of like the potential for city state high rolls. If you don't high roll city states, just drop it down. It's like the same as the other, but yeah. the potential is there to get massive city state high rolls. Where you just have like every city state you could possibly want. One of the nice things about playing these civs in FFA, people don't even contest your city states if they see you're playing a civ with like free envoys. Right. Um, like Hungary, Georgia, Pericles, and this guy, people don't even bother contesting you. So your envoys go even further than they normally would. That's, That's very true. true. So yeah, I'll put it situationally broken. Um, okay, Hojo. next one. Hojo. This is the Civ I played in my last game. I was warring I, with him. I think he's a very strong... Yeah, he's definitely quite a very strong Civ. He's, like, the definition of consistency. Yep. Um, that combat bonus is, like, crazy good in Naval War. Plus five is a lot. Plus 100% production in those three districts is quite good. Uh, mm -hmm. I generally don't play him with Holy Sites, but you can just because of the discount. Um, even if you don't play him with Holy Sites, extra production towards encampments and theater squares, that's a lot. That's huge. And then lastly, really, really big, the additional standard adjacency bonus for yeah, all districts. It's, it's huge. Electronic Factory is actually quite good as well. Because one thing, it actually has an extra prod on it, as well as the culture that can spread um, for a factory. It's very good. And yeah, samurai also, like, not that often in FFA that you want to use them. But as far as medieval units go, they're one of the best. They're, they're incredibly strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, if you're going a normal, like, pen brush build, you're going to be on feudalism before you would normally have men at arms so th these come earlier yep. than units of the strength normally would yeah Very so strong unit. if you it's do the have second a portion, strongest yeah. unit the men at arms unit i think the kevzar beats it that's it yeah kevzar maybe but they, these ones can come faster than kevzars as well yeah mm -hmm. and i mean if you think about it like they have plus three or something for being a unique unit and then the like damaged units can get down to minus nine from the you know, like yeah, yeah, they fight a full that's strength, up yeah. to plus nine bonus on the samurais. So what it really ultimately means is, as you're shooting them down, they always can promote. <laughs> okay. And then once they have the promote, they have plus ten. Like they're just disgusting. Maybe just in very strong. I mean, super generic bonuses. I think it fits together. Super with generic. Some of these. I kind of put them. I rate them a little higher than Gilga for sure myself because I think you also scale better mm -hmm. than Gilga, as well as having a pretty consistent early. Yeah, this... Free ink as well. You've got a plus one basically over everyone else on every harbor. Pretty good. Also, another thing about Japan that's a bit misleading, um, you the Civ is like great without having to go naval. Like you could totally play this fully inland and it's like perfectly fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need the naval at all. Magi restoration is an insane ability. Yeah, the only bonuses it has towards naval play is the plus five combat strength and coast. It's literally it. Yeah. yeah, which also can mean you can go for kills later, which is kind of a sim bonus in some ways. But yeah, <laughs> war bonuses are sim bonuses. Okay. Yeah, for sure they definitely are. Yeah. All right. And if you think about it, sim bonuses are war bonuses because they give you better timings. This is true. <laughs> Very true. I know. Um, Poland, Edwiga. Uh, I say very strong. 
I think the... it's very one-dimensional, but it's very good at the one thing it does, which is pushing somebody. Hmm. The, uh... I mean, it's I mean the the unique uh, market is actually quite powerful uh, right. for but internals this... and externals. Like it's pretty insane, and then on top of that, it has one of the best, if not the best, money mentality in the whole game. Right, for very low investment, typically, mm -hmm. by comparison. And then, uh, I mean, you're saying it's one-dimensional, but it actually has quite a strong, um, like, cultural, culture victory or fascism setup with, like, Wonder Spam, because you can beat everyone with the production value that you have with this crazy monumentality to chopping out a lot of really important early wonders and then setting up for nice theaters. So you can use that for your you push or you can also use it for like fascism timing or for culture victory setup. Um, mm -hmm. I think the Civ is probably better in teamers than it is in FFA. Part of that is that you can go even greedier with just getting your hazards sooner and rely on your teammates to trade you all of the gold and uh, strategics you need to upgrade. Plus the fact that your teammates can just trade you the extra relics they get. Like, it's one of those right. things where I feel relics like... Relics aren't really found in HUD so much anymore nowadays, but... Yeah, I mean, you'll probably get, like, maybe one relic from a hut on your whole team if you're playing teamers, and then they can trade it uh, to you. Like, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure I would put it any higher than very strong. I might even put it situationally very strong. I don't think it's that great unless you get a hazard push on somebody. It's very, very good at that. I think, I think, you, it, it, I think you, you haven't played it enough. The, the yeah. unique markets okay. are very I, I, strong. I'll admit, I have not played it. Yeah, it's extremely strong. I mean, there's like 350 to 450 monumentalities. Like, it's yeah. it's nuts. And it's consistent with getting like that 30 to 40 faith a turn with right. minimal You'll investment. Have you have like two holy sites, and that's yeah. it. And then you also have... Uh, like as what when you're trading internally it's four gold and when you're trading externally it's four or two prod yeah so you have like a built-in singapore up. action going on right there and then you have like it's nuts like you have like a like a, like a hunza internally right and then you have a singapore externally like it's yeah. it's nuts and then the policy card slot change yeah it's really kind of nice yeah where you can actually the flexibility and, yeah the flex perfect word yep yeah, I mean, it's just a, it's a very solid sieve. I don't think it's broken by any means, but it's super consistent. So, mm -hmm. like, if you want to go for something like Kahlo, it's one of the really good sieves for contesting that. Because it's, like, some sieve might get there a little faster, but you can have just the raw amount of builders that you need to chop it out on this sieve. Yeah, I've yeah. seen per, yeah. this sieve's monumentality. So you can go that one, um, what is it, the bonus faith on every charming or better tile. Earth Goddess. Right. The Earth yeah. Goddess, you get yeah. like six hundred faith banked up by turn thirty one for a monumentality. You buy a billion builders and then you just chop whatever wonder you want, right? Yep. Um You can also have a little bit less faith and take But yeah. Uh I can see what you're saying. Very strong Civ. So... Yeah. Now, here's Khmer. Um, I do think the nerf actually hit it quite a bit. We don't see a lot of Khmer's that we used to back in the day. That is for sure. Yeah, they. it's minus one food now. Also, this is a sieve. Remember how earlier we were talking about how um, with, like, India, you can play flexibly. You can go, like, some holy sites if you uh, don't meet any white CS and, you know, go commercial hubs for free ink. On Khmer, you kind of have to go holy sites like everywhere if you want your civ bonuses to kick in. So like if you get into a lobby with zero white CS, it doesn't feel so great. Especially in the free inquiry meta, it's hard to get a it's hard to get like a ton of commercial hub set up. I don't know. It's like still a decent solo second civ. I just don't think it's super great at getting first. It falls kind of far behind in science. Yeah, it's yeah, and then you want to build your temples too, the, like the prasat, I think it's called, where you get the culture. Yeah. Per you know population, and you want to go big. It's it takes a little bit of time, but I think it's I still think it's very strong. But I uh, I don't know, the the nerf did hit it pretty hard. I think it's maybe it's I think it's for sure above Germany though. 
I might just put it in situational very strong, though. Because it's kind of like, if you get zero white DS, there's no bailing out of building a Prasat in every city. You're just, like, much worse. Mm -hmm. You still need the Prasat in every city, regardless of how many white DS there are. Or else, And you want your holy sites, because your whole Civ bonuses, you get free food and adjacency mm -hmm. on your holy sites. And you're going River Goddess, so you get free amenities on your holy sites. So you and put the Aqueduct everywhere. also gives you amenity as well? Or does it not anymore? uh it's been well, a while since i played they do receive an amenity yeah okay yeah so yeah i think uh yeah i think immerse still i think it's still good yeah yeah i just think that the food nerf was uh kind of sad yeah and it's on the um just getting that nerf on the holy sites because you get those holy sites up super early so it's like right away you're feeling the nerf Mm. The culture bombs are nice on the holy sites. I feel like this is something that a lot of uh, weaker players don't use well enough. On Gamera, you should be thinking about the culture bomb and placing your holy sites. You can get some free tiles, which are quite good. And your city's going to grow pretty populous pretty quickly. So you do want to culture bomb some good tiles with them. Yeah. But yeah, it, it was literally at one point the best FFA civ in the game, like uncontested. Mm -hmm. Really fallen from grace. That's nuts. Um, hey, next up's Portugal, who I have never personally played. I'm not sure exactly how strong he is right now. Do either of you have more experience with them? So Portugal scales pretty, pretty crazy. It's it's contingent on the map, right? So when you're playing it on like a, a tilted axis or like a seven C's, a fractal, something like that, where you have all these tiles that you can benefit from your navigational schools, like the universities, it really shines. And especially when you hit, you know, certain techs that amplify your trade routes, it gets pretty insane, but it needs to get there. So I would say it's situationally very strong, probably above Khmer, but like it's, it gets the trade routes rolling and you need to have good allies and, you know, people around you, but it, it just, you have to have that map. You can't play this on Pangea. You can't play this on Highlands. I played this on Highlands and I did internal Portugal and I could not wait to get out of that game. I just want and to I, point out, like, you can get an inland sea spawn on Portugal and you are just, your game is ruined if nobody else is on the sea. Yeah. Like, you can never put the sieve too high so long as the, it's, there's the possibility of just getting screwed by a bad map. You're begging someone to settle that inland sea. You're literally begging them to do that. Cause, and it could be like a... It literally could be a B3 city for you, too. But you can't settle it because you need someone to settle there for you. Like, That's it is true. really... And, and how big is the sea? How big is that inland sea? Is it... So if that was your B3, maybe you can... Mm -hmm possibly do a B4, you know, a little bit in the Inland Sea, and then, but how many traders can you send to that city? Only uh, the amount of cities that you have on the coast to that one city. So you're still screwed. And um, you're going to get a little bit of benefit if they do settle there, but it's going to be high loyalty for them, so you need culture ally for them to even settle there because you got all of your core cities over there, while it took them 10 to 15 turns to actually settle that city. Like, both players are not happy. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, the high rolls are also giga ridiculous. Yeah. People yeah. talked about uh, Kumasi, and, you know, if you do have a full naval trader, stuff like that, like, you can, you can really go crazy with those Civ, but I think that you have to find the average of those two, like the high, the low roll. And I don't think the end result is worth it to be like a, a good Civ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It does certainly pop off when it pops off, but it feels like a Germany. Like it definitely feels right next to a Germany. I I would right. probably. I think it's less reliable than Germany, though. Yeah, yeah. I think he, I would. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll be right back, though. Yeah, but go ahead, go with Australia. I'm not an outback guy. Okay. The um... pastures are powerful. Okay, uh, Australia. This civ. Um, I'm not sure exactly how I feel about it. One thing that's interesting about it is it can go for the builder opener if you have the right spawn for it, because you get the plus one prod on pastures. 
So um, right. you, if you can have open sheep, builder. You can see already. Yeah. And you immediately have like three tiles because of the culture bombs. Um, you can consistently just culture bomb extra tiles if you need them. So you can be like turn ten, you're working three tiles, which are all like three three or two fours or better. Um. Yeah, it can give you quite a lot of tempo early. Uh, it's very, very good Caravel Rush Civ because of the big campuses. Um, big campuses let you get a ton of science. You can just get the Caravels before somebody else and rush them. Uh, maybe not the most reliable FFA strategy. Um, but, you know, an option. Uh, you do need to have uh, appeal. You almost always do, though. Like, it's very rare you get a spawn with, like, no appeal in Australia. Because, you know, you spawn next to the coast, every coastal tower adds appeal. It's somewhat common. I would say, like, probably 50% of games, you're going to have a plus 5 campus or better in one of your first two cities. Yeah. I've had games where I just start with like a plus seven campus because there's just two reefs next to the ghost and it's a breathtaking dial. Like that's yeah, plus so seven. I, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it's pretty good for dry science. Uh, it's also easy to mess up for new players who overemphasize the high science. Like if you place down like a plus five and a plus seven campus early in your first two cities, your districts can get prohibitively expensive if you don't like. If you're not careful and you just research too many techs, I've seen new players mess the sieve up a lot. Because if you're sitting there on like turn like 35 with 40 science per turn, like it can be dangerous. Because you actually want to pace yourself through the tech tree, not grab too many uh too many techs before you get like all of your harbors down. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's it's got a lot of problems there. It's got problems with like. The internals being a little bit like the like managing your food and not doing a like third campus for sure. You want to start getting those internals going, uh, stuff like that. Uh, the mine situation would be awkward without back stations waiting for them. A little bit less so now with it being at uh, feudal, but it still can be awkward. But with that being said, you can get really nice yields on the the tiles once you do have them, and then like. I don't know, I think you can have really, really good results with, like, deliberations. You can have really good results with uh, one of the other things you could do that I don't think many other people have done, even since I did it. When I did it, Yelly was telling me it was completely broken, is the CV angle. Because you have such good appeal that you're building up with your outback stations. You can do a really nice... Um, like build the right wonders for it and stuff, which you have access to because of science. You can get what is it, the Cristo Redentor and uh, Eiffel Tower combo, and you can do a really nice CV, really really quick. Tons of tourism. Um, some other mm, things. Some seaside resorts, it. but huh. Uh, diggers are really good. Like, we do need to mention that. If you can get the setup for it, diggers are, like, an unstoppable push. They're, what, 83 combat strength instead of 80 compared to regular infantry, and then they can get plus 15 on coastal foreign territory. They're sitting yeah. there with, like, 98. Like, they're completely unstoppable in the right situation. That's true. Yeah, I mean, they're, diggers are really good, for sure. Um. Yeah, I, I think the sieve, it's like, it's kind of spawn dependent, because you want both the breathtaking stuff and the uh, the right pastures, but it's fairly consistent. Yeah, one thing, Australia can get really weird spawns with BBS. I'm not sure what it is, but it seems to like break better balance starts. Like, it's kind of fitting that Australia gets so many island spawns on Pangea for some reason. I think it has to do with the fact that its spawn bias doesn't really care about placing it on fresh water that much, because it gets the plus three housing. Right. Mm. So, like, Australia can spawn in some very weird places. Uh, yeah. It's just something to keep in mind when picking the sieve. 
yeah, I think it it's above be bad, but also here. The three housing is actually huge too it for is. just early game navels. Like the difference between freshwater and non freshwater on so many navels is a big deal. And so us having that guaranteed basically any any coast is kind of like fresh water. It, uh, it means you can grow really big, really fast. Yeah, it's I th- I think it's super strong. Like I I don't know. Like uh, the culture bombs and the prod just alone early game or just in saving money from tile buys is just so good yeah i mentioned this in the tempo uh australia is a sieve where you can open builder before scouts like you can go builder from turn one if you have uh some pasturable resources next to you Mm -hmm. quite a lot of tempo i strongly recommend always going double scout but like the builder opening is very strong but always go double scout in these 1.5 lobbies right like I think you can go yeah. builder like into can... double scout yeah before your settler but if you see sheep which are the ideal ones because they're the ones that are already two twos or three ones before improving and mm-hmm. you can already see them you're not gambling on a horse i think it's worth to go the builder but then you still need to build those scouts you can't yeah. skip them yeah the three three tiles is too good yeah um Jules. all right julius caesar this is a sieve which i think maybe not as good in ffa as it is in teamers because it kind of its bonus is kind of incentivized like it's a row warring into your neighbor it's very very good at that um they did just nerf the amount of gold that you get yeah, i'm trying to pull it City, up on uh, stream and then by half yeah, they nerfed it yeah. by half. You don't get nearly as much as you used to. It's like, what, 75 gold on online speed now? Yeah, it's... I mean, if you have barb camps, like, there's a lot of these lobbies that we play. 1.5 goodie huts, minimal barbs. People don't want to build warriors. Like, they're just afraid of it, so we have these civilized barbs, which is nuts. And I, I understand it to an extent, but, like, it's it's taken away from the game. And but it also takes away from the sieve, because uh, like you'll never like you won't see a uh, a barb hut, you know, in some games, like in some games they're just non existent. So someone just got the one on the far side of the map, they cleared it, and that's all the barbs we have. Right. And so so that bonus is like it doesn't happen, and then now you're thinking like, well, how do I get this bonus? How do I get more? You need to war somebody. You need to take their city. You need to get that free extra slot card. Um, it's, I don't yeah. know. Legion push is pretty unstoppable if you're not prepared. Like I got hit with a Legion push because I just clearly didn't respect it. And um, I'm like, oh yeah, it's whatever. And it's just like Legions chop out Legions. Like how could I have forgot this, right? It's yeah. extreme. So if you have, it's contingent on a player being right next to you, right? And uh it, it, that's just what it is like unless if you have a crazy sim bonus and you just do a vanilla bonus like sim bonus or a sim excuse me and then you try to take a city later on with someone that's not prepared or that, that doesn't have a good sim so it's like eh it's like whatever i do want to point out the sim does have a lot of snowball potential if somebody doesn't respect the legions you do get a mm-hmm. free wildcard policy slot for the rest of the game upon capturing a city, and all units receive a hundred percent combat experience. That one, I think that's really good XP for scouts. It's like huge. It's also huge for scouts. Yeah. I see level yeah. four scouts sprinting around the map, five movement point, it's ignoring all terrain movement costs on the Civ all the time. I was gonna say that about the scouting is, yeah, you get really good scouts, and then you also get extra warriors which you can just use as scouts so you kind of like this civ reveals the map as good as kree yeah also and you can typically get a free cs kill yeah the extra scouting also helps you um hit your golden ages you're very very unlikely to miss golden age with the all the extra scout xp and extra units you get on the civ yeah i Mm -hmm. agree yeah i mean bass are really good for simming the all roads lead to Rome, pretty good, decent for simming. I mean, it's not, it's definitely not bad. I don't think, like, when you compare it to Trajan, yeah, Trajan's like getting more value instantly, but like, there's so much more in this Civ than Trajan in total. If you play around everything, right? Like, it doesn't take a lot. 
one more first too. meet and two more huts or something can can really snowball your game if it's the right stuff yeah that you find um and like on top of that you also have that kind of like the friendship bonus like everyone's gonna want to be your friend but yeah like later game you just you set up for a push you get a kill that's a free uh, forbidden city which i mean everybody wants so i don't know i, I definitely think it's it's good and you can i don't think you have to go legion push although the legion push is very strong um i'm debating where we put it it might be situationally good situation yeah. very strong above germany maybe yeah somewhere it, it up feels there. weird putting it above some of these other civs that we have in reliable to be honest I mean, I feel like um, if you don't uh, have the I right game pick for it, it over a lot of these other civs, yeah, personally, that are unreliable. I think it's very good because, dude, like the extra XP is like very abusable. You Fair can enough. use that even for planes and stuff. Like, you get a plane, you get your two biplanes for the boost, start attacking a city state or something, and like you get the plus seven real quick. You know, or like it, just about anything like that. Like you could, you can just. XP on city sites before you go places and get really easy uh like Malone level coursers. It's not that hard to to kind of like just abuse that and then once you get some XP, like some of these I don't know, some of the promotions are just really, really good. And in combat too, if you ever are actually fighting a guy a little bit later, like once you have mill academies and stuff, like tanks, like you shoot them like once and they're ready to promote. So you can mm -hmm. kind of sit on the promote until you want to get the max health out of it. But like, yeah, a lot of times you can just, you get a lot of free health in worse. All right. Kind of like a Scythia style bonus. Uh, I think the next Civ we should talk about, just Trajan. I just moved him up so we can knock out the two rooms together. Sure. Uh, a lot of similar bonuses, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, Trajan just gets, what, a free monument? That's it? Uh, let me yeah. see here. Free I mean, that, that the free road. Is huge. Yeah, it's insane how good this bonus is. Like, it's a very bonus, or it's, it's so a very uh, boring sieve, but it's like, uh, it's very strong. That monument he, is nuts. Going builder first is Yeah, yeah, going builder first is huge. And then the fact that you also get, I mean, you do get a free amenity every single city with a half price stock left. Yeah. Yeah, the I, bath is nuts. I do want to point out the Trajan can feel pretty. Uh, frustrating when you have a spawn where all of your expands have like no tile improvements you can build in them because you have a free monument and it's like what do i make a builder all i have are like two two forest hills so i have no tile improvements to build i would say just set up for kalo then like you yeah, have, you have two two forest yeah. you set up for magnus drops i think yeah mm -hmm. yeah but if it's like, like every city i like... mean it's i i don't know if it's going to be every city there's going to be tile improvements that you need you can get your early yeah. apprenticeship right away. Get animal it, husbandry up. Get your strategics up. Animal uh, get uh, the apprenticeship boost. Like these things are essential. You need to have craftsmanship boosted. Otherwise, you're just wasting the free culture. Right. And also, if you really don't, if you don't want to, um, like if you have enough chops already in your Magnus City to it, you have like even more builders somehow. You can even with a settler card, you can chop out builders from a or settlers from a two pop city. You have ancestral as well, like mm -hmm. you just just chop, chop, chop. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. just use that tempo. But I don't think that's a very common thing that you run into. But yeah, I think there's typically there's enough luxes, enough horses, enough things here and there to use at least some of them, and then anything else, any of the other cities that don't have those, send theirs towards the cap, and then you use it for chopping with Magnus. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. yeah. Definitely up there is one of the most boring sims to me, but you know, for good. sure, boring, yeah, but, but it strong. is consistently very strong. I put but... it above Japan, yeah, I would say that's probably fair, yeah, fair enough. Um, like it's a testament how to how important tempo is in Civ that getting a free monument in every new city is just that good, mm -hmm. yep. I mean, it's part of why Babylon's good, but Rome's comes even earlier. Of course, it's not as impactful once it does come. So I think that's why Babylon is a little better because he also has. It's partly because Babylon has other bonuses on top, but they're both kind of similar. And why they're even good at all is just tons of free tempo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. Stainless. 
Next up is Christina. We talk about leader. tempo. Now we go to Christina. Yeah, the exact wow. opposite of tempo. So whose bonuses don't exist until like the mid game. Remember that buff that gave her like crazy yields in Tundra and like uh, oh, was my... it in Desert it was Two? So I fun. Did... I love that was... version. <laughs> I love that too. I think maybe she was a little too strong, but at the same time, taking it away as you can, everyone can see. Nobody even touches the sieve anymore. Like. I actually yeah. won a culture victory on the Civ like two days ago. Oh, did um, you? Okay. Yeah. I mean, it has some stuff going for it. There are some strategies you have to go for. Like, one is that as soon as you enter your tier two government and get your unique building, you just project like mad until you get the first great musician. Because right. theming yeah. that building will instantly bump you up to like 300 culture per turn. It's like super yeah. important. So you literally just spam theater square projects to get the first musician as soon as you get it um yeah you get 80 yeah, culture, 80 for culture one one full. it's crazy yeah and then great but I abadana amazing wonders for the civ yeah fun, man. i got but, abadana yeah. in that game quite good bank merchant uh you mm -hmm. can't theme the bank you can't think yeah, of the bank? Yeah, only one. It's good to have it unlocked for yeah. you're going CV, but. That would be yeah. nice if you could, yeah. Um, some yeah. other things. The Diplo favor was surprisingly impactful in that game. I got everything I wanted at every Congress. I had double Musician Congress twice in a row because no, I had like 400 Diplo favor going into two World Congresses. So, like, it, okay, yeah. it's easy to forget, but that's like a lot. I was able to force double Musician through in a lobby where people are trying to stop it. Um, open air museums, uh, kind of RNG, whether or not you get the spawn for them. Uh, in that game I played, I didn't have a single settleable Tundra city. Uh, I didn't have a desert city anywhere near me. I was able to get one in the late game. So I was sitting on plus four culture from open air museums. It was kind of sad. Yeah, you know, if you can get like plus eight culture, really, really, really good. You know, right? Like one desert city, one tundra city. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think Christina's still probably fine, and always gonna be like you, like crazy good at culture win. But the problem is just no tempo. So, yeah. a lot of what it comes boils down to is: do you get the full free sim game or not? Or is somebody going to abuse the fact that you have no tempo and attack you? Because you're pretty weak until Carolians. Yeah, mm -hmm. Carolians um, are incredible. But Just like, get the Statue of Zeus, you have pray. No yeah. then. <laughs> and, I, and I also find it struggles a lot with prod because, I mean, you don't have any bonus towards it. And then all, you want to do so many things. You want to build all these wonders. You want to produce an extra gut plaza building. Like, yeah, you do have bonus for prod for that, but still. And then you also want to get wonders. And then it, you also want to build theaters. And it's like, well, <laughs> get production you're doing libraries, this, like, workshops. <laughs> yeah, but like, did you get did, when you compare to a sieve that's going to go for like industrials and, and Magnus internals, like you're generally quite behind in prod. And if you do the full Magnus internal thing, then sometimes, yes, it takes a little bit longer to set up and you end up being better off, but then you. Uh, can miss some of the important stuff, like the important wonders. Yeah, I'm so, gonna be honest. It just depends. I wouldn't ever pick the Civ in like a really strong lobby because it's like when you pick these greedy culture victory civs, you put a target on your back, and Sweden does not that have too. the tempo to keep pace. Like other people will see that you're putting up massive tourism, like turn eighty, and they'll come to kill you. And the Civ doesn't have the tempo to keep up with those Civs that might want to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like, I think it's just missing tempo still. Yeah. I think Canada is somewhat similar in that it's also a greedy culture victory Civ, but its unique unit is relevant for longer than Carolians are relevant. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's unique unit is relevant. Now. And then it's also uh, got the slightly better location bias like christina's kind of typically in the north or south but not quite as far you can still have that extra neighbor yeah i think it's situationally good yeah situationally good it's very very fast greedy culture victory 
That's true, yeah. But, like, if somebody wants to kill you, it can be very hard to stop them if they come... Either they come before Carolians are relevant, or they come right after Carolians stop being relevant. Right? Like, yeah, yeah you, just, you I start mean, they'll hitting, just have fighters. Right, you start hitting tank, Christina yeah. with some planes, and what's she gonna do? Yeah. Yeah. Build anti-air. <laughs> Um, okay. next one, we have the most generic Civ ever, Kublai China. Uh... God, why did they have to, what did they do to my boy? Kublai China is, like, it's sincerely, like, the most generic set of bonuses I've ever seen, and yet it's still, like, a really good Civ. You cannot go wrong with this. Right. I think it's good because some Civ makes you go out of your way for bonuses, and some... <laughs> they give you bonuses for doing good things that you already want to do. Yeah. So, um, free shit is nice. Extra economic policy card slot in any government. That's great. Huge. Very good. Early, Best. good early, good late. Every stage of the game is great. Free random Got Eureka in planning. inspirations. Mm. Those are fantastic. Extra science and culture on international trade routes. That's great. You still don't really send them early unless you have like Kumasi or something. You're still waiting until like whistle banking to start switching, but it's nice. And um, China's bonuses, notably the extra progress on Eureka's and Inspirations, is really good. Um, it means yep. that with free inquiry, you're getting sixty percent of the tech when you get a Eureka. Isn't Which fifty? Isn't it? If is isn't Dynasty no, because cycle free 50? inquiry makes it go to fifty. Oh, free ink is ten percent. Yeah, yeah, free yeah, yeah. Go okay, up sixty. Um. um when you do the math on it, what changes is in non-free ink, non pen brush, you get a 20% bonus because everyone else is going to complete uh, text at 60% of the total cost when everything's boosted, and you're completing it at 50% of the total cost. Uh, so it's 20% bonus, and then if you're both in free ink or both in pen brush, respectively, for whichever tech or civic you're going for, you basically have a 25% bonus in that yield. As long as uh, you're doing boost, uh, boost attack. I think it's actually. I think it's a difference of like sixteen point six seven percent and versus twenty percent instead of twenty versus twenty five. I'm not sure. Hmm. I think it depends on the perspective you're looking at it from. Because you're. Uh, I'm talking about basically if you were to like look at your yields and how far they're stretching. It's as yeah. though you had twenty five percent more. Uh, with China. It's always easy to get misled on like how far along they are in the tech and civic streak. Because you look at their stats and it's like, oh well, they're not like doing so hot. And then you look at their techs completed and it's like, whoa, like the Eureka's put in work. They really they do. do. Um. So yeah, and the best generic bonus this guy has is the economic policy card slot. That's always fantastic. So where do we put this guy? Uh, I'd put him in very strong. I mean, Toilet was mad. He actually banned Kublai China. <laughs> Wait, no, he didn't ban it. He was saying he was going to for that other game because the game right before the anonymous game, uh, I had so much less science by the end of it. Uh, I had like maybe 250, 300 science, and he had like 600 science. And it was into like the late 90s. I was still ahead of him in tech. Um, <laughs> I put him... <laughs> I put this in right between Trajan and Hojo because these three are like the most boring, strong civs in the game. <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty fair. I tend to think that Hojo might be better in, I guess, in the fact that when the late, late game comes, yes, the techs are good on Kublai, but like he's going to have more prod. And he's going to have like the adjacencies start to matter more when you're running like double cards that care about adjacency like rationalism cares about it as well i think doesn't, the hojo uh, outscales there, doesn't doesn't kublai get there faster though like doesn't he uh, isn't he stronger like for a longer mm, period of time than hojo that's true because, it's tough. Just yeah, because he, of that, he races that card. there faster but then once you're both there hojo's stronger for sure also china free era score from their great wall if they need it in the ancient that's era that's true yep yeah. So that's it's very nice general. to have. Makes it so that you, the second era is also very easy if you ever don't need the Great Wall. Crouching Tiger plus Great Wall is super easy to, to grab. 
think Kublai is above Hojo. Might I really, be actually, I, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Also, you get like just a ton of free Eurekas and inspirations. Like every time you complete a trading post, every time you build a wonder. And his yep. externals give plus one, plus one, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, he has a lot of free stuff. Man, why didn't they let him solve the free builder charges? Yeah, <laughs> that, that was, was so like, strong. He would be in broken if he still had a free builder charge in every builder, like for real. Yeah, that's what I used to love him. Every possible swimming bonus. Well, so Mongolia Kublai, right, is like mm -hmm. the exact same thing, except he doesn't have the cycle. He has the yeah. The, the problem is low. that you mix <laughs> a situational good or a very strong sieve with the massive. Of yeah. yeah um he still gets a card slot yeah he gets the card he slot he gets free eurekas and inspirations he gets plus one science and culture for international trade route but now he's losing the extra eureka and inspiration progress from China. i think he might be, be before or after caesar then yeah because... he's definitely going to be worse than the other kublai by a lot yeah worse um, than the other kublai better than the other mongol yeah, I would put him maybe in reliable. I wouldn't put him in situationally very strong, to be honest. Just yeah. Maybe down here. Yeah. I think reliable is a fairly good spot for him. Somewhere around, I'd feel kind of like I would if I had to pick him versus if I had to pick Dido mm -hmm. myself. Yeah. But I would rather play England than him, though. Even the, the other one myself. But can leave him here. Um, Unlike uh Genghis Khan at least he gets a ton of swimming bonuses to so the uh Mary Catherine Goddard push where you get that tip of his merchant right you yeah. have some tempo you know, to get there I actually heard some people talking about it too where they think that Kublai Mongol scale scales harder than Genghis Khan because of the fact that in his war bonus even though Genghis has a plus three and stealing of uh cab units in the late late game you actually want to take tiles you don't want to attack into a tile and then not take it and leave a very damaged converted unit there so they're saying like it's actually better to have to kill the units in the late game rather than steal them i can see that argument um all right next one maori uh okay. i've played the civ quite a lot i think maybe situationally broken he can get bad spawns but he's yeah. very good on good spawns. He also doesn't have, like, BBS doesn't work properly with him, I heard. But he, if he gets the right spawn, which is not a difficult thing for him to get, it's just woods or rainforest, and uh, maybe some fish, he becomes very good. No need for any builders. Talk about China getting a free builder charge, that's one thing. Not needing any builders for, like, the majority of your tiles is huge. Like Chichen Itza too, crazy good. You can do preserves on this guy. Uh, um, the Marais are super good value. Yeah, also, uh, there's like two different builds on the Civ. Like, you can have a build where you have like nothing but forest around you. You go preserves, you pop off with preserves. Or you have a ton of rainforest around you. Well, now you're rushing Chichen Itza, right? So it's like either one works. Yeah. Um it there, can be kind of either. It can be kind of bad when they're like mixed between the two where it's like you don't have enough rainforest for Chichen Itza to be insane, but you don't have the appeal to run preserves because there's random rainforest ruining your stuff. Right. That's um, a little less ideal. Also, if your spawn just has like a ton of stone or maze or something that you can't remove, that sucks. Yeah. That does suck. But uh the general just of general value, you have a lot of free, freely improved tiles is huge. And then, like, taking cities, generally quite good, because they don't even need to be improved. If they are improved, great. If they're not improved, who cares? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, and then another thing that I think maybe people don't necessarily think about is, I think you have better tempo than other sips by not having to improve your, your tiles in the first place. But then, when you hit conservation, you can just build a bunch of builders and go chop all those woods and then just replant them and those late game yeah. chops are worth tons of yeah, prod. you get like 90 prod for late game chops it's like crazy yeah so it's like that value is actually just the nuts 
mm-hmm. to have in combination with not having had to have builders that whole time. So when you go to build those builders, they're super cheap. Uh, there's some other observations I have from playing him. Most games, I get value out of the ability to embark settlers right away and embark units gaining plus two movement. I've had games where I settle my second city like two turns after I put, pump out my settler. Like I spawn with like a three tile lake, I run the settler through and settle on the other end. It, yeah. yeah. Sailing tech is nuts. That's, that's such good value. Yeah. The early yeah. in. It's the fact that you can embark them early to get plus two movement when embarked. Um, also, culture bombs on the fishing boats. Very nice. You can get some third Sounds ring too, reef yeah. fish. <laughs> yeah. Got to the sea. Absolutely broken. Yeah. Um, also, Imagine it's, it's two food, two prod if you have got to the sea. One last your, yeah. funny observation. That's crazy to me. Um, I had a game where Amit wanted to come do a pillage raid with, with helicopters. He was like, oh... Like, Kirsten's trying to win. I have nothing better to do. I'm going to pillage raid him with helicopters and ruin his game. He gets there and he's like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Where are the tile improvements? <laughs> They're liter- There's nothing to pillage. Like, he just, he ran his helicopters around for quite a while. Eventually, I killed them all. And he was like, wow, I had literally nothing to pillage. Quite funny. That sounds about right. Yeah. But yeah. Um, but yeah, situationally broken. Um, it's not 100% consistent. You you can get screwed on the sib. Yeah. Uh, Maya? Yep, next sib, Maya. Uh, this one has seen better days. I don't know how good it is after the nerfs. It used to be really good. But I see it played, played that it. much. I've seen yeah. it played last game a little bit. Okay, science. Like, uh, the yeah. plantation thing, like the rationalism card and the um, and the yeah, natural philosophy huge. card, really got hit when they changed the uh, the adjacencies to the plantations now. So yeah, I think the sieve is in a why not pick Korea state. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's re- it's, re- it's reliable. I'd say it's for sure reliable. Like, cause like you you're always gonna get. Your era score, you're always gonna get. You have so much era, like you're always gonna yeah. get golden, thousand percent. Discount. Right. You get the cheap observatories, so you can like build a ton of them and then discount some commercial hubs. Isn't it plantation bias too? Yeah, plantation like bias is so bunch, good. You yeah. get like three two bananas or two two three cocoa. So you get gold, like, good gold generation yeah. all the time. I mean, good yields. in reality, the sieve is not as bad as a lot of the massives. But it also isn't a sieve that you would ever like want to pick. <laughs> it's so unexciting now. Yeah, it's just yeah. it's just like it's not terrible. It's just not good. And you're always in uh in competition with the plantation goddess of festivals now because a lot of players are picking that um pantheon now. And if yeah. you don't get this pantheon, it's it's pretty rough <laughs> with your That's culture. True. Yeah. Um. You also get free amenities for every luxury adjacent to the city center. Which right. can be that, like a lot 10% of times. Prod, or the 10% yield well, bonus on the six tiles. You have plus three housing to your capital, big. right? Yeah. Also, you can get like some really sad spawns because of the fact that you can't settle good cities more than six tiles away from your capital. Like if you get boxed in by mountains, your game's completely over before it began. Yeah. And also uh, killing people. You're gonna have re- reduced yields from every other city as well. Yeah, conquering pretty bad. Really good. Which kind of pigeonholes you a little bit more towards the sides, or just a worse value conquering. The um, um, the bad value on conquered land makes Maya a very bad civ at playing for second. So it's kind of like a first or last civ where you kind of have to try to win science victory. That makes like a small nerf knock it down a lot i actually don't know right. if i would ever pick this given that it's so bad at playing for second you need to I play kind for of first a... spawn yeah i might even drop it below just because i don't like how the civ like can't play for second well if you don't have a good spawn yeah yeah i think situation good is probably more appropriate it's definitely not the reliable category because you could just spawn mm. without good you know 
Good. Uh, it's not plantations. reliable. Plantations. No, That's but reliable. plantations. No, you've got, dude. Have you the, played any Maya? Archer? I played some Maya where you just, dude, you see two plantations in five cities and you're just crying. But it oh. happens. And it's like, dude, what are you going to do? Like, yeah. you just suck it up and build some farms, but it's not fun. Yikes. It's a sieve that sucks at playing for score. Uh, it gets reduced yields on cities it conquers. So, like, it's really first or last. Like, it's not super safe in FFA. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Mapuche, uh, Mapuche the griefer sieve. The king of griefing. Uh, Very strong. I think yeah. He, yeah. he actually does tend to perform quite well. Yeah, one. Turns out griefing is pretty good because you can grief people across the map. And then nice, combat huh? strength is generally very good. Chamber moles, very good. Yeah. People always want to be your friends. Yeah. I think the main thing is their combat strength, as well as, of course, melons are good. Yeah, combat strength's insane. The main strategy is you make a ton of Mulan riders, you put the free promotion on all of them, and then you get Terracotta Army, so you get the second promotion where pillaging costs one point. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you just run through somebody's land and completely ruin them. You don't need to kill them with Mulan riders. Hope, like, ideally, they're your neighbor, and you can come back and kill them with something else later. Like, the Mulan Rider Raid sets them so far behind, they're never hitting any tech on a good timing again, and it gets your yep. game really, like, accelerated, that you can come back later and kill them with something much stronger. I think that's generally the way you do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the Civ also, like, you can, since it changed, now you can also, if you need to, you can wait for Cav or Helis with that same strategy. Uh, as long as the melons get their free promos and they use the terracotta, you can do you can wait for them or you can run through pillage and then get the survivors out and upgrade them later to do it mm -hmm. on somebody else. And uh, yeah, it's pretty damn good. Yeah. <laughs> um. Because if you high roll those chamomiles too, that is better than a lot of other sibs like simming sibs sim bonuses for the early game. Yeah. Those chamomiles can be very very high value. They're very random, though. Like, you're not always going to have good ones. I've had well, games where I literally yeah, couldn't build do one. Have, like, if, you have, like, if you have, like, bias. three good ones in your whole empire, that's nine culture, right? Right, yeah. Maybe and, maybe, and you you maybe 12. Bias, you're likely yeah. to actually get at least one or two. You can probably place one, so you're usually hitting your golden age. You're getting plus four air score from this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's always nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is... Yeah. One of the best I think combat it's... bonuses in the game. Where do we go put it? Because uh... it works against City Centers too, which is huge. I, I think I think it's pretty good at that solo second style. Pretty scrappy. Um, might go very strong. I would say probably, but it's not quite. Because it does have to be proactive. I think being proactive kind of is a bad thing in FFA. Like to have to be anyways. So I think it's like in very strong, but it's not at the top of it kind of my thought what do you think papa yeah i think it's it's either before or after eleanor but yeah, yeah. so it's the yeah there. you're yeah, also i think it's good right there you're like never nobody's ever killing you on the civ and ffa unless you like badly mess up because plus five combat right. strength people leave you alone if you're a good player absolutely even if you have a shit spawn you kind of just sim to fourth because nobody will ever touch you Right. There's a level of consistency there. That that does provide a lot of consistency is that people just don't want to mess with you. Alright, Ludwig? Yep, Ludwig. Uh this might be the better of the two Germanies after the changes. Might be. Um no red card slot. Doesn't kill the city states as easy, but of course you get some free culture. I I don't love the free culture bonus. It's awkward if people don't build the great bath and stuff, but yeah, uh, it's not bad. It's it's nice to have some tempo on a sieve that needs it. I once saw Barbos just begging the lobby, like, "Can anybody please build Apadana? It's turn eighty. Please build mm -hmm. Apadana already. I'm begging oh, you." Oh, <laughs> yeah, I've I've ran into that too. I wanted to yeah, put it... an aqueduct there, guys. That's funny. 
Yeah, it it gets pretty ridiculous sometimes. I for, I forgot they changed it back. Yeah. yeah. So that's the thing is it's nice culture early, but yeah, I had the same issue where I was like, I had the great bath and had a manaki, and I was like, please somebody build these. I need my aqueduct setups. But yeah, I mean, you just you can actually get screwed by the bonus as well. I guess is my point. Yeah. Um, still very good late game saving sieve, just like Germany, the other one. Maybe just put it right next to Germany. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, both I the put leaders, them very nearly the identical. Both the leaders. Uh, bonuses are nowhere near as impactful as the Sibs bonuses. Right. Right. Germany, very impactful Sib. I'll just put them like here. I think they're roughly the same. Yeah. Yep. At the very least, um, Ludwig can get to political philosophy somewhat consistently, so his first golden age was more reliable than the others. That is true. Yeah, he's got a little bit more reliability there. Higher chances at the very least to get to that, or like to if he needs to get an envoy or something. Yeah. All right. Uh, next sieve up is Mali. Specifically, it's going to be Mansa Musa, who's definitely the better of the two Malis. I don't know how good this is after all the nerfs. I don't I like it. I have no idea, honestly, myself. I say, <sighs> mm, I don't know. I think it's it, it could be situa- I think it's better than the. I'm better than Portugal for sure. I'm trying to right. think about Germany. That's a good point. I think it's probably worse than Germany in some yeah. ways, but it's got a more consistent. I mean, so it does snatch up the the merchants pretty well with the faith buying and the half pricing on the district itself. Faith buying the markets and half price district. Uh, so it's got some extra value there, extra traders. But if the game goes later. Especially with some nurse, I imagine Germany's outscaling, right? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. It's not like uh, it, it's a, it's such a funky sieve now, but like, and then it's pen brush first. You just do your holy sites later. I think mm-hmm. it's probably. I just hate it right now. The minus twenty percent production towards all production. Like, there's no shift entering shenanigans. It applies to wonders and it applies to projects. It used to not apply to those things. Yeah, the shift entering shenanigans was absolutely annoying and one of the worst game mechanics ever. I think the True. Civ kind of sucks since they changed it to minus 20% production. I think it was better back when it was the 30% production malice, but it didn't apply to wonders. It didn't apply to running city uh, projects. Districts. And you could shift enter to abuse it to like get rid of a lot of the malice. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's between. They should have done fifteen percent if they were gonna do it that way. So you would just basically automatically have the shift enter thing. I think. But I whatever. don't remember seeing anybody ever pop off on the sieve since they reduced it from um, since they did that hot fix nerf where they made it minus twenty percent production. Yeah. Have you seen? I mean, the sieve. I, I like. I'm a little bit sad, but honestly, now that I'm thinking about it more, dude. Yeah, I haven't seen anybody pop off on it. I remember back in the day when it was meta, and I just wanted them to delete the sieve. Like, it's so ridiculously stupid when it's good. I mean, this was also when I was playing a lot more teamers. The sieve breaks the game in teamers like crazy if it's good. Um, so I'm kind of okay with this. But yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind if they maybe just switched its identity a little bit more towards the goal or the the prod and the faith, or maybe selfish gold, you know, instead of t- giving it away. But yeah, I, I haven't seen anybody do very well. Also, I heard Papa. You said the word like you said it's like reliable or consistent. I that is like the opposite of the case. You can get really what bad is? spawns on Mali. On uh, Mali. Uh, like, it's got a, it's got a more reliable golden. Yeah, golden it's age. it's yeah, it has reliable golden age. I mean, you go for you get your first pantheons. That's very reliable, right? So you get your uh, pantheon right away. You're the first. You're always going Saguba by Golden Age as well. Yeah, you go Sagubas. You if you have really good, uh, it has like giving arrow score. Mm-hmm. It has uh, copper diamonds around there generally. You go religious idols, really good tempo right there. It's that's I'd say that's pretty reliable. The last you know. the last time I picked this sieve, I spawned on a uh, lake on the coast. Uh, with only three dials of desert, and I actually almost quit the game. 
Well, you're just cursed. That's yeah, why. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I think I mean that it's happens, haunted, but that happens to like you know, some not all civs get all of their biases all the time. Like I mean, it's just sometimes you just get hit hard. Also, you know, and then yeah, this this curse bit, you don't get plus one adjacency on the Sugabas for adjacent city centers. Yeah, and it's only one for uh rivers. Yeah, it's like. Oh my god. I've it's seen Molly perform well, like when I've seen like, you know, when players know what they're doing with the Molly, like they perform really well, but it's like it gets changed it's got it got changed pr- you know, pretty frequently in the past what, like three to six months. Yeah. And it's just in general for the worse. Yeah, and people are still trying to find meta. People are still asking questions about it. It's I yeah. say it's still better than Portugal just for the reason that it's it gets pantheon better it gets pantheon faster it has a unique district that has the most powerful merchants in the game or powerful great people which are the merchants in my opinion um it, and then uh yeah it just it's it's just strong like yeah, it's just it has those trade routes uh, capacity where you can just like every time you hit a golden age you get that trade route capacity you find a reliable ally you start sending those externals right away uh, I just want to give a shout out to Toilet. Toilet is in my chat <laughs> threatening to raid somebody else if I don't acknowledge him in five seconds. You know, shout, Hi, big Toilet. shout out to How him. you doing? I'm right here. Hi, Toilet. Uh, raid Harson. Raid Harson. Go ahead. Go. Yeah. And now he's calling me shameless. Shameless. <laughs> okay. I, warn um, you not to I mean, you know. But yeah, it's like. What happened to Mali? This is a free inquiry meta, and Mali's Sugabas get lower adjacency than regular commercial hubs. Mm-hmm. Like, what the hell? You gonna join us? Do I have to say, and uh, flying? I turned down Hurston's invite to this, because every sieve is the same. Random is the best way to pick. <laughs> All right. All right, just tell us. Mansa Musa, broken, or shit tier? Uh, I don't play this sieve. It's too high roll for me. Too high roll, low roll. It's above Portugal. It's thousand percent above Portugal. Yeah, but is it, I would never put this above Nubia, Gaul, and Abraham Lincoln. Like, yeah, I well, would. like, well, like, uh, well, we're thinking these are situationally very strong, right? So, yeah, but this like, is situationally like very strong and reliable. They're they're like situationally very strong is not, uh, it's not above reliable on an everyday basis, right? Because that's what reliable is. Situationally very strong if they do roll then they are above reliable, right? I mean, I think I'd put it in situationally good because you need you need a yeah. good role yeah, just to yeah. keep I mean, up with the rest of the world. Put, well. Then put Portugal in situationally well, but good then. Portugal's high role is better than Molly's. Yeah, because Portugal can win games on a high role, Mali high rolls, the and Inlands. then they keep up. That's all they yeah, get for the, high the roll. The low rolls kill you. One question, the, the high rolls win the game. But that, that's, that's like, a, you have to be rolling sevens. Like, the, the Portugal, I have rolled so hard. Like, low rolled so bad. Like, it's, it's not good. Uh, yeah, question. but, but the question, best god spawn on Molly doesn't auto win. Or it doesn't win the game. Like, Why do you have Macedon so low? Why do I have Macedon so low? Because these people were uh, bothering me. They're like, oh, no, you can't put Macedon too high. Like, I thought it should it's be so higher. It's so good now. Yeah, I would. And... I would personally have moved it up. I think we probably should put it back up to situationally very strong at least because it, when it high rolls, it like wins the game. You get two city states to kill, then you get like a free kill at tanks, and you win. And you get a red card, and you have no wall bonus. Yeah, you just win the game if you get the right spawn. It's like unstoppable. So I'd at least put it here probably. Why you got Babylon so high? Come on, do you overrating it? Make it lower to make it look better. Fine, fine. No, 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 no. Well, you gotta lower it a little bit. Uh, All right, I'll I'll make a new tier. No, no, no. No, I'm 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 kidding. Okay. Hurry up! We're three hours in. We have okay, okay. Freaking like three more hours to go. This is like half the sieves. All right, yeah. Okay, speed speed run. Uh, Hungary. Uh, Hungary, pretty good. I think it's situationally. Broken or it's top yeah. of very strong. Yeah, it's like it's it's very, so very good. Strong. Um, yeah, very fun. So it's like dirt cheap, like kills. Like the fact that you can just levy and then kill somebody while spending literally nothing on it. Yep. You get plus as well as 
thermal baths, Pearl of Danube. Every single bonus is good. Thermal mm-hmm. bath is like a coliseum, except it gives reduction instead of culture. It's like incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Hazars are an amazing, unique unit. Extra diplomatic policy slot is quite nice. Mm-hmm. That's very good. City state like, yeah. control, like we said, people in FFA won't even contest your city states if they see that you're playing a div right. with city state control. So you just get all the amount of free. free amount of free envoys you can generate is insane with the levies and Amani moving and stuff. But yeah, uh, the Hazars, I've had them be like plus 12, plus 14 before and just mowed through people because of that too. Like you just control every city state. Nobody cares to contest you on the Pepega ones like Laventa. Nobody cares. So you just sues a ton, go out to go kill somebody with those cab, and they just do so much damage when you have all those city states. Yeah, Hazars are one of the best unique units. You can get them up to like 75 combat strength blowing people mm-hmm. apart. And then uh, lastly, uh, the one last thing to talk about, it has a huge amount of tempo from that uh, extra production towards districts and buildings constructed across the river from the city center. Yep. So good. It's like, it's so we good. talk about how good these civs are that have discount districts. Like, oh, a discounted harbor is so good. Oh, discount campus. Hungry, it's like every district, basically. District and building, yeah, yeah. It's so good. And then the Gov Plaza building being discounted by 50%, like, or not discounted by 50%, sorry, you get 150% prod towards it, which is not as good as discounting it by 50%. It's, yeah, it's clear. not as good. But yeah, it's, it's like still a 33% like discount. Yeah, typically, if it would be a five turn, it makes it a three turn, which is quite nice. I've seen Harambe uh, play Holy Sight. Um... Hungry yeah. before, and that was that was interesting. I could see like Always a holy site hungry that. into like commercial campus and have like stewardship or something. I would say it's like a better version of Harold Rongin. Oh, thousand percent, yeah. <laughs> it's such a good sieve. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe the Kirish. Well, also, since ever since they buffed banks and stock exchanges, you'd love that change too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Next one, Ethiopia. I have no idea. Very uh, broken <laughs> uh, Yesterday I had a CV with it. I had 1300 faith per turn because there was five white CS. Yeah. But uh, that was obviously a high roll. Um, I think it's good. The change, the quality of life changed where now you can settle on resources is huge. Huge, huge, huge for how, mm-hmm. for like where you could settle. Um, Ormos are really good. Free stats, really good. Raccoon Church, still kind of shit. Uh, faith from trading stuff is fine, but improving resources faith gives... Like, that's huge. Uh, I mean, I, I think the save is not to its old power at all, but it's still very good. Like, uh, one of the one of the top uh, money vitality saves, I'd say, with pretty nice, like, potential to go for cv or kill someone yeah extra faith on the faith on improvements is quite nice i do enjoy that a lot um the cavalry units they're okay but i love cavalry units because anything that builds into a chopper is nice right right um i don't know it's it's just a it's a nice sieve and archaeological like uh the museums are just very like you buy them with faith and the the archaeologists, excuse me, I can't mean freaking talk. Archaeologists, yeah, yeah, so good. So I, I think it takes a time for it to get set up, for sure. Like I think the, the beginning well, part sort of the game of, is... but I mean, in the early game, if you get Earth Goddess or Sacred Path, and you can get some Faith Gen going, you tend to actually have some pretty nice stats out of it. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, or even like. Uh religious idols or something just something to get your faith going if you get some faith going you tend to end up with like an extra couple culture an extra couple science over everybody else which is just good i th- i think it's struggle hitting golden on the sieve early like if there's other yeah. religious sieves like it's it just I depends i don't tend to myself i mean it's like where do you get the heiress for from like if there's Mostly like religion, it, yeah. Huh? yeah like if someone else gets religion first though and you don't get first religion, then you get lesser error score. Yeah, but I guess it's and, because the way I play it, maybe I like to find things that help you get more faith. So a lot of times, like Sacred Path is good on this sieve. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it definitely needs something that gives you, you like a plus, plus three, three holy, holy site. site. Yeah. Because yeah. if you don't get that, then you're 
you're gonna get hit pretty hard. Okay, so yeah. any idea where we put it? I say it's very strong. I I think it's below Mapuche. But yeah, it's, it's, I think it's it fails. definitely. I think it's better than everything that's in situationally very strong for sure. Um, yeah, it. I would say it's somewhere in that very strong range. Yeah, it does right. scale pretty hardcore. But like in the earlier game, getting there takes work. But when it gets there, it's there. Okay. Uh, next one, Montezuma. Uh, situationally broken. Right? Yeah, either yeah. situationally broken or just broken. It's more consistent. Mm, on these I, I think. Uh, I think it's. It's very. It's extremely strong. I mean, like your your amenities stretch even further. I mean, your arena is a mini yeah, coliseum. Yeah. So, you get uh, exploration with ancestral hall to like more production towards your districts. The builders right. are insane. Yeah. The pyramids. It's crazy. Like I. I don't know. Like the. I think it's above. Cyrus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think, think it's, it's a... probably more reliable than like Basil, right? Because with Basil, you're banking on cooperation from your uh, neighbors but a lot. I of the mean, time. Maybe you haven't been playing in Zavar FFAs, but I don't know how you feel about it. I feel like every single Basil game, people Ever. cooperate. Yeah. They like if you don't cooperate, cooperate, you have to, you're, you have to tech off. You have to tech off. And yeah, you but... have to get, you have to go for military tactics. You have to go for uh, pike and shot. Your your sim game, and you have to be prepared. What if they're already prepared? Yeah. Right. The what, what if they what if they give you the the like uh, what if they say oh okay you know that's not a big deal and then they show up to your border with and you're like oh maybe they're cool or or just just send me a delegation and everything's fine and then they come to your border with twenty tagmas and what do you have nothing. You know, there's like, there's a, it's not like saying like, oh, you're not going to give me what I want. Well, I'm going to attack you. It's like, oh, you're not going to give me what? That's okay. I was just joking. Nope. 20 turns later, I wasn't joking. <laughs> you're dead. Right. Yeah. So this is like, it's not like the, the, the intentions are not clear. You have to, you know, use your intuition and be like, uh, I wonder what they're doing. Oh, yeah. Your military score is rising up. They, they said they were cool though. Right. No, you're right. dead. Yeah. So, like, play more in the. I ban Basil every single time. Um, every single time. I think Aztec, though, like, if you get, like, a continent split, you're already plus eight on attack. And then you get, well, like, the great merchant that lets you, uh, get, give a copy of any Luxie or Cap. That's plus nine. Right. But you, you did just say, what if they don't cooperate for Basil? And then what if you do get a continent split on this guy? Like, I think it's less likely to get a con split than it is to get your allies to give you taxes. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely and feel like it's, it's because Basil's a guaranteed bonus. plus seven crusade and taxes, right? So, and then like I don't know, Mons Musa, yeah, it gets going, but it, it it's very strong, no doubt. But I think it's yeah. above Cyrus. I think it's right. Yeah, I agree. I think that he can, I mean, he can get to crazy numbers of, like, plus 20. But he, even then, doesn't have it on defense. Yeah, exactly. Which Basil that's, does. That's a great point, too. Basil um, is just pure stats. Like, when you are trying to attack, you can't attack into it. Yeah, you can't attack back at all into Basil. Yeah, yeah. With crazy. Aztec, you can be like, oh, well, strike first, strike hard, right? Right. You know, like... Yeah, or you can use, yeah. like, your planes actually do damage, your fields do damage to his units. If you, mm -hmm. if you want to kind of bunker up. Yeah. Um, okay, you also get extra error score in the Ancient Era on the Civ for doing nothing, which... Right. Error yeah, score, nice. you can farm builders. I mean, the Civ is just, it's kind of like hungry, and it's got a lot of really powerful things as well Yeah. for tempo. The tempo is very high. Um, so, y'all want to keep it in situationally broken? Yeah, because I I think broken like the thing is with the difference with Chandra is Chandra gets it every game. Yeah, all his bonuses. It's guaranteed. Like uh, Aztec doesn't. You can spawn on the big continent where even if you kill people, you still don't get access to new luxes. It's happened before plenty of times. So I wouldn't like. Yeah, if the continents were balanced with their size, where each continent was like a fifth of the map, 
in a large map. That would change things, but since it's not that way and you can have a continent that takes a path, you just can't put yeah, it in that level of consistency. That's pretty wild when think. that happens. It sucks. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm gonna put him above Basil just because the sim bonuses are so much better. It's like imagine you're playing Basil and you're like wanting to threaten an Aztec. The Aztec's probably just going to have more tempo than you. They're gonna be farther ahead. It's like right. Yeah, I just really like the combination of a really strong snowbally uh, war bonus with very solid sim bonuses. I could definitely understand that. They're, they're like, they're very close. Yeah, you they're don't even powerful both of them. Don't even have to war on Aztec to like set a good pace. That's true. Um. All right. Next up, Congo. Uh, I quite like these civs. They're very, mm -hmm. very good at fast culture victory. Ever since the shopping mall buffs, which were what like almost a year ago now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're a little while ago. Yeah, I think they're both very good. We already hammered in the point of merchants being incredible. Super good for them. Uh, books also being very quite good. I mean, uh, just about everything on these bonuses are good. Yeah, I like like Congo gets extra scouting, which we already kind of went over with uh, Caesar. Very good. You get extra first meets, extra huts, extra era score. Uh, the the UUs on both of them, incredible uh, classical UU. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great people points are super good. Relics or the sculptures and stuff super good. And then like you mentioned, yeah, the Mabanzas have even more value nowadays with the shopping malls for CV. Yeah, I don't think they're yeah. broken by any means. Uh, would, but they're both in a very strong position. I would put Movemba in very strong, but I would put Mabande in at least situationally broken because the massive free inquiry stats well, that's true. are like crazy. If you're in a zero blue CS lobby, nobody can catch you. Yeah, it's, the free it's I've seen much. like Mabande bomber timings pretty nuts. Like, but um. It's one of those things where if the host rules, like if you have a host rule where it's like zero blue CS and you see a bands in your draft, it's almost an auto pick. Um, it's so broken when you have like 70 commercial hub adjacency on like turn 55. Yeah, it's really good. Now, one thing is, too, I think this is, like, potentially just a current phase until maybe they make some changes or people, I don't know what's going to happen, but the current thing with the blue CS, um, certainly good in that meta. But if the meta changes and people are building more campuses, it's a little bit less value. But, yeah, for right now especially, it's really, really good. Yeah, it's more around, like, this meta specifically. And the extra culture is huge. You're always able to hit, like, good timing on... um. Like fascism and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Uh you can go for like a fast culture victory while still having a tech lead on the sieve. Uh which is really like really hard to stop. Mm -hmm. It's very strong. Yeah. I remember seeing Toilet was playing um a band -Aid a while back. He had like a turn ninety culture victory just because he had two thousand tourism already. He put a shopping mall in every city and he still had like a tech lead. Nice. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. How that's good. good this sieve can be. Um, Pachacuti. But yeah, Pachacuti. Uh, Inca. My I thoughts have... are going towards like situation and good to reliable. Yeah, maybe reliable. Probably. Like he, yeah, he has like unique improvement. I mean, he has. He's gonna hit golden age because unique improvements. The builder. Yeah. Uh, the tunnel. I'm not I don't a big know. fan of the Civ in general. I feel like it tends to to die and tends to do not so well. I think it's partly because of the people who want to play it more than just anything else. But yeah, I definitely think it's like it's pretty situational. Maybe. You need the right spawn, and even the best high rolls don't really win you the game. They just put you in a pretty good spot. Yeah, if you have your mountains, you're good. I haven't been able to reach such things. So, I don't know. I think it's situation good, reliable. 
One of them. I think it's good. Gets good money. Yeah. Deserves gaming. Questions. I mean, automation would probably rank this to broken. Right. The right. the uh, the trade roofs are very very good as well. There mm-hmm. is something a little bit sad about the fact that like this sieve gets so much free food and some free housing from its terrace farms, and it ends up struggling with amenities in a lot of games. Like mm. getting to plus yeah. three can actually be somewhat of a struggle when you have like multiple nine pop cities. Very yeah, early. you definitely need to. I mean, that's one of the things with the sieve. You have to improve a lux like a two luxes right away every sieve is literally oh i just settle one lux and i'm good for a while you have to improve two luxes otherwise uh you will be negative amenities in a city or two yeah and because the way the mountains tend to spawn you're not really a good sieve at going kalo even though you desperately need it also uh the uu shockingly bad for something that can attack twice per turn that sounds like a really broken bonus it does and then it's just not good i mean it's only good if you have ambush promotion and yeah. that's it, you will that's not achieve that right. it's like, like only caesar can get ambush promotion at a, a timely fashion or cree and you don't even want to go through those promotions you want to go for a plus one site and plus two movement it doesn't make sense yeah so yeah, yeah. you're not yeah, using scouts to fight that. yeah worthless uu and the era score cases yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it wreck some units, though. I have seen it wreck some units. Like, uh, like it will hit like knights, or like, uh, it'll move in the back line and you know, uh, kill an archer or kill a, a crossbowman, you know, with general. You know, <laughs> right. I mean, it's, it's, it's a little it's, better it's in niche. defense too. Yeah, if they it, like, if they're attacking you at knights and you have those guys like in an encampment, the enemy knight has to stand right next to your encampment. Then you can double hit safely. That's a little different. Mm-hmm. Maybe um, up the bull, you know, go go have some fun. But sure, yeah. It's really like, we're, we're talking niche things, yeah. Yeah, very niche. <laughs> Honestly, it's really it's stretch. Probably worse than everything that we have in reliable right now. Um, I think so. I would yeah. rather play Dido than yeah. Yeah. Than Patrick Rudy Maybe for sure. in man. I mean, it doesn't have the high roll potential that some of these do as well. But it is rel- I mean, but it does get the air score. Yeah, I it guess does get that's you, true. That's something that's better than need, the man yeah. and. Every a lot of the situational goods, well, some of the situational goods, but yeah, I mean it's fine. And then one nice thing is too, those traders actually kind of pop in if people want to trade with you. Like you can get uh, really, really powerful early trade routes. Like you could even do externals first in a lot of situations when you get like fifteen plus gold. Okay. Um. Next sieve is going to be very interesting. Uh, Brazil who has, like, crazy amount of commercial hub adjacency for free inquiry. He's kind of similar to Mobande, not as good at getting high adjacencies. Like, he's usually only getting, like, plus sixes mm-hmm. around. Um, extra great person generation. He has, uh, because he gets the cost refunded, uh, running the unique projects and his street carnivals gives him tons of uh they gives him the same yields as a theater square project like run 100 percent of the yields of a theater square project and then 50 percent of the yields of a commercial hub and industrial zone project on top of that he's a very strong civ i think the thing he needs to get going though because he doesn't have any bonuses towards the golden age because yeah. uh he, i mean the street carnival is a, an insane district because it's free yeah, he does spot. have a plus three campus reliably. Yeah, I think it's. Well, I he, think he's very strong. It's I think not he's very strong. Not just plus three campus. He gets a plus four commercial hub every game. So like he's getting a splendid commercial True. hub and splendid campus. You usually hit your golden age. It's yeah. not as unreliable. Yeah, as I guess looks. so. I guess so. I think. He, I don't know. I've seen. I th- I think Brazil. I have seen him get really high stats later. Just yeah, because he's I, he's extremely happy, freaking everywhere. Yep. And he just that's has insane huge. freaking like I don't know. And then the, the construction the buff doctor. was not. Yeah. 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 Construction I think buff that pushes it away over the top. There's also like Chichen Itza giving all this culture and production, all your rainforest, and then you um because you have the free street carnivals everywhere, you can place down like a zoo in two of your cities that have particularly high amounts yep. of rainforest that's plus one science on every rainforest your tiles become like ridiculously 
When, I yield. When did they move the construction, or not the construction, but the other plus one? Did they move that to ballistics? Uh, on lumber the, mills? For lumber mills, yeah. Yeah, ballistics. lumber yeah, mills yeah. now give plus one at ballistics instead oh, of yeah, like steel. Yeah, yeah, I think it's situationally broken. The, yeah, at least uh, situationally broken. Buff. It's very yeah. good. Yeah. I put it above Maori. Yeah, I put it above probably Hungary, to be honest. I quite like oh, it in this meta. It's up there, I guess for so, sure. Yeah, it, I guess so. It's around that that area, for sure. It doesn't... Uh, I got a Hungary bias here. No war bonuses. It's sort of in a similar camp to a Bandai, where it's like, if the game was just free sim and declaring war was illegal, these two civs might be some of the best civs in the entire game, but war exists, right. which is why they're not in broken yeah, tier. Yeah, it's why they're not, but it's also like... Like we mentioned before, sim bonuses are war bonuses. War bonuses are sim bonuses, like on civs that have the ability to keep really good tech tempo. You kind of do have a war bonus for a good majority of the game, in that people know that you know you'll be at the next unit, and so it's not really worth to attack. Yeah. Or if you want to go for for bombers or something, you can do that. Also, last thing, since we haven't mentioned it yet, uh, this unique unit is broken. It's rare that it comes up, but it's completely unstoppable if you can push somebody with it they Even did nerf it nerf. a little bit but it's uh, uh but it's still it's a battleship I and mean, you can it's... go industrialization and get the battleship it's... that's the thing yeah, yeah still a plus five battleship that comes so early you get it at nationalism and you still need industrialization for the coal but like there's no way the person you're attacking has their own battleships not for like another 10 15 turns even in FFA, you can decide to settle one late uh, coastal, gold buy, and chop out some quads, and then upgrade them in, like, full kill, enable player. The like, worst part is, they try to, like, sneak yeah. ironclads in to hit these battleships, and the ironclads just lose the melee hit. Like, what the hell? Yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, mm -hmm. so stupid. It's, like, unholdable if you have it on a good timing. So, yeah. Um, something to consider. Uh, next one, Pericles, uh, similar to Gorgo, but without the combat bonuses, but, you know, even more culture and some city-state control. Fantastic. I would definitely put it pretty high up there. My thoughts yeah. are to the very strong. That's my thoughts, too. I think that the, the free envoys and extra culture is good, but it's not as good as the Gorgo bonuses. I would put it very high in very strong i think it is kind of insane that you can just get i had a game where i had fascism like turn 72 on this civ just it's... recently you can play it very similar to gorgo people don't but like there's no reason you can't i think it's i my thoughts are like it's below menelec because i think cleo has way i think all those civs have way more tempo like and when i look at like uh like rome for instance Rome has way more tempo than Pericles. Pericles but, still has like, the extra Pericles wild can hit slot. fascism faster, but then if you, like, if you're racing to kill a guy and one of them with more tempo wants to attack you any time before fascism, then they can do that because they have more tempo early. I mean, you do get the wild policy card slot. I agree, it's pretty good. Yeah, I think yeah, it's, Pericles is he takes some time to ramp, for sure. So and then once he does ramp, he's, he's next still to not it. like. Very mm -hmm. strong is Auto becoming wins, yeah. very crowded. Because, like, all of those... Yeah, it is becoming very crowded. Well, yeah, I think that, to be honest, though, this and is it's... kind of what Toilet was mentioning, is that there's a lot of these sits up here. I mean, he overstated it when he said everything is balanced and good. But there is a lot of stuff that BBG has properly buffed into, like, a very playable state. Yeah, um... I'd still prefer Pericles to, like, Catherine Magnificence and Cleo. Like, you play them really? with commercial hubs and free inquiry. The thing is, the f if you're, like, left alone to hit that turn 70 fascism timing, it's like you always get a free kill because they would never have mobilization yet. Like, your fascist armies against, like, wars, it's, like, so over. Well, like, with Catherine, though, like, you have these improvements you get culture from every single improved resource every single it's it's more than pericles you get plus five percent right? per city state so and you get extra envoys you hold three pericles states. can get quite yeah, a lot you can, more, you yeah, can get a lot of culture but like you get the yields right away right with the catherine mag and then you even get more when you hit the feudalism 
Right. And you even get gold, and your but tiles the, are expanded the faster. The does also scale pretty well itself. It does scale pretty well. I say like I think I don't know. Catherine Magnificence, like when you have that early culture in the game, like you're you're saving a ton of gold because you're not buying that many tiles. I mean, there's there's so many bonuses to factor in before that. I think before the Acropolis is you know come into effect. Catherine Magnificence would definitely have higher culture, like, turn 30, but, like, turn 50, there's no way that she outpaces Pericles. Like, Pericles can get gigantic amounts of culture. I had a game just earlier. But she's doing that without a district, though. Yeah. She's doing, the, yeah. My stats turn 50 were, um, it was, like, 60 science, 220 culture turn 50. Like, it's... That was before I hit Free Inquiry. I went into Free Inquiry suddenly. I'm like 110 science, still over 250 culture, like turn 55. It's kind of insane. Yeah, yeah, I think she. I think she gets more more yields rolls. though. I want to say she gets more yields because like when you're building Acropolises, right? She didn't have to build a single district for the culture. She's building other things. Like she'll build a campus commercial setup, and she'll just out gold and out science you. While she'll be at like you know at, at a timely fashion to mobilization, and then you get fascism, you might have an elite there, but she has tech lead, and then she gets to fascism, right? Probably we'll say ten turns after. All right, Nate, where do you think we should put it? Above or below this? They're very very close. I think the gold and the science and just when you don't have to build a district for that amount of culture. Below. But the thing is, too, it's like about the city states. Like, which city states do you roll? There's I mean, Antonarivo that... or something. Pericles jumps up in value like crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, versus if there's no good city states, then he drops in value, I think, below Magnificence. But I think they're yeah, right next there's to each other. Like at sure, least but... one or two good ones, like even like a Buenos or something can put you over the top, I think. All right. Uh, let me see our next Russia. one. Russia. Uh, Look not... at we're we're at two slots now. We have or two rows now. Look at this. Yeah. Wow! Wow! Getting there. We're actually going all right. Yeah. Russia was. Uh, it's seen a lot better days. I'm not a big fan of it in this meta. With like, it can't get big free inquiries. So if you don't have a lot of blue CS, it kind of falls far beyond in science. It okay. can't defend itself with just culture the way Canada can. I got a but question you know for this... both of you, though, really quick. Huh. What do you think? So we're talking free ink, free ink, free ink. It sounds like it needs a nerf. Yeah, have you watched my newest YouTube video? I talk about how, like, if you just plan for it, you can reliably get, like, 30 commercial ob adjacency in every game, which is 60 science with the yeah. policy card. Yeah, it, it, it's nuts. I haven't seen it. I have to, you have to link um, it, right? But, I uh, do think free ink is absolutely the meta i think maybe instead of the nerf what they need to do is make culture more value viable i'd heard bbg team talking about that um a few more important breakpoints on the culture tree right uh, a lot of times like there's some nice stuff but a lot of the stuff isn't like crazy until like fascism and stuff like there's like cores armies fascism yeah i um, I didn't. Yeah, so like the late game after fascism, which is what like everyone goes for enough science to get like basically unlimited amounts of science. They want as much as they can get. And then culture, they want enough to get to fascism. And then after that, they don't give two shits. Mm -hmm. So that's part of why the, there's a problem, I think, is if the late game, like last governments are like giga good, then it changes the metric, I think, on what you're racing for. Um, I think part of the reason that I realized free inquiry is so good was like i realized that if i actually plan my commercial up adjacencies instead of just throwing down a plus a ton of plus twos without thinking of it i can actually get every commercial up to like plus four you get so much more like it's i used to like not really think about it that much but then i was like wait why don't i just like actually do a little bit of planning to make sure all of them are plus four next to the city center or river in one district and then boom Massive free ink every time on every. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes a big difference. But yeah, um, but yeah. Russia so, can't really do that. Russia, like the days of Russia's like rock band CV are kind of a little behind us. Um, which used to be as it's real good win con. 
but I still think Russia is good simply for what I'm going to call the Dubai living effect. Sit up in the tundra and get third or fourth every single game because you just have score. Like, it's good just for the average placement. Yeah, this is like else. really meta, but it's like the whole strategy with Peter is that you just get like massive amounts of score and nobody ever bothers attacking you because you're in the tundra. Your cities like suck for other people. So, yeah. Because like, every time you settle a new city, you get extra score for the extra tiles they claim. You get as four you tiles. Great people. Yeah, recruiting great people claims even more tiles. It's so, not just recruiting, it's every time you activate them. So activate books give them. two tiles, and art yeah. gives three. So you end up with like a bajillion tiles. You get a score for having founded a religion and having spread it. And what this results in is an, a completely irrelevant Russia that's somehow getting second in a lobby that it has no right getting second in. Yep. So, yeah, and it happens way too often. So I think that for any, like this is not necessarily a good save for winning, not a good save for second, but just because of the score, the raw score, even if you kill, like, let's say, you like, if a good player's on this, you kill one guy, you probably have second secured, you know? Um, just because you have so much score already. Mm -hmm. And then if you're not a yeah. good player, you're guaranteed to move up your average placement by at least, like, two. I really like, wish like, that uh, CPL brought back that leaderboard they used to have where you could see the average rating of every Civ. Russia was, like, way ahead of everybody else, and it was just this effect that we're talking about that drove the mm -hmm. whole thing. Although it was also a better Civ then than it is now. Right. Yeah, right now the Civ itself, like, meh. half price Holy Site is nice. Good error score. We're we talking just... about error score. It's guaranteed to get error. Got a decent monumentality every game. And you can go CV. Cossacks are good. Um, Love Cossacks. You know, I, I think it's a good Civ, but I don't think it competes with the very strong civs very well. Maybe you know, like it. And reliable. Yeah, I would say reliable for sure. It, if it's the reliable, pretty well. Yeah. Personally, I prefer it to a good amount of the reliable civs, like everything besides Gaul myself. But that's kind of my style as well. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah I'm a Cossack guy. I I don't know. I, I can get up. fascism Cossacks really fast, but. I quite like Nubia and Abraham Lincoln. I'm just going to leave them above it. I think they're super... Like... Okay. Um, right, Spain. Yeah. Uh, Spain. Uh, I have not touched Spain in a long time. The last time I played Spain, their missions still gave like a crazy amount of yields. So, either of you have um... more recent experience with it. I mean, they now still give two science for adjacent campuses with enlightenment. I mean, they're they're pretty decent. I think I don't know. I haven't played much of Spain either. I think the Civ is pretty damn good. Production towards the districts. What is it? Let me read this. Yeah, production towards the districts. Internals better, which you know everyone does internals and externals. Uh, conquistador is quite good. Naval bonus good. Uh, combat against religious situational. Yeah, I mean, th it's a good civ. It really it's is strong, good. and it has it's, uh, you it's don't very use strong the bonuses. But if you're ever against like Norway is the classic civ that it just destroys. Naval civ that's also like religious. You just eat him for free. Like he's nothing to you. Plus five um, is nuts. Yeah, plus five and fleets uh, uh, to mercenaries. Like, he's toast. Yeah, plus 15. Um, but yeah, I mean, good Civ. Yeah, I well, mean, well, boring. This Civ is so popular in teamers, but so, like, unpopular in FFA. Big I part think of it's that above is... Eleanor, or maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I don't... Half he doesn't, royal is this is pretty right, nuts, and the, so. he doesn't have some of those like doesn't have the free stats or the free value of like industrialization powered buildings either. But the magnets internals are just so strong. But they are, they really are. So which tier are you thinking? 
and it's very strong at least i think he's in very strong right yeah. i think he's underrated and underpicked but it's kind of maybe one of those things where like kublai china as well i think was suffering from it a bit in that like some sieves are fine in in ffa and like totally viable but they just aren't picked that much because people like when you think about it you would rather have the civet teamers yeah so like it just doesn't feel like the ideal situation just like highland civs like people weren't playing korea for a while on pangea they would only play it on highlands even though it was pretty similar both ways they just think of like it's good on this map you know but anyways also, yeah. you don't it's need strong. to go naval war. Like you can just use your combat bonus of plus five against players following other religions, mm -hmm. and like yeah, that's, can that's keep pretty good. Bush. Quite, quite doable. Yeah, or even just like a you know yeah, a tank push, tank push or anything. Push. Just plus five is just nice to have. All right. Uh, next, we're going to get a sieve, which is, I think, very, very good. Like definition of uh extremely consistent and that it's going to be Cree. Yeah. Put it um, up in very strong somewhere above Rome. Be my my estimate. Yeah. This is yeah. the extra um shared visibility on alliances means everyone generally wants to be your friend. It guarantees that you pretty much reveal every city state in the game once you hit civil service most of the time. You have extra scouting because if you're a unique scout. Yeah. Um, you know, do you think the Civ actually deserves maybe even a situationally broken? Like It's up there. If you do have enough pastures, I've had some games where the GPT, even though it's just internals because you get the, the gold for it and stuff, is so crazy. And you've got like nine food internals and stuff. Like they just, you know, it snowballs out of hand. Because you also have the housing, free housing, uh, and that gold and the free and tile. And grow so the, fast. Like, yeah, and that's the thing. Is like we're talking about Germany and stuff, free district slot. This is kind of like free district slot, because you get so much population. Um, also, another thing, uh, Mikawaps or whatever, the unique improvement, plus one production housing right away. It's great. And an additional plus one production housing at civil service, like two housing on a tile improvement, and it has workable yields. That's like kind of nuts. It's, it's, it is nuts. Two and housing like, for well tile above workable just yields insane. too because of the, uh, the adjacent food. Because you get food for every two adjacent both resources, one after conservation, but like, it can be a uh, two prod one food pretty easily uh, yeah very very good and then like shared visibility means city states which means scaling uh unique scout means guaranteed error score plus yeah and the unique um, town plus first meets plus huts you know for free trade capacity means giga good tempo yeah i think it's i think it's situationally broken yeah, eight era score in the uh, ancient era is always free to have or nice to have for free. Yeah. Also, like Persia, it gets that one free trade route capacity, which is a lot of tempo with Magnus internals. I I can put it into situationally broken, I guess. Towards the bottom of this tier. Yeah, it's a good yeah. Place to put it. Yeah. Somewhere towards the bottom there, but still. Yeah, I mean, there's also those games, you know, like where the map is funky and it's hard to find city states like having cree vision is so valuable sometimes or like on highland style maps where yeah. it's hard to scout everything there's also some shenanigans there where it's like it can let you spot somebody who would uh, that... be trying to attack you yep yep i was just gonna say i've had I've games had... where i want I've to had like... games like that I want to attack Kree or whatever, and normally what I do is I would like build a railroad through my allies' territory, move my units through, and then upgrade and attack them from there. But then that my ally is also Kree's ally, so they would see the whole thing, and I'm like, well, that mm -hmm. won't work. Yep. <laughs> yep. I've seen yeah. even just like units trying to flank around, avoiding allies' lands, but like some random ally has a scout around somewhere, and I just see the horses coming, or you know, the, the cab coming or something. It's yeah, it's really really valuable. If they're attacking you with horsemen, while well, you have an well, I'm not talking, yeah, yeah, but you know what I mean, like the 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 that class of unit, like like cab units moving around somewhere, can be yeah, 
super super valuable all right uh next up kinshi um i think this is mandate of heaven the first one i think so yeah uh yeah he's yeah. decent not like super impressive i mean it's still right. china china's always good uh extra build charge and all builders that's always good it's like mm -hmm. almost a repeat of Kubai China and how boring its bonuses are. You can play this with like this wonder build. You go Stonehenge, you try to get all these early wonders with the uh, religion, which is founded specifically for extra yields for the first wonder in each city. But you don't even need to play it that way. Right, you can play it as a, as a pretty basic sieve and just have free builder charges to bonus instead. And a couple of extra, like you get extra bonus towards Kahlo, for example, and like one or two extra. Yeah, that's the big wonders. one. Yeah. Um, and that's fine too with like Magnus internals. I mean, it's a solid sieve, but like pretty boring. But yeah, definitely you can't really knock it. Free builder charge is an incredible bonus. So is uh, the, the I, other thing, the dynastic cycle is just good. I think it's situationally strong here, but that's it's situational because of uh, if you do get the Stonehenge, yeah, if you right. have the stone, if you have the stone really tile, then it's then it's good. But if you don't get it, then it's. Like I've I've had stone like in my B four, and I, I couldn't find a tile for stone. Or if I did yeah. have a stone, it was next to hills. You know, like if you don't get the Stonehenge play, I think yeah, you would rather be Kublai China. Mm -hmm. If you have to go that full Magnus internal, like set up with commercials, like. Yeah, I mean the the little bit of bonus towards some wonders and stuff. I don't think outpaces the free card slot. And the yeah, you know, free I think everything doesn't Leash like really like this sieve. He can pick it like every time he has the opportunity. I think he did. When is the most recent time you've seen it? I haven't seen. I, it. I, I haven't seen him play in a minute. I think he used to, but there's been a nerf since. Yeah, they used to give one to all yields on all the wonders, and then they nerfed it to just one food, then one prod, and then they took that away too. All right. Uh, the other kin unifier who plays almost nothing like the uh, mandate of heaven. <laughs> this is like the one of the most different personas there is. Yeah, I think he's like mm. in FFA. I don't think he does very well. Yeah, not a super good he's FFA. Excellent in teamers, or like not. I'd say pretty game, pretty good. But in FFA, just going at camp at first. Not great. Even if you get writer points for it, it's like going theater first. Best case. And it's like yeah, if theater first book, is still just yeah. not as good as commercial first. Like you don't really care. Uh, if you you're not getting that many points either. It's not like you can amplify the amount of great people points you can with yeah. like a barracks or anything. It doesn't. You'll you'll you're guaranteed the first book. Yeah, and then, right. but if there's other books, you can't project, then you, you kiss. Can't do anything. Yeah, you kiss that goodbye. Yeah, you, yeah. You ha you'll get one, and then you might get another one in like forty turns. Yeah, yeah I think best case, it's still just not that good. Like it's it's fine, but it's not amazing. Also, um, civilized barbs means that the conversion uh action is like almost always useless. You very yeah. rarely get good value out of it. I mean, I mean the only value you want to get the good is good value is never that high because you consume the unit. But yeah, you want you to take uh you want to get the spearmen so you can get military tactics boost. And that's, well, that's only true. if that's, that's only if you get the whatchamacallit uh if there's another warrior that spawns. Yeah, so if you can get yeah. two units, like it it's not useless, it's just rare that you get like a really good one. Yeah, but <laughs> that's that's the highlight. Yeah. Uh, I say it's uh it just feels bad. I think it's like a meh. Yeah, it's one of those but, things yeah. where, like, yeah. the best... Shoot, I would like to play Genghis over that, maybe. The best know. way to play Kin Unifier is to straight up not do an encampment opener, which is, like, right. insane. It's just to pretend that that bonus doesn't exist, play <laughs> around the others, and then later in the game, third era, now you get yeah. in the Renaissance era, you take the new dedication for bonus yields on encampment buildings, uh, Drums of War, you build all of your encampments and encampment buildings everywhere, but it's like, but yeah, it's just so late to turn on as a bonus exactly. versus just Kublai, who's just better version of the China. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna play it that way, yeah, you'll it's always gold heavy too, because you have to build barracks for the slots. Yeah, 
Although in which is why we're saying like yeah that that strat even though it's built to be a an opener is still just not competitive with the classic vanilla yeah. commercial hub opener. All right, uh, Ramses. So it's just Egypt again. Plays very very similarly to the other Ramses. I'm fine to just slam them in reliable next to a uh, or slam them in reliable next to the weaker Cleopatra. I think that's fair. Yeah, I mean his bonus is uh, even. In my opinion, a little worse. Yeah, I'd probably but... put him just below the Cleopatra. The yeah. worst one. Um, I'd, I'd probably put him next to frickin' a- Inca. I don't know. He is fair. just... He he's doesn't just kind of yeah. meh. I mean, 25% production towards the Wonders and Districts on build uh, and Rivers is, is good. So if you play him like a vanilla sieve there, it's good tempo, but then it does fall off. Uh, then the wonder building thing is just not good enough to really be huge. Yeah. Yeah. And for the culture to translate into, I think the other yield to yeah. scale them. Yeah. 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 I can just drop them next to Inca, lower than Di- Dido, just above Inca. Still has most of what makes Egypt good, but his leader bonuses aren't as good as the others. Yeah. Um. Now, Scotland, who I know is very good, but I have never personally played. Uh, he's, he's very strong. Amenities are strong. Yeah. Yeah. In the golf I think he's very strong. Yeah. Probably not as good since they nerfed the overall yields of amenities from 20% to 16%. Um, just as a system wide nerf to being happy. Yeah. Uh, but I, I would say when there's a system wide nerf, it's like, it's like the same for every sieve because every yeah. sieve is getting affected by the amenity hit. Right, he gets he affected gets a little sooner. bit more, but not. It's still a good. Bonus I mean, I mean, yeah, it's I mean, happy sooner. between happy and ecstatic. I mean, he's happy and ecstatic, whether it's one percent or a hundred percent. I mean, he gets more great people points. Well, that's true. That part, yeah, yeah. Their great person yeah. points are kind of crazy. I constantly see Scotland's like massively overshooting the required great scientist points for the first renaissance era one and then just double taking mm-hmm. it's like oh i didn't run a single project like yeah wow. i do see that a lot i see uh yeah i don't see a ton of them missing goldens but they don't have a lot of easy golden bonus just like xp on their scouts helps a bit uh yeah i think he's i think he's situationally very strong to below Menelik. I don't know. Yeah, I mean yeah. he's a he's a good sieve, but at the same time, like he kind of does require a little bit of a, his spawn working with him and stuff for the campuses. Like he doesn't have any innate campus adjacency; he just has a multiplier off of the science. So if you don't have campus adjacency, you're kind of like, <laughs> you know, it's like, what are you doing here? And then I mean, you can do commercial free ink setup just fine, but not necessarily better than any other sieve. Yeah, uh, just free amenities is like really nice. Extra scientist and and get their engineer points both, you know, very good to have. Yeah, tends to scale very well. Science but... and protection are great. Um, I want to point something out. Uh, it's easy to think that like, oh, this would be a Colosseum rush sieve. It's kind of redundant unless you go really wide. You're usually ecstatic without Colosseum. True. So it's like. Some people over, like, a lot of weaker and newer players will, like, overcommit to going Coliseum every time they pick Scotland, and it's like, you don't need to do that. You, If you can hit plus five without Coliseum, you don't need to bother. Yeah, I think Colo is just, it's a feel-good wonder. Like, when you get, when you, every time you build it, you just feel good. And you're, you're glad you built it, and then you just don't have to worry about amenities. So just yeah. bottom of very strong, maybe still a good save. He's mm-hmm. still definitely good. I'd put him, yeah, around around there, because especially since the changes, there was a time when he needed to high roll his luxes, but now that they made the golf courses come so early, he doesn't really need to high roll luxes anymore. Yeah, mm-hmm. he just gets the bonuses. Yeah. Okay, next one, Saladin Vizier. I think Nate, you're the expert on the sieve. Mm-hmm. Probably in situationally broken somewhere, like he can he can out the gate 
to just outpace everyone in stats. Um, with the right spawn, he kind of needs some gold chance somewhere, which isn't always easy. And I mean, yeah, I don't know if the Civ has super consistent, guaranteed, like god tier campuses. Um, the unique, like the Madrasa comes so early that it's like super easy to get like printing boosts and stuff if you want to go for that wonder. Um, but also just like you just get the Bassa anybody else uh, as far as universities. So you tend to just have good faith, good science. 20% bonus to your yields is like super nice bonus. And the fact that like the second that you're done building your temples, which obviously you rush, so it's pretty quick, you get a really high value like tempo swing. So that's like, it's a little later than like Rome's like free monument the second you settle, but like the value on those things is usually at like 100 prod. So it's like 100 free prod per city, even though it comes later. Um, you got like some tempo from the free profit points, so like that. I think the real reason it's so strong though is just like the science meta that we're in, like uh, yeah. text being so important. It's but, like, yeah, zero blue city state games. Not only if like a host is ruling, like oh, there'll only be like one blue city state this game. It also increases the number of white city states. So, like, yep. you, if you're putting a worship building in every city, you're probably getting a lot of yields from the white city-states. You're able to get away with not even going free inquiry because you can't really fit that many commercial hubs into a build where you have to spam a ton of holy sites right. and campuses. But it doesn't matter because your science is so high. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I've found this sieve actually... Um, is possibly almost always, but oftentimes best played with pen brush. Uh, might sound weird, but Jesuit education pen brush is actually giga good on the sieve. Yeah, because it's the early you, university, right? Exactly, because the university gives faith for adjacency, and you're running the science adjacency card pretty early, like very early. So, I mean, you can get like 14 faith out of the university. So it's like a simming buy anyways um and you have a way to spend all your faith because you want to evangelize your belief you also want to buy your you want to build the campuses at least get the discounts so you're buying stuff then you get gold out of the pen brush and i mean the pen brush is making it so that your holy sites basically are like choral music for the shrine level and then by the temple level like typically it's like you've got a campus so it's at least you're not quite fully behind you at four culture instead of six total culture but you do get some more gold so it's really not bad um because you have so many ways to spend your faith and then i mean you can do just about any timing play the game like you have really good from mamluks all the way up to through cursiers to bombers or something um yeah but yeah. i don't know it's like super hard to push because you have so much science early like if they don't go like right at classical and uh, tech is just so important. I think it's just giga good. All right. Um, now, what do you think about uh, the meaner version of Saladin? Sultan. Mm. FFA, mm -hmm. like you, so you have all the same things as the other Saladin, but you don't have 20% bonus towards stats or the free 100 prod for free later. Yeah. You're sacrificing all of that for the plus hundred percent support and flanking, and I think support and flanking is kind of too hard to to utilize properly. I mean, we've um, all seen the meme screenshots of like warrior monks that have seventy combat strength turn forty with this. Have you seen right. like it stacks like multiplicatively or something with a warrior monk promo that gives it double flanking bonuses that so you get like silly numbers? Uh, it's a good meme. Probably not a good strategy for winning the game. If you go Warrior Monk Religion on the Civ, uh, I doubt yeah, you're getting first. You're, you're sacrificing your first for sure. Um, I mean, I don't think it's terrible. I think it's probably better than people tend to think it is because the Madrasa is still good. 
having the ability to set up even with like let's say Zen, if you don't necessarily have to hold full commit to holy sites on the Civ, but you can still commit to a setup. You know, two good hol- two holy sites and a gov plaza you can you can get some nice campuses. Um, so like that's something, mm. but you kind of still need to. Like, I've seen people like test that out. I haven't tested that out myself. I've seen it in team games and stuff, and it's done fine. But like, it's kind of like got the warp sieve problem where like you kind of have to fight somebody to make any use of it. It's like, yeah, you could go memlux, I guess. But yeah, I'm not a fan. And maybe in what situationally good? Not maybe very. not even. Maybe, maybe not even like what's the situation where it's better than Nubia, or I mean than like Black Queen. All right, yeah, okay, we can drop it down to Meh. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe it was more situationally good back when uh, scouts and stuff could give flanking and support, but they can't. So yeah, uh, for the for the naval fights, because then it would be like kind of a it was kind of a god tier naval civ, but uh, now it doesn't even have that. Yeah, that was. So, very silly. Yeah. Um. So Sejong. next up, yep, Sejong. Uh, this Civ was completely broken when he was on double your science for Terranus culture, and he's still pretty solid, even though they cut that bonus in half. Uh, yeah. I never play him much myself. I know he's like very very good on highlands just korea in general is fantastic on highlands because you can easily get like a ton of mines around your uh campuses you can find better spots for them mm-hmm. uh anything else you want to weigh on them uh i mean i imagine him and seon duck are a lot closer now since the nerf haven't really touched them since either but like he was one of the best in the game before the nerf and the nerf is still like culture equal to your science is still a lot of culture so i mean i definitely think when he used what he used to beat cultural sieves that aren't like greece to fascism timing now he'll probably tie them <laughs> yeah like I, I still think he's very good yeah yeah to he's make definitely it- very strong make it clear the thing that makes Sejong so strong is um like once he reaches the modern era on like 300 science okay he gets instant burst of 300 culture then he puts up labs he reaches the atomic era and uh then immediately after the information era back to back on like 800 science per turn and immediately he's in a tier 3 government like no matter how bad his culture is like you just back to back two new eras on 800 science per turn you get like so, so much, much culture, and uh, the other thing about that too is so it kind of like when you have something like that, you get to ignore your theaters, or maybe you get one, so you get to like <laughs> basically have a district slot when we're talking about that kind of stuff, which is huge for simming, um, because it means you can go more industrials and more commercials and everything, and then uh, the other thing is like any good player is also going to manipulate it. So, especially in those later game ones, like, you purposefully lock all specialists, and you can even go so far as run projects the turn that you're about to take into the new era (laughs) to get even more culture out of it. So, yeah, it's a very, very strong ability. Uh, Where do you think it should go? Just very strong? Somewhere in here? Yeah, up in Trajan, right? Strong, yeah, somewhere around Trajan. Trajan, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um. All right. Next up, the other Korea. I'd get uh, that one. Probably say... reliable. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh. I mean, really, she's she is worse, but not by that much. Um. I mean, it's three percent. You know, science and culture. Right, which means you focus on science and culture if you want. I mean, if you want to, if you want to focus on culture, right? You're gonna to have to build culture, otherwise, the three percent sucks. Yeah, and that's right. per I mean, tier. Brush and stuff like you tend to have quick districts on that civ, but 
I think on Korea, like Sandok, I'd just build like two discounted theaters next to those Sewans instead of ignoring. So like you do have less tempo. Um, and that's kind of the sacrifice of playing the Civ to still get to your timing. But uh, the good thing is half price campus, good. A lot of value out of that campus, like for rationalism cards and stuff, the fact that you can basically guarantee a plus three or better campus every single city makes rationalism super good. And uh, the free science on the mines on top, it's nice. Uh, discounting tends to be quite a good play pattern for both Koreas. Um, and like just science is giga good. I don't know. I, I think she's, I don't know, definitely a couple notches down from Sejong, but. Definitely still like a lot of those other things that is highlighted are still very mm -hmm. important. Like the those are like the baseline of what makes Sejong good. And then he has the culture bonus, which puts him over the top to actually be very strong. Okay. But like the baseline of Korea is still a pretty good baseline. Maybe just dump this bottom of very strong or top of reliable, one or the other. I think top of reliable in my opinion. Yeah, maybe maybe top of reliable, that's fine. Yeah. <clears throat> All but right. I think I would have her over goal, yeah. Um, Let's go no. to Crypto. Back. Here we go. Crypto. Oh, God. Yeah. How do you get in here? Do we actually have to Crypto in here? No, oh. you whack job. You play Zulu. He's a Zulu enjoyer. Yeah, He always okay. gets it. I um, put straight into bad, and I think we can move on. Okay. <laughs> um, no, that, that's the next sieve you're thinking of. <laughs> okay, don't get ahead of yourself. Now, um, one thing I have to say about Zulu in this meta is he's way better with the new dedication being added in the third era. You generally don't take it until um the Renaissance era. So you'll go pen brush and then you'll go uh free inquiry with like some big commercial hubs, and then you go um drums of war and you just obliterate somebody with tanks. Because you have right. and you have an Akonda in like every city. You build three buildings in all of them because your buildings give extra gold and culture. And then Drums of War just rewards you for playing like normal, like a ton. Yeah. I mean, I could see like around that timing, you can have armies when everyone else has cores. So you have a plus seven combat strength timing. And then you're producing with Drums of War bonus as well as the Akonda plus. Um, Wait, doesn't your cores in uh mil in your armies they receive plus two, right? Was that national mobilization and mobilization? Just mobilization. it's just plus two at mobilization. That's it. Yeah. So, but that means, but that mobilization, if you, then you would already be able to make armies. So it's not really a, it's a actually worse timing than just the timing at national. So. Yikes. Um. Yeah. So that's why I don't like about Zulu is that it doesn't actually scale like crazy. But uh, as far as building the units you have the 25 percent discount on cores and armies in the akana and akanda and then you also have it again on the military academy so with drums of war in that third era and like i said probably yeah i mean depending on timings most likely the other people won't be at mobilization yet and you wouldn't either quite be yet so you have a little bit of time to have like plus seven and then a massive outproduce i think it's yeah. fine but and, uh, I don't necessarily think it's like top tier by any means because it is a timing thing. So you kind of kill, you kill that one guy, and then I mean the, the mass producing can really be a big deal if you have enough strategics. And again, I have to mention this: like Chandra Gupta, his bonus twenty five percent reduced cost on corpse and armies stacks additively with a military academy, so he does get right. half off on every it corpse and army he makes. Yeah, which is a huge deal. That. Um. Really strong, obviously not as good as Chandra Gupta. He's only getting plus two combat strength. Chandra gets three and plus one movement and plus one sight and has better yeah. simming bonuses. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I'd, I'd put Zulu probably a situation. I don't know, like, uh, maybe it, it would be above strong, like it, near mass. He'd be above Alexander, yeah. in my opinion. He'd be yeah. around that ranking, though. Yeah, he'd similar be pretty similar in the play style and what makes them good slash bad but he can i mean of those civs he definitely can outproduce them all yeah for for war units 
He doesn't oh, get double XP like Caesar. He doesn't get all of the free snowball stats like uh, Macedon does. But he does get a ton of extra production from, um, you know, towards corpse and armies. And he has mm -hmm. a plus two combat bonus, which is not nothing. Uh, it's definitely not an unstoppable push. Like, there are some much better pushes we put higher up. Obviously, Basil and Aztec with high bonuses. Chandragupta's push is, like, insane. Uh, Gorgo, Fascism, like, these blow anything Zulu can do out of the water. Yeah. I'll let you guys cover the next couple. I gotta take a break for a second. Okay, this next one's gonna That's be good. really hard. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> BRB. <laughs> we got a real challenge. We made the right. tier just for him, I think. Okay. Uh, so, this Civ, uh, it's bad. Uh, all of the problems that the other Mali has... Uh, but none of the benefits. The fact that he doesn't get gr like great brighter points from his markets is kind of insane to me. Like this dude has all of his bonuses revolve around great works of writing, but then he doesn't get any free great writer points. He still has to make theater squares and get the great writers himself on a sib with a twenty percent production malice. Yeah, in the desert. Which already has less production. Yeah, I mean, this yeah, is good just luck. bad. It's, it's just straight up the worst Civ in the game right now. Easily. Yeah. Um, so, Grand Columbia. Uh, one of these, like, pure war civs. They did just buff his unique tile improvement. It's now actually, like, decent. You get it, um... And now gets bonus prod for every adjacent one at mercantilism that used to happen at what, like rapid deployment or something? <laughs> yeah, comical. rapid deployment. So stupid. That was so dumb that it was like that. But yeah, now it's actually a useful thought improvement. Uh, but by and large, this is like pure war civ. Right. Yeah, he doesn't really have any real sim bonuses. Like, technically, you can get what a trade route capacity off of one of the generals, but it's pure RNG. Yeah. Um, um. Yeah. Obviously, the arrows are pretty decent push. They're like okay. The main thing is just having the free general for everything is good because that means you can use it. I think on even GDRs, but you can use it on like uh, what are like they call like helicopters armors. and modern armors, which basically yeah. nobody else can get a general for. But then we're talking about getting to an extremely late point in the game without a sim bonus. Um, you can do it. But it's not really ideal. Yeah, I would maybe drop it down. It's not reliable. Maybe situationally good. Yeah, yeah, I'd say situationally good. Like it can, it has moments to shine still. Um, but like the fact that the movement is also delayed yeah. to political nowadays, huge difference. I would uh, say back when it used to have better scouting, it actually bumped it up by quite a bit because it's more error score and it's more, you know more tempo but yeah yeah i would say, say next to black queen seems fair to me yeah that seems fair i'd put them around the same kanuni kanuni okay now we're getting some fun civs this is my most played civ in cpl mm -hmm. um yeah kanuni absolutely amazing late game monster both the ottomans just because the grand bazaar is the best unique building in the game Yep. Yep. Um, it's a bank that gives a trade route capacity and amenities and extra strategics, and you get a free governor title when you construct your first one. Like it's actually unreal how much value you get out of Grand, Grand Bazaar. Whereas other saves will put like a commercial hub in all of their early cities, and then maybe later they'll opt for like different districts. Like if they're tenth city, maybe they'll put down a plus three campus first, and you know never build a commercial hub there. Ottomans, you want a commercial hub in every city, no matter what, to get a Grand Bazaar. Um, people tend to be very friendly to you in terms of diplomacy because you have double trade route capacity, right? You, like, feed your allies so much that people tend to bend over backwards to ally you. Yeah, you have, like, the opposite of what normally people have, but, like, still works the same way. It's, like, the worst if some of them have, like, People be friendly because they don't want you to war them. This is they're friendly because they want you to send them traitors. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's actually so good that the way that that works out for him because he would be pretty defensive slowly, but nobody's going to attack into you when they can just get double free traders later. It's just not yeah. worth it. Yeah, it's like so good to have that assurance when you're playing a Civ that has like no early tempo. Just the fact that people get, tend to be very gentle with you and tend to um ally yeah. you to get the bonus. You know, I've won one, maybe even two games on the Civ when missing first golden. Like, I would say, like, <laughs> oddly enough, yes, it does have the golden problems, but I think if recovery is so strong, you might still, like, it doesn't even hinder it entirely. Because, like I said, like, because people aren't trying to just jump on you like Germany, they, like, want you to be their ally. Like, you tend to still yeah. be okay. Um, Some other things that make it insane. Uh, First off, the siege bonus unit... The siege unit bonuses are quite useful. Um, mm -hmm. Conquering cities, not losing population, it makes you snowball Huge. like crazy off of a kill. They also gain a plus one amenity and loyalty, so you never have to worry about that. Yeah, and if you're using it with the governor, <sighs> yeah, and you the mow through the cities with plus 15 siege bombard strength, and uh, you're keeping the cities at full the full population with an amenity like it's so good yeah the governor the so the two promotions that we really care about are uh one is plus 10 combat strength against city centers within 10 tiles yeah 10 tiles and then plus uh one movement for all friendly units within 10 tiles that's military and civilian units yeah. um very very good promotions and you get a free governor title when gunpowder is unlocked and a free governor title from building the grand bazaar so like this governor does not set you back you just spend your yeah. extra governor titles on him it doesn't at all and then like situational but just cherries on top janissaries extremely cheap very good and debris corsairs also extremely powerful in the right spots yeah um janissaries one of the best pushes in the entire game, and it's because they are dirt cheap. They have plus five right, combat strength FFA, compared to a musket. Super important. So, like, you have 60 strength muskets that start, start with, with a promo. free promotion. Yeah. Um, they cost next to nothing. The gold cost of upgrading a man at arms to a Janissary is five. The reason for this is because they can't set it to zero. Five is the minimum. And Janissaries cost less production than men at arms. Like, what? These are literally yeah. cheaper than men at arms, but of course they consume a population when you train them. So the way you use them is you pre-build a ton of warriors and then you upgrade them to Janissaries for like very low amounts There's, of gold. There's I think sixty gold with the card from warrior all the way to the musket yeah, from replacement. Which swordsman is, is thirty gold to go to Janissary and warrior is like sixty. Yeah, and normally like for a lot of civs, the difference is going to be, um. Oh, it's 40 gold is for it, Warriors. Is it really 40? Well, but yeah, normally it's what? It's like 150 or something crazy from the from the Warrior to the Musket. I'm not sure yeah. exactly. Also, it's um, a good amount. if you're killing somebody with Janissaries, one of the nice things about this Civ is uh, your Grand Bazaars are going up in your cities. You're getting a ton of gold. It only costs 240 gold to buy a new Janissary. And in cities you've conquered, they don't cost pop. So you can yeah, just, so you just buy them on the front line. Just buy them on the front line. Um, you can mix and match their promotions. Like, do half with one side of promotion, half with the other. Then when you hit nationalism, you form them all up so that they all get, like, both sides of the promotion tree. All of your cores. Um, yeah, Janissaries. Crazy, crazy good. Very strong unit, yes. And then, yeah. lastly, I want to mention GDRs. Um, this Civ is so good at using giant death robots because you get a ton of extra uranium from Grand Bazaars. Yep. And Which then is huge. And then get... the gold buy, because you have the most gold income in the game. Yeah, you're going to be Which like gold 2k gold so per turn. GDR timing. So like, you have 2k gold per turn, so what you do is you just don't buy anything for 5 turns. You have over 10k gold on the turn you unlock GDR, boom, five. you just like gold buy like 5 GDRs. And you just run somebody over. And democracy will give you like a four, but yeah, it's still like you just, yeah, it's so much. Yeah. I think, honestly, it's probably the best, uh, one of the best type of ICs, like on the top, broken. Yeah, I I really like Kanuni. 
Um, but it doesn't have some... any uh, ancient era bonuses for gold and though. Yeah. It does not. But we were talking about this. I don't know, dude. I've won a couple of games, Papa. I've won for sure that I can remember. I'm pretty sure two. Two games on this, so I'm fairly certain when I missed the first goal. And I've because also won the games recovery is just so strong. Mm hmm. And because we were talking about this earlier, nobody wants to attack you, even if you miss Golden. They still know you're going to end up sending them double traders, and they want that. Mm -hmm. So they would rather just leave you alive and let you send them traders. Also, uh, another thing, when playing the Civ, you can't neglect culture. You want really good culture, you just build it out. Democracy is super yeah, important. Yeah, democracy now. is enormous. Plus four food and plus four production on every trade route when you have, like... Pretty insane. On free sim, you're sitting there with, like, uh, 26 trade route capacity. You haven't even conquered somebody yet. It's, like, it's Plus insane. six, plus six, yeah. That's pretty nuts. It's, like, a plus eight. It's a... Oh, yeah, yeah. What did it say? Six... And whistle banking yes, and then but like okay. the, it should be around eight more food and prod per city. Also, if you can't win the game, if you end up having to play for second, um, like you get so much free score because cities don't lose population when you conquer them. You get way more score than most people do from conquering civs. Like it's noticeable. Yeah, and also even just in games when I've had to like find other ways to get score, just like building sellers and like gold buying stuff in new cities and stuff like you just have tons of resources for that so the question is where does this go um i um, could put it at the top like near the top of situationally broken i could even see myself putting it in broken it's so it's the lack of the um ancient era golden or ancient era era score I, well, that like makes yeah. it not super that's broken. true, but the thing is, I think if you're looking for a Civ to, to place you really high, which I think is what we're talking about here, I think it's real good. Like, it doesn't have the tempo that a lot of the Civs in Situation Broken have, but it has guaranteed late game, like you said, like uranium, oil, these really important things for the super late game. It has everything you need from uh, extra ways to get score, increased gold, increased strategics, um, just so much stuff for the late game that like it's made to to be a monster and like you're always gonna do well if you survive and like there's really not a when was the last time that you even saw somebody warring with Kanuni early that he yeah. didn't start like yeah, hardly ever people, like, like maybe it's the way people's them. meta is and their their <laughs> mindsets that's partly influencing this but because of their mindsets he's just god tier I think yeah um also i just don't think he has a simming bonus i mean he has a simming bonuses but he doesn't have the uh i don't know he i think he's below below i think he's like situationally broken but like the last one because of uh he needs to get time to ramp up and get there he gets so much um science and culture from his trade routes though which is something that's like easy to overlook one thing uh, i've done on him is you can actually go straight for capitalism. You get the Eureka for it for two uh stock exchanges, yeah. Two two stock exchanges. You can rush it without even grabbing scorched earth first. And then if you're on like 30 trade route capacity, that policy card is giving you like a hundred gold over a hundred gold per turn, sixty culture, sixty science on one policy card. Yeah, it's a pretty gnarly card. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> um I don't know, it's it's definitely in here somewhere. Yeah, it's definitely in the category for sure. I, I, I just think, I don't know. I don't know. Say, I if you do miss golden, you, and like if you compare it to the other civs in there, right? If they all miss golden, or what? Like, well, you can't even say they all miss golden because you know like some Kree's of them have bonuses. Missing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Most if, of the I other civs so. here don't miss golden as easy like he misses golden the, the easiest of all of those sits in the yeah. category and, but and, he also and let's say he can't come better. i can't say he doesn't like you know get great stats but i'm saying like it's gonna hurt compared to like the other if yeah. those other sits are in the lobby right and he misses golden and they of course make golden you know i don't know yeah also yeah. i want to point out the um we've talked about like how some of these sits like Zulu can outproduce people at war. Like, 
Ottomans outbuys people at war. You get so much gold to buy like planes and stuff with. Yeah. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah, definitely late game he's amazing, but like right in the ancient era where he can get right. he's got no outscaled bonuses. a little bit with you know with the culture. Okay. And the gold. Like I'll, it's it takes a hit, but I'll but leave yeah, him here sure. with the caveat yeah. that he the unreliability of your first golden age is like the only reason. That, that's huge. That's that what's holding him back from being yeah. broken. Yeah. yeah. If he had era score, if he had, like, if he had a unique like... ancient era like archer or something like I don't know, anything or that like helps him defend. Yeah. Well, yeah, but the defense I think would even be a nice bonus, but yeah. Yeah. Just and... anything to help him get golden for sure would be nice. And like maybe some sort of extra defensive bonus. If imagine if he had like a trading dome like type of improvement or something. Oh okay. god. That now, would be kind of cool. <laughs> now, uh this one, the other Suleiman, um very similar. Uh the only difference is you don't get the unique governor, so your push isn't as good and you don't have janissaries. Also, right. you get extra stats for free. Yeah. And if you do miss golden, then <laughs> only if they also miss golden, which means typically it's not going to be very valuable because people that pick on you are going to be the people that are further ahead. Uh so not usually very valuable for defending. Um, one really but great strat on the Civ. Uh, all of my neighbors who pick the Civ always do it. You declare war and use the scouts in the Ancient Era. They always get plus four combat strength because neither player can be in a Golden Age in the Ancient Era. So then you just yeah. run around pillaging all of my tiles. That's what they always do to me. In teamers. Right? <laughs> in, in FFA. In FFA. <laughs> it happened to me once and it traumatized me. Plus so. four scout. I, a plus I didn't four think scout. Of that. Yeah, it's actually so annoying in the yeah. ancient in... era that they always have plus four. He actually became very meta in duels because of that, too. Or not duels, uh, 2v2s. Because people would go first era, like they would literally go warrior and um, archer rush people with the plus four. Oh yeah. Um, some other thing that somebody mentioned oh. about Ottomans. Uh, if you get like University of Saint Gore, that's like, oftentimes oh, more yeah. than thirty science uh, per turn. Yeah, it's one super wonder. good. And an extra trade route capacity too, right? Yep. But yeah. Uh, well, yeah so that's it factored in probably around thirty. I put this guy up uh, only like maybe a little bit below Kanuni, but still yeah. here. Yeah. I would put him below, but in the same category as well. I think the. On average, the stats aren't as good as the governor because the governor can help you get those extra cities as well to get a lot for more stats. Like, it's just better. yeah, Janissaries are also kind of a broken and unit. Janissaries are good, and he that guy gets an extra, um, Kanuni gets an extra good, like, free yep, governor title. Yeah, yeah, um, Jamar. also. One mm. more thing about Ottomans, uh, you can just like role play Hungary. You can do levy pushes with Janissaries because city states make a ton of warriors and upgrading them costs oh, true, nothing. True. I've done that before. And you can even put Gary. uh you can yeah. put the guy in the governor into uh nearby cities as well. Alright. Um up. so next one up tomorrow. Uh Pretty reliable mm -hmm. Civ. It's not as badly hit by the um current like free inquiry meta as some of the other religious civs are because you don't really need to go that many holy sites in this civ. You can go like right. it's possible to go like one or two holy sites only and then um found like what's their religion? Jesuit education Jesuit, and, and papal uh, primacy. Papal. Yeah, 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 that's papal the primacy. typical one. Yeah, it gives you really good city-state control, so it's, like, largely a matter of what the city-states you have available are. Because mm -hmm. um, you, you can control basically every city-state in the game at some point. It's the best city-state control any city mm -hmm. has. It's better than even Norway, like the Harold Varangian. It's better than uh, Heracles, Hungary. Oh, yeah. Civ is mega broken, like with the certain amount of cities. If you get like an Ayutthaya early Sus, you literally can go for um, what is it? Uh, social media, and what is the other one above there with the telecommunications boost? It's before tier four government, but it gives you plus five percent uh, science and then plus five percent culture. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
and you can actually I have rush done that before. You can rush like, that kill blood like, stuff too. It's so oh, gross. it's so gnarly. Like if you do that, chop out Oracle, get all the books that you need to. Just have massive culture early. Yeah, it's actually scary. We talked about uh, hitting Golden Ages. Uh, they're completely <laughs> free on Georgia. Like you get the first one with your unique building and founding a religion, and mm -hmm. then. You get everyone after that very easily. Yeah, and no one can test Jesuits or Papal. Maybe Jesuits if they're like you know, like a Spain or like some kind of crazy. They usually Saladin don't player. go it as quick as Tamar yeah. does. But yeah, yeah. I um, guess a Saladin build would, but yeah. Some yeah. other nice things: if you first meet any city state, you no longer need to run the God King policy card to get your Pantheon because every envoy yep. gives plus one faith. You mm -hmm. could kill a barb for some extra faith yeah. too. Killing a barb. That is very nice. So uh, yeah. I, I always rush walls first and that's a I always Yeah, nobody ever bothers you too because of the walls. At least. Right, yeah, later. walls, cowsters are ridiculously strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean you're very defensive. You're always gonna do pretty well. Scaling doesn't really have anything in the sieve for scaling other than the the city states, but city states are just very powerful, so um, maybe I think very it's got strong. good scaling. Work. Consistently yeah. hitting goldens because of your just who you are. Like it's. I would say definitely in the very strong somewhere. Like, I don't know, Hirsch. Throwing it in there. Yeah. I, I, uh, maybe yeah, below it all. I don't know. I put above Gilga. Yeah. My that's just how I play it though. I don't know. I I love Tamar. Yeah. I yeah. Tamar, I think, I think so. Tamar is very good. It, it definitely depends on the uh, city states. I had a sib spotlight on the sib where I went, um, what was it? I did a Nihang push from using Lahore's city state bonus, and I also had Preslov. So I was like killing somebody on the complete opposite side of the map with a, um, first I levied, killed one city, and then I just bought a billion Lahang, Nihangs in that city. Nice. And it was very fun. Um,. Yeah, next Civ. Uh, if Tamara is one of the most consistent Civs in the game, here we're getting one of the least consistent Civs in the game. Uh, Petty Bulbas. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's part of the reason why situationally very strong exists. Uh, biggest high roll. And then, uh, what, he, probably he's like the only guy who's beating Portugal in the high roll, low roll. Game. Yeah. It's like, yeah. It, I almost feel like there should be an even more variable here because it's like he's almost situationally broken, but his low rolls are like actually horrible. Like he basically loses all of his bonus Civ bonuses. Sim. Yeah. He can I, legit have nothing. He does not deserve to be in the same tier as these Civs that we put up in situationally broken on account of the fact that his average spawn is nowhere near as good as theirs. But it can it's be true. as good. He can spawn with a like god spawn. I think uh, when Jack made a tier list last time, he put this guy in his own casino. <laughs> his, uh, I I think uh, we might have to make like a casino tier. It's actually yeah. insane. I'll put it yeah. between situationally broken and very strong. Uh, but yeah. I don't He's, know, total uh, coin flip. His spawn turn one changes how the game is so crazy. It's insane. But I mean, with the right spawns, I mean, we've all seen Midnight's stats and screenshots. Like, mm -hmm, the yeah. Civ can be disgustingly good. But, obviously, just, yeah, you, know, you then you spawn, spawn can with... also be jungle and, and, uh, <laughs> and flip planes, and then your internet goes out. So, I, mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> And if you don't have Teddy Bull Moose's bonuses, like America's innate bonuses are like very underwhelming. All of American, all the uh, American leaders have like very strong leaders to compensate for the fact that the actual Civ is not that impressive. Yeah. So, yeah, that's true. Um, film studios also crazy good on Teddy Bull Moose if you're going for a fast, greedy uh, culture yeah. victory. Uh, Mustangs are also perfectly Mustangs. up there for defending. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, you have to get there first, <laughs> which is why the the dice roll is a big deal. But yeah, if the dice roll goes well, both of those two do synergize really well with him. Okay, other the other Teddy, um, 
Petty Rough Rider. Uh, this guy, I mean, this is one of the most generic. He's a very vanilla combat bonuses. Yeah, as far as a war sip goes, it doesn't get more basic than this. The um, Envoy sent a city state bonus. It's not really worth sending a trade route to a city state just to activate this bonus most of the time. If it's like, if you it's want to, really if it's a really powerful state. one, maybe do like Amani externals. But it's, uh, it has to be like a Joe Berg or like a, an Ayutthaya or something uh, of mega value. Yeah, ideally Kumasi, yeah. so you're getting extra yield. Yeah, if it's Kumasi, too. then, you know, the more the merrier, right? To that. And then you just have like a million freaking envoys in there. But yeah. um, I don't know. I don't see. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, it can be really good, but that's so. I struggle so on culture with a sieve like yeah, a lot I mean, because I... you're trying to do a really good timing on your rough riders and making sure that they're not even towards metal casting or gunpowder yet, and then you can just mow down somebody. But getting golden, the first and uh, the third era is impossible. It feels like because you're just so focused on the push, but. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. The first era is pretty rough. If you don't get the first era, you are hit very yeah, hard. True. And you, yeah, you, you have no bonus yeah. for the first era, well, other he... than, I guess, soothing city-state. You don't even have bonuses for second era for anything. True. Like, you, 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 you literally have just plus, well, when Rough Riders happen, plus three, plus four. It's plus four yeah, at four. Industrial and plus five at Modern. <laughs> yeah, now. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, that's all you have. You have yeah. no nothing towards simming. You have a freaking film studio and a P fifty one. I mean, the the combat bonus is nice. And one thing I've done before that was very powerful is the P fifty one Mustang rushing because they have five against fighters. If they do try to defend with them, and you have plus fives, so you have like plus ten fighters. Uh, yeah, it's that's unstoppable. Is, and then you get the promotion yeah, dogfighting, and you just it. yeah, yeah, but. It's just so long to go. Yeah, so War so Civ, no tempo. Really... I think next to Grand Columbia and Black Queen. I would take yeah. I would take Katarja. I mean Katar I would put it before Katarja. Because Katarja at least has like uh some like you have the God King that you don't have to run, right? You yeah. have um you have uh unique improvements. you, you just there's more to Katarja right. than there is. Katarja's there. A lot more consistent. I mean, obviously, Rough Rider has the kill potential, but like, you need to get there. Guitar Wait, why is Grand Columbia so low? Sure. What did I miss? Uh, <laughs> what did you plantation I mean, you know, bias? The the free generals, the yeah, the the, but, the 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 generals that you can pop that give you a free merchant uh, abilities. I mean, sometimes. those are random, but <laughs> but when they hit, they hit free governor title. That's true, but I mean, like the, the, the thing is. Guitars are good, right? But like, it's just kind of like it's it's a not you don't even have a war bonus like in so many games. Like you, we talked about it, like you can get helicopter general and uh, GDR general, and like it's good for modern armors, um, stuff like that. But like so many of the other times, they just have a general and you have a general and you just you have plus one movement. That's you don't have your to make a for it. That's the beauty about it. You make well, a you yeah, make you, a, you a camera here and there just uh, for a stockpile but later, like, but. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you're going for an early game not... war, you'll really mess up their sim you... if they force them to go for an encampment. But if you're going right. for an early game war, that's not a good way to play FFA. You, you, not... Well, you don't you don't go for early game war. You're just you negate early game war because you have general. No one pushes you ever. Yeah, but that's true mm -hmm. of most war civs. Yeah, like I mean, you have free general, right? You have plantations biased, haciendas, but blah, blah, whatever, right? And then you get plus one movement on your on all units. On military units after political philosophy, I mean this the civ actually has um, way it's, it's, it's not mean high roll it's like just good rolls for spawns right like it's, every the spawns time. are pretty good but the spawn like, don't have, we're talking about getting goldens too this civ has nothing for golden yeah I mean yeah it doesn't have any much it's the for same golden. as spy queen there and I mean if you do after after golden like what do you you're gonna fight somebody like we said. It's not a good idea to fight. So you're simming. Love Christina with literally for sure, nothing. dude. It's a and the thing is, like, you know, you're saying, "Oh, well, they're not attacking you," but it's not best to attack an FFA anyways. So, 
I mean, it's really, it's a low roll if you do get attacked on any Civ in FFA, because generally it's not the right move. So. I'm more scared of uh, Genghis Khan coming at me in the modern era than the Civ a lot of the time. At least he can get that one Diplovis merchant and actually, like, set up an amazing combat bonus. Whereas with Grand Columbia, his bonus is that he can get a general for helicopters and modern armor so other people can't, because those which is plus five, which the plus six would be the we just intel. Always got like really good spawns with him, like every single. I can't even think of a bad spawn that I've ever got with Grand Columbia, and I I'll, played a fair amount. I can move him up with respect to just his just just move just move good. him past Christina. Yeah, same. It could be the same tier, but top of situationally good because he has a good <laughs> spawn bias. We haven't talked about spawn that bias is, as much. It's true. Solid. All right, Theodora, let's go. Um. Okay, Theodora. Uh, I oh, yeah. don't have much guy. experience with her. Situationally broken below is at the last tier. Yeah, it, I think she's. I mean, she has a sim bonus, unlike Basil. Um, it's just not an incredibly good one, but it's something. She has fascism faster, right? So she does get something. It's it's decently valuable. It's a little something. Um, but then her war bonus is worse for it. You can't just hit through the cities. Now at the but last if you do bring spot, siege, though, I think it's, it's the last still, still murders them. So I don't know. I mean, it's yeah. good. I mean, you just you can go feed, have massive districts, and you just go sim heavy. But you do have to add siege for your composition, though. Right. But other than that, it's... So yeah, she doesn't mow through the cities quite as well. But like, mm -hmm. she does. I mean, if you do end up getting that combat strength and the fascists or not, uh, the crusades and stuff, I mean, you're still gonna kill a guy. Mm -hmm. Still good. Right. Um, Toku Tokugawa. Tokugawa is like very good civ, very self sufficient. Honestly, if he didn't have a coastal spawn bias, he would be like be possibly broken. broken yeah, yeah. The coastal spawn bias is a nerf to the civ. He has no bonuses to naval play whatsoever. No, no. So he just spawns with <laughs> less room for the no best reason. He's got so he can get the extra district in his camp. But, yeah, I mean, Civ is really, really good. Pain in the ass for anybody, even who's an ally with him. But, I mean, the, the Meiji Reg Restoration thing, super good already. Like, all the other bonuses for Japan are good. And then just the internal trader thing is crazy. Yeah. yeah. Is he very strong the situation they broken? Like, um, Probably, yeah. yeah I, think he's he's above above, I think he's above Gandhi. He's definitely above Gandhi. Uh, I think he's. He kind of has the. the we talked about Kanuni and how nobody wants to attack Ottomans. Uh, this is like the opposite effect, where it's like you know nobody what? wants you to be correct. this guy's friend. Yeah, nobody wants to be his friend. And some people, I mean, this is like CPL, FFA specific, but like I know Access is one of them, but I think there are actually some others that like to target this Civ as well, just for the fact that it's a Civ because they don't like it. Yeah, the lack of sending any external traders is always like a bummer. It feels like with other civs, you form an actual alliance, you know? You send trade routes, you help each other out. With Tokugawa, it's basically a glorified non aggression pact. Because they're never yeah. sending you a trade route. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty bad. Um, so, I mean, the, the but the bonuses on it are fine. And if people didn't care about that, that they weren't getting any back, then yeah, it would change things because. Those internals are crazy strong. Mm -hmm. Yep. But yeah, it's just, you know, it's a game with diplomacy as well. And since he doesn't really do that so well, he does get knocked down a bit from his. Maybe put him in very strong, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Put him I here. think he's good right there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Scythia. Um, Scythia. This is like the best. This is one of the best war bonuses. Mm hmm. It's like and so good. The uh, I mean, the spawns can actually give it quite a nice sim as well with the, the Kurgans. Yeah. Also, when they healing when they eliminate a unit, I'm pretty sure this stacks additively with the War Department, so you heal sixty HP. F like fifty. Mm -hmm. War Department gets twenty. It's but, twenty in the base game. I think BBG buffs War Department to thirty. No, it's still twenty. It is. But yeah, huh. but like fifty healing is still a ton. That's a it's lot. It's incredible with uh, any sort of decently high 
strength to you and even if they're even on text like you just yeah and you start running through with like a gdr or something dude like oh my god very scary if like out of all of the pure war sieves like very few simming bonuses. this has some simming bonuses like kurgans are fine um yeah but like this is like an incredible pure war sieve just for the merits of its combat Right, it's like better than Zulu and stuff in the combat strength. And um, I mean, when you're looking at the sim bonuses as well, another thing about it is, yeah, kind of not that much, but like, okay, so the Ukurians are are decent, right? Production, Pantheon, whatever. But then, uh, yeah, Free Chapel is dope. Somebody just mentioned. Super nice, actually, to have Free Chapel. And the fact that you can basically, like, every time I play this sim, I get a city state kill that I don't have to produce any horses for i just buy horses because i'm not going money mentality mm-hmm. so yeah. like kind of like one guaranteed free city and like with horses you can travel a decent distance you know if you need to for that city like one free city every game that you didn't really invest any raw production into that's pretty nice so as well as the kirkin bonus for gold and uh, production i have a question because i know that i've heard mixed responses for this do you ever go any holy sites on the sieve or do you just skip them uh um, the only time i've ever gone holy sites is when i found a relic early and i went reliquaries but that's it yeah i usually just go magnus internals and just ignore holy sites right i don't think there's yeah. any reason for holy sites because like things like jesuit and stuff don't make sense because you already have a way to spend faith um yeah, yeah. The only thing you might ever want is like pilgrimage bonus to get more faith. So you could do like uh like a Zen pilgrimage. But at that point you might even just want to go for Zen stewardship still. I don't know. And at that point it's the same as on any other city. Like it's spreading to the city to do the mega it's hard play, too. but it's not a Scythia specific play, you know. You can have to All buy right. missionaries and apostles to spread to the cities too. So and right, right. It's, it's gonna take forever. Any idea where we I put made this? the mistake by building a holy site. Yeah. I mean, <sighs> then where's my horse production, you know? Yeah. I'm not sure where we put this. It's probably better than a lot of these pure war sieves. It doesn't. I think mm-hmm. it's above. I think it's above. I think. I like uh, it above Kublai. I don't know. You say situationally strong? Yeah. I think it's. If it's situationally strong, it's above Aussie. Um, yeah, I, I think it's I think it's up there because the thing is it also like one of the problems with warses is if they are one dimensional warses, people know it's coming. But when you can sim and come at any timing because like the bonus works like that and the sim is good enough, I think you move up <laughs> by the raw nature of like the fact that you still can keep the element of surprise with the war bonus. Um like Scythian planes are really good. <laughs> Scythian tanks are really good, Scythian, you know everything like it you know <laughs> field cannons i don't know but yeah. <laughs> cursiers uh so yeah i don't know you could put it situationally very strong yeah maybe even so, very strong the sim bonuses are um like the kurgans are not that great for simming they're like pretty solid but yeah but they're out the gate yeah that's a nice thing you're also guaranteed your first golden age right you're much. guaranteed golden you start off strong you get that yeah. city state kill, and then I mean, I think this is a sieve that you kind of do want to start warring relatively early with because I yeah. don't know, like the the bonuses are just so good. Maybe like, like if you industrial find a course for timing, war? it's actually really good. Evil, yeah. Um, all right. Next up, Victoria. Uh, there's two Victorias. We'll do Age of Empire first. Uh, this sieve is way better. If you high roll like a continent split, you get extra trade route capacity for your first uh, city on each continent. Yep. I've seen people like spawn on like triple continent splits and they just get an obscene amount of tempo. If you spawn a triple continent split, you, this is like the best England. Yeah. Tempo. Yeah. And this it's is very nice. Goes, and also <clears throat> very good uh, depending on people's continents and stuff too. Yeah, I'd say it's a situationally very strong, maybe you could put it there. But I mean, it is reliably also very strong. Like, the reliability side of it is just, it's an England with all these other England bonuses, and it's got the extra admiral points, and it's got, you can always even a little bit later settle some another continent. Also, for later game. Too strong. Redcoats are really, really good. Mm -hmm. 
red coats are incredible. The other Englands don't have red coats, so that definitely works in its favor. Also, since they buffed medics in BBG, medics are really good with uh, red coat pushes now because they give them plus one movement. And they also come at uh, military science instead of requiring sanitation. Yeah. So yeah, uh, we're probably very strong somewhere in here. Maybe above Eleanor, England. Yeah, above Spain, maybe. Yeah, 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 somewhere around there. Yeah, I think somewhere that looks good. There. Yeah. Now we get free boats, free air score. Empire is really nice. It's just you're guaranteed everything. And the shipbuilding boost as well, so you don't even have to build the boats, so you can expand even further. It's nice. Okay. Next up is Age of Steam. Um, ten percent extra production saves for each factory and power plant, and plus one production on all improved strategics. Uh, I, mean, I it's, think it's I think it's right before it's the other England. I think it's before neck Spain, neck. but uh, it's if you high roll a bunch of horses early when you go animal husbandry, I mean. That could define your game right there. Yeah. But um, I don't know. You have to wait for your bonuses later. You still get the, it's an England. It's really strong. Um, I don't know. I, I always have a couple of horses, so it is, it does feel really good. Yeah, you can get a lot of extra tempo just from improving some horses. Uh, mm -hmm. I would like to point out that the um, bonus... What is it? The fact that it requires you to build industrial zones in all these naval cities where you might not have aqueducts that you can place in good spots. Like, it can be hard to get an industrial zone higher than four adjacency in a lot of your core cities. So you're not actually getting as much value out of that bonus as it might look. Yeah. I mean, yeah like, if you're but, placing I mean, a plus one industrial zone just for this, it's, it's sort of I mean, it's like it's ten production, ten percent for in the whole city generator, right? Right. Yeah. So it still works. I mean, it's, it's and then it's twenty percent. You could do a coal factory. Is, yeah. Yeah. Let's say it's a plus one, then the factory's four, and then the coal power plant or the the factory is three because it would have already got the power bonus, and then another one. So it's like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wait. Because you double the you double the adjacency for sure. You're gonna have that card in. It's like two for the base, plus four uh, four for the other thing. So it's like up to six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven prod, plus twenty percent prod in the city. It's not yeah. incredible, but it's, it gets, with yeah. the twenty percent prod, I think it's still, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, right? still it's still worth building. Yeah, yeah, it's still worth building. But it's 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 still something, right? I mean, I and guess that's it's a plus one. Yeah. But that not every city is going to have like the plus one, and and maybe it has plus three, plus four, and then you double that, or you just put oil power plants, and then you go from there, and that'll help out. So it just depends on what your city needs. Yeah. Also, yeah. being an industrial zone civ that spawns on the coast, you want to go for mausoleum every game. Um, you can get yeah. like mm -hmm. mausoleum with that great engineer that gives bonus uh yields from all factories like bonus production and then you go and vertical integration strong. magnus that's how you get these 400 production capitals that just bang out space projects instantly yeah yep yeah um, pretty good for science win pretty good for nuking and gdring mm -hmm. okay now we get to another interesting sieve uh canada um I think Canada is pretty consistent as far as culture victory sips go. You do have to uh, make the most out of your Mounties because they are like basically unpushable up until they get to like helicopters and planes, but then Mounties start like la like lacking. Right. But you have but like I mean, a then you're also yeah you're only waiting a few more turns for the CV. Yeah. Typically. People hate Canada because you can just win CV completely uninteractively. Yep. Like, yeah, there's get, never um, an opportunity to stop it sometimes. Yeah. I mean, the Civ is very powerful. Got, it has the win con potential. It has, I mean, just early game. It tends to have really good production. It's got bonus towards yeah, amenities. And then once you get the parks, guaranteed for sure amenities. Got yeah. Artemis, I mean, which got nerfed, but still is good. 
um, era score for being in Tundra. Every settle. Yeah. Um, Typically, you get city state first meets and like mm-hmm. access to like uncontested huts that people aren't quite scouting yet. Like you get to that tundra faster for those. Mm-hmm. There are some yeah. other nice things. Uh, you don't need to escort your settlers uh, against other players. They can't declare surprise wars on you. Saving so much gold in delegations. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Huge. <laughs> um. <laughs> Some Half price things. gold buying the tundra tiles. You can do mm-hmm. bounty pushes that are like brutally strong. Like you can have that is true. Earn sixty two mounties or whatever, and just completely ro- run somebody over. It's not every game. You need to have somebody who's right next to you who like you're not in an alliance with, assuming you're not backstabbing them. And then you have mm-hmm. to denounce. Usually, you denounce their ally so they don't see it coming. And then when you declare on their ally, they automatically get roped into the war. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I would put this either high and very strong, maybe even situationally broken, because there are times when, like, you just win the game and nobody else gets to play. Yeah, I think situationally broken is accurate because it has both high rolls and then also, like, high rolls on the the map location where people can't quite get to you in time, and, like, you just win. You just get first for being the Civ. I can put it, like, above Maori, maybe. Probably, yeah. Yeah, like sometimes it's... you just win on Canada. Uh, I it's one of my favorite of the civs that have really weird build orders. Also, there are other greedy culture victory civs that try to win fast. Teddy Bull Moose, uh, Christina. These civs are nowhere near as uh, hard to push as Canada. Mounties mm-hmm. are like super hard to push into until you're into like information era stuff. Um, Wilhelmina. Yep, Wilhelmina. Hmm. Uh, Derpy's favorite Civ. Yeah, yeah. Good old Derpy. This, this one's seen a lot of love. Uh, with folders getting moved earlier, getting buffed, and with uh Admiral Point on campuses now, um, it's gotten to be quite a decent Civ nowadays. People like trading with you, which is always good. Yep, the diplomacy uh, buff. You tend to scale pretty well. You have consistently good campuses, consistently good industrials. Um, yeah, a little, little slow at first, but you can get some things that are actually really nice high rolls, like Kumasi, of course, has been brought up so many times. A lot of civs love Kumasi, but um, Kumasi can be good. And then like random things like a city-state sending you a trader in the early game, just free monument, kind of nice. Yeah. To free uh, culture, um, yeah, I, I don't know exactly where it lands off the like first yeah. guess, but it's definitely very powerful. And another interesting thing is like, I guess this could also sort of apply to like um, Vicky's Age of Steam and stuff, but like industrial style sieves on the water kind of open up the extra avenue of nuking um, for like game option. And like getting around the map as well, just like to land units and do a lot of stuff. It opens up some plays, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Um, polders are like an insane tile improvement. You can get the uh, right setup for them. They just get massive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, e- even without anything, like if you just put it next to a harbor, no other polders, nothing else, um, with a lighthouse, it's uh, three food, two prod, one gold, which is like, that's a decent tile, mm-hmm. and it's a tile that you don't have to spend a land tile for, you know. So that's already fine. And then, like, I just I mean, you get quite often you get like seven, six, and seven food tiles with like three prod or four prod, five gold in a little bit of later game. Just nice, it gets you those other districts and stuff. Yeah, it's massive. Yeah. Also, it, it's a really good improvement. This Civ, like, abuses Auckland better than any other Civ, because all of your, uh, like, coastal tiles are already workable, right? Uh, that's true, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can put polders on, like, every single tile that's adjacent to the, the land, I think. Yep. So, you just get massive bats from Auckland. Uh, I don't know where we would put this. Above Robert. Maybe. Yeah, I think it probably is above Robert. 
of the Bruce. Because yeah, no the thing it is, it doesn't have any a... or bonus. So. I mean, it can get like the plus three campus right by the river. Yeah, I don't remember where I put Robert here. Robert's on very strong to the bottom. Oh, here he is. Yeah. I think Dutch is definitely up there somewhere. Yeah, she's she's yeah. good, and I think that she's another one, kind of like we were talking about, like Eleanor England. Like you don't always have a guarantee of how the game's gonna go, but if the game does start to go late, you're pretty happy to be Dutch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these no tempo, but a lot of bonuses that kick in in the mid game. And... Well, I say no tempo. At least you get some extra adjacencies on like your early campuses. So. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um. All right, next, uh, Wu Zeshin, I think is how it's pronounced. Um, this one feels so gambly to play since they removed the uh, free spy every time one of yours dies. They had that last patch, and so then they removed mm -hmm. it. it yeah, feels, I think it nerfs it a lot. It feels so bad if your spy dies, because then you spend like three or four turns training a new spy, and then, like, five turns establishing. Sp spies are 145 prod. <laughs> yeah, they're very expensive. You it's, never it's, um... want to build a spy if it's four or five turns. You always need the 50% production card in, and you need to two to three. Three turns is max. I never spend, I, I never spend, like, three turns on a spy. Well, it's, one... way too ex it's way too expensive. One of the things about the Civ is that you keep that policy card in all game because it also reduces the time spy missions take mm -hmm. to complete by 25%. It's actually just an insanely efficient card because you have an extra spy capacity, you're running spies everywhere, and you get... Exactly. Um, you need that card in. Yeah, you, you need, to, sure like, you need to have, like, Patala Palace in order to have, like, Whistlebank in, in that card in. Yeah, yeah. I, I cannot stress enough the how broken the... um rules on the civ can get where like every spy is successful and they all get offered the promotion like oh missions complete 25 percent faster well in that card suddenly two turns missions on all your spies compare right. that against the spies just die and you have no bonuses like yeah it's it's crazy different but yeah i mean dude like if you use that civ against a guy who's trying to go science win like you're china so you get extra value from your eurekas and you're stealing a bunch of eurekas Stealing a bunch of his science, and then you're also like a little bit later able to pillage his industrials and pillage his spaceports. Like, it's actually really hard to race against Wu Zetian if you're gonna go science win. It's a good 1v1 late game sieve. Also, um, the most deceptive stats in the game you'll see a Wu Zetian that has like 200 200 stats turn 70, then you check and somehow they're like most techs and civics completed, and it's like. Mm -hmm. It's the extra Eureka and Inspirations from China um, combined with all the free stats from the Spies. She gets a ton of hidden value that doesn't show up in the stats. So you're yeah. generally way further along than it looks. Also, this Civ is uh, it's like broken if there's a Sweden in the game and you just put it in the, ci the city with their um, unique building. Because that city always has, like, Sweden capital, like, turn 60, usually has, like, 140 culture per turn. Mm -hmm. You run this, one spy succeeds, boom, 140 culture. I always, like... Very nice. Yeah, if Sweden's in the game, priority goes up on the Civ, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Okay, um... I don't know where to put it. I might put it... It is China, so that's always good. I could put it in situation very strong just because I hate the uh, RNG on the spies. It can yeah, be I'd very probably, good with good spies. Probably just put it above the Germanys because it does have error score that it can achieve early. Yeah, only reason it's not higher is I'll probably put it above Mandate of Heaven, by the way. Probably. I, I think it's a little better. But, um. Yeah, if. If it still got the free spy when one died, I would just move it up a tier. Kind of a bummer that it doesn't get that. Okay, lastly, uh, last but not least, Yongle. Uh, this guy is probably the best China. Maybe Kublai is better, I don't know. Like, nah, he's probably a little better than Kublai, right? 
Uh, Kublai gets the free. I mean, it just depends. I, I think hmm. I, the, yeah. you get free stats when you hit 10 pop, and that's pretty huge. And those stats could translate into a yellow policy card slot, in a sense. Hmm. Like, uh, yeah. It, yeah. But, like, you do get your simming faster with Kublai. Mongolia, you can get like your Pantheon, a guaranteed Pantheon that you want. With what? Is that two turns of a of a of the project? I'm not sure exactly. Yeah, yeah like, you have you can invest production, but it's a it's a good amount of investment. It's like two turns, yeah. yeah. If you really want like a certain Pantheon, you can do that, and then you can negate the God King card right there. Yeah, the um the food project also has its uses in the early game. There will be times when you're like, oh. My city is on three pot, but it'll take three turns to grow. I want to put down the next Citric now. Well, actually, you run the project, and it grows in one turn. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, there yeah, are ways to work it in there. Uh, I think he's, scaling-wise, quite good. Like, if you have 10 cities, 10 pop, by the late game, it's 70 free science, 50 free culture. That's definitely outpacing cards. But, you know, doesn't start out quite as good. But I don't think he's too far behind in the early game. If you focus on it, you can get a city to 10 pop pretty quick with uh, food chops and stuff, working the right tiles, yeah. building granary early. So an early game, like 7 science, 5 culture, is more than a policy card as well. So I think he is a little better mm -hmm. than Kublai, but uh, yeah, not insanely better, but a little bit. All right. Um, also... And whenever China gains like free science and culture, you have to bear in mind that their science and culture goes further than other civs. Those extra Eurekas and inspirations combined with the extra science and culture makes it very hard to keep up with them sometimes. Um, all right, so we've rated every civ. Wanna look and see if we have any adjustments to make? Uh, let me see here. It does feel weird having Chandra alone in Broken. Like, is he really the best Civ? Like, period? Uh, he's pretty good. He is he's pretty, pretty good. In free-for-all. Like, in free-for-all, yeah. yeah what, do you, what do you really want? Like, you can do... You can kind of go with Wincon, but he's maybe not necessarily the Wincon guy. But for average placement, he's got to be really high there. Like, yeah. you can't fight him classical. He gets free general and varu, right? With free amenities, he's always going to be doing fine into the mid game. And then the late game, his war bonus is so powerful that even if he has less prod than you, like, he's producing at a hugely efficient rate and has combat bonus. Yeah, um,. I mean, it feels weird. I'm not sure necessarily that his uh, push Why are you touching Gorgo? <laughs> You're I'm such just... a Gorgo fan. I am yeah, a I think he's a Gorgo fan. fan Gor by... Gorgo is too high, in my opinion. But like, then there's a lot of them that are situationally high. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Gorgo definitely doesn't go up, my, in my opinion. I mean, if anything, I mean, I might put... What, I, 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 I would put Tokugawa as, above... Or, Tokugawa also yeah. is really, really good. I think Tokugawa is above Gorgo in a sense, but like that's just that's just me though. You know, this is your tier list yeah. person, so enjoy it. See. Well, if it were my tier list, I'd probably move Pericles up quite a bit as well. I think he's. Yeah, but, yeah. See, I mean, he takes some time to ramp. You know, it takes a little bit of time. Other, I mean, you got to think about the other ones. They have like the, they have simming bonuses. Um, you know. Macedon also, if you're in a mixed skill FFA where you know you're getting a kill, Macedon is like crazy. I mean, well, yeah, yeah, he jumps up a lot. More. Like, but, I mean, he is in a situationally very strong position, which is like not the top on the list, but like he can compete with other other guys if if that is the case. Say I'm in a lobby where there are like there's me, two other players who are actually good, and then seven noobs. Macedon is like crazy good at just farming the noobs since just winning the game, like uncontested. 
Uh, but you know, that's a bit meta. I'm not sure that applies to the average person. Should I really be rating Macedon on that basis? Probably not. Uh, I suppose we can stick with this tier list. Yep, yep. Screenshot it. Boom. Yep. 